CrossFit Semifinals Week 3 is presented by Trifecta from the land of 10,000 lakes. Prepare your skull chance. We are at the training site of the Minnesota Vikings for the 2022 Granite Games here at TCO Stadium. Welcome high atop TCO Stadium alongside Chase Ingram. My name is Joel Godet and Chase, they always say that day two is moving day. So you can look at the leaderboard after day one and draw your conclusions, but why might those be wrong? Well, it's two events. A lot can happen in two events, but when we add two more for a four total, the leaderboard gets to be a bit more balanced than the hectic one we see on, on the first day of competition. And on the men's side, this field has eight previous CrossFit Games competitors, and yet after day one, we've got a new name, Toon Time at the top of the charts. Not the first time we've seen him at the top of the leaderboard early in competition we saw the same thing at the last chance qualifier last year the question is can he hang on to this top position top five go to the games that's really what he's focused on and i feel like the programming yesterday played very well to his skill set today will be a new test on the women's side danny spiegel has competed in every crossfit games since 2019 she had a great day one but she even admitted afterward day two will be a different challenge why Oh, it was Danny Spiegel Day on day number one. She had a sprint style event with the 2159 or the reverse Fran and the handstand walks, and then that barbell complex. Look, that was wheelhouse Danny Spiegel. She's great on her hands. She's great at cycling and barbell. She's even better on the platform and putting up a 245, which is tying for the heaviest weight we've seen across the world so far at the semifinals. It was a great day for her. Now, she knows today is going to be a new challenge, and we'll see if she's up for it. Now, stop me if you've heard this one before on the team's side of things. Since there's been a team competition, CrossFit Invictus has had a team representing the affiliate from San Diego. They have two teams in this field, and of course, CrossFit Invictus is at the top of the leaderboard after day one. What's different, though, about day two? Uh, it's, we're having team events on day number two. It was very indiv individualized programming yesterday with the relay style in event one and the team lift total in event two. And after all that's said and done, they only have a five-point lead on OBA and 10-point on Greater Heights Ascend. So a lot can happen today because we have team events today. So we're going to have to see how well they work together in a pair of four. We're going to see the worm later. How are their synchro in mixed pairs? So there's a much different test day two than we saw on day one. Let's go back to the very first point you made, though, on the broadcast, and that's after one day, don't panic much. If you're Brent Fakowski coming into day two, you're sitting in sixth place, why should we not be worried about the professor? Well, one, it's sixth place. Two, based off the events that we had yesterday, as well as it favored Danny Spiegel, not so much Brent Fakowski, but he executed flawlessly. Today, we're dubbing Brent Fakowski Day on the men's side because we have two chippers for the individual competition. And if you know your history, Brent Fakowski doesn't lose events like this. On the women's side, Chloe Wilson holding on to that fifth place position with Kelly Stone just behind her. Very consistent events yesterday, all inside the top 10. Again, like I said, today is going to be a much different test when it comes to the women and the team. We sit at the top. We actually get teamwork events today. Pairs, the worm, team synchros of pull-ups that we haven't seen for across the board except for the Torian Pro. So a lot is going to change today, and we'll start to see who's for real by the end of day two. We had one CrossFit programmed workout yesterday. We have one CrossFit programmed event tomorrow. Two Granite Games specials on tap for today, and it all starts at 131 for a little bit of a cloudy day, but it's a nice weather day here in Minnesota. Week three presented by Trifecta here in the CrossFit semifinals, 66 degrees. Up in these parts, we like to call that a nice spring afternoon. <laughs> well, it's good because the uh, the way things are going to shake out today on the team side is that you're going to have some teams standing around for a while out here on the field. So it's good that we have some overcast for those teams that are going to be on the second half of this event. So we have a basically a down and back synchro lunges, GHD sit ups, overhead squats with a single arm dumbbell. Those ring muscle ups is going to be the game changer for a lot of these teams. And once they're done, Pair two will be going. 34 minute time cap. That means they're going to be out there for a while, Joel. This event presented to us by the U.S. Army. Our recipe for success is delivered by Trifecta. Choose your pairs wisely. There's a lot of things you can do, but I'm looking at the muscle up specifically. Do you put your best athletes together in one and hopefully your second pair can can make up the slack or do you mix them up? So stay ready as a second pair. Like I said, they're going to be out there for a while. 10 teams here in this list, including reignited ILM that competed at the CrossFit Games just a year ago. And we're underway here on day two, moving day 
at the Granite Games. So this starts out in pairs. One male, one female from each team. And it starts with the 100 or 70 pound synchro sandbag lunge. Something a bit new we've seen in a pairs competition. We've seen worm lunges on the team side. But just like anything else, making sure they stay together. The challenging part is stride length between teammates. So if you have a very a, a massive differencing in height, that's going to change the stride length between the men and the women with these mixed pairs. And you're seeing that a little bit for Razor Ranch CrossFit. They're in the far distant side in lane 10. There's this big split between those two athletes at the top of your screen. And what's listening here is like, as soon as they get through the lunge, they're going to the to the GHD. So you, you can really push the pace pretty hard here because you're going to have a big break with the overhead squats coming up after this. Yes, the GHD is going to tax your legs and your quads a bit by the way you're supposed to do them technically proficiently. But it's 75 mix, so we, the synchro is gone when it comes to the middle. So 75 between the two. That's, that's a turn per athlete. And so what you want to think about is like, if you can keep that cycle rate without burning yourself out, go and stay on there as long as you can. And a lot of these teams are going to know. They're going to have a designated rep scheme between the men and the women. That's what I was going to say is that comes down to practice. You've probably worked this in your affiliate and you understand, hey, I'm good for 20. We're going to switch, try to keep our transition time to a minimum. Yeah, well, at least you better should have, right? And so when you think about 75 total, even if you split the distance or the, the rep scheme, you're just like, okay, you do 40, I do 35. It's really that simple. That is, that is not a very high volume set. It's a high intensity set because you have less reps, but make sure you know where you're supposed to break, have a quick transition, as you said. A lot of the components here are going to deal with, okay, how quick am I getting off the GHD? How quick are we getting back on? So seconds lost has to be made up somewhere. So you want to minimize how much you guys fumble around getting between the movements. Roderick Holloway here for CrossFit Lakeville. They're the local team out of Lakeville, Minnesota. About a 20 minute drive south of here. Leaders are out of CrossFit reignited. And that's an interesting team to keep an eye on because, Chase, they go to the games last year, much like the Ohio Brutes who struggled last week. That's a games team, big expectations. They have not hit it the way they would have expected to. And what's even more important, a lot of times in the team side, you see team names, but that doesn't necessarily mean you have the same individuals on the team. But for Reignited, what's important is that this is the exact same group of four that went to the games last year. So you shouldn't see a massive drop off when it comes to that. However, yesterday was all individualized style events, relay, individual, individual. And sometimes the greatest team do not have the best individuals on them. And maybe we'll see a much different team with Reignited today with more team style events. If they can get themselves back in the final heat heading into Sunday, you're watching Bryn Carrick hop off the GHD. We just saw the pairs in the back. Is that this is the first pair going in? We're now we're only we're approaching the four minute mark. It's a 34 minute capped event. This event won't take that long. But the back pair that we saw waiting in the wings, trying to make sure you're staying fresh. You're not just sitting there baking in the sun. At least there's a little bit of cloud cover today, so it shouldn't mess them up too bad. But you don't want to just be sitting still. Right, you want to be moving around, getting ready, because when they get started, they'll be moving right to the 100 wall balls, taking off where this pair will leave off. Ocean State Blue they have also moved to the front of the pack as you look at Lakeville right in front of you. 55 reps, they'll be advancing every 11 as they work their way down. And what you'll see a lot of teams is they'll pick one side as they advance to the next 11 section, switch hands off, and go to the next side. But sometimes you see athletes that just have one good side. <laughs> a lot of times with a single arm dumbbell over at squat specifically is there's there's already a massive demand on flexibility for an overhead squat. There's even more so on a single arm dumbbell squat. I think it's probably the one movement if you looked at this as a regular crossfitter who shows up to class on Tuesdays, this might be the hardest thing to replicate. And exactly, but the other thing too is sometimes it's the weight that even makes it more challenging and not by more weight. Less weight makes these things more difficult because they have a tendency to move more. 
it's it's much better to actually have a heavier dumbbell because it puts you in a better position of stabilization overhead in that position. Roderick Holloway, Sammy Nally working for Lakeville. The latter of which was on the Timberwolf team that went to the games last year, 28th they finished. Seventh at these Granite games. The game changer is gonna be on the rigs, Joel. You got the lunge buy-in, GHC sit-ups, basically nothing. It's a break between that and the you know, single arm overhead squats, but the rings, 35 ring muscle-ups split between these male and female pairs. This will be the deciding movement of which team advance, or at least is in your top five coming in. So it's all gonna come down to the rings. Let's go down to Jamie Hagia and check in with her for the first time today. Thanks, Joel. Yeah, we're looking at these athletes doing synchro overhead squats with that dumbbell. You'll notice that their arms and their shoulders are shaking as they're trying to keep it over that position for their 55th rep. The first pair is heading over to those rings. It looks like their male athlete is going to take to those rings first. It will, we'll see how his shoulders hold up during these muscle ups. Jamie, thank you. And Chase, the other thing you notice is the torque. You talked about the overhead mobility. There's a lot of midline strength in terms of keeping yourself stable. And we've already taxed the midline twice going into that. The lunges with the sandbag is a very midline taxing movement when you have that weight on one side of your body. The GHC sit-ups, obviously it's in there to mess with that. And the overhead squat, it's a massive midline tax style movement. You couple all those things together and you throw in some ring muscle-ups, this is where the track or the, the trick is of this buy-in. Little bit of struggle for Lakeville. We'll send Roderick Holloway into the chalk bucket and he'll pop back up on the rings. Lakeville is on the left. Reignited is on the right. Ryan Fitzpatrick going to work. We looked at the recipe for success and it said choose your pairs wisely. And there's a couple options here. More often than not, if there's a pair style switch off like we have here, where one pair goes and one doesn't, I would say you always put your best athletes together in one pair versus splitting them up and marginalizing the skill set between the two. This is the only time where I would almost say it's, it's, an, it's a conversation to split up your best pairs because of the ring muscle up volume. You could put your two pairs together and knock them out, say in two to three minutes, but how much is that gonna take away from your worst pair because of the rings? It's almost better, and this obviously depends on the makeup of your team, to put a great muscle up with a marginal one and split the difference between the two because at least you make both pairs faster. But again, this is why you practice these things before you get here. One, two, and three, left to right on your screen. First, second, and third place. That's CrossFit hype on the right. Evan Nathan is the one who just popped down off the rings. He had a good day one, a 310 pound work on the snatch. That was the event record across all teams. He beat Tolomora Keno, and that is a blasphemous statement. By, by one pound as well. And we, we said yesterday, looked like he had at least 20 pounds more in him. We also mentioned he is in medical school. This was the only competition that Hype could go to where it would really align with his exam schedule, and he still had to take an exam on Thursday night. But it lucked out for the Boca Raton-based team. They are trying to make some moves here. We said the muscle-ups are the game-changer for this event. Think how long we've already been here at the rings for these teams. And then, by the way, you're going to smoke your shoulders. We'll have it go to 100 synchro world. Right. right, it's not over yet. So you get to share the work here, split things up as you guys, as needed between the athletes. Five spots to the Noble CrossFit Games are on the line. When the individuals come into play, we have some spots to the last chance online qualifier that are still out there as well, three of those. But for the teams, this is it. Lone Star CrossFit starting to make a move. They're on the right side of your screen in lane four. They had a really good day yesterday as well. A tough start to the day. Snatch event tying for eight, but in the first event, that handstand walk just snake bit. It's actually Kristen who is paired up with her husband Gio for Lone Star. How's that go? 
Man, I tell you what, that is a, that is a delicate balance. <laughs> Honey, wall ball faster. I think the smart play is they just got a no way and I'll follow. And this is the challenging part about these synchronized wall ball shots. I think it's synchronized wall ball shots is harder for the judge than it is for the athletes. You've got to look in two places. And as we were told, the wall ball just has to hit the mark. It does not have to bifurcate it. It does not have to clear it in its entirety. You've got to get a piece of the wall ball to the height of the mark. And, and that mark being right in the middle of the plexiglass. And this is tough. If you're if you're not used to doing this movement in this setting, if you've played basketball, you know the reference. The way you shoot inside a gymnasium when you have the walls around you, it, that we talk about depth perception a lot. You go to an outside playground, it completely changes the way you see the hoop. It's the same type of thing when you have these plexiglass placards in this open setting for a wall ball shot. So it, it definitely changes the way you perceive that target different than you would in your affiliate. Gio on the left, Kristen on the right, the Contreras's. They met at the 2017 South Regional. Chase, you are just watching your teammates do 100 <laughs> synchro wall balls. A, wanting to work out yourself. You're kind of thinking like, hey, can you do this faster? But also be encouraging. Yeah, well, look, right? Look at these teammates. You see that Lone Star in the center party screen on the right is that they're just, they're, they're wavering back and forth. They, you know, they look like that, that bull in the shoot ready to get released. And, and that's what it is, is that, you know, at the start when they're on the other side of the field looking at them lunge, you're pretty casual. They get to the GHD, all right, they start getting their overhead squats in and now the rings are done and you're watching this count go down. And that 100 count, you're going 100 down to one. That's your countdown to showtime. For me, I'm just getting excited. I'm like, unleash me. I'm tired of waiting and watching you guys go. Of course, I'll say that when you have 100 wall balls to start. Of course, I say that. If it was 100 deadlifts, that'd be a different, <laughs> that'd be a different idea altogether. 12 minutes and 25 seconds in here. Keep in mind, one of the classic benchmark events in CrossFit is Karen. It's 150 wall ball shots for time. You are doing 100 wall balls here, a little bit less, but you have to synchronize them with your partner. And oh, by the way, you've already done sandbag lunges, GHDs, synchro, dumbbell, overhead squats, and ring muscle ups. Try two thirds of a classic benchmark tied to your partner. When you have it paired up, it actually makes it a bit easier because unless you can stick together, it's not worth extending a rep scheme almost beyond 10. And when you start getting no reps, you start getting out of sync, you waste way more time than you would as an individual. And so what I like for this at the end is, hey, quick set to 10, communicate with each other, and that game plan can and usually does change. So again, that communication aspect is so vital and this is what's great about day two for the team competition yesterday we said at the top of the show very individualized events this one completely different tasks you've got mixed pairs synchro shared work you got everything in the mix of it if you think we've been watching wall balls for a while we just hit the halfway mark for these teams definitely a back half event for these pairs it's all a buy-in between the rings and the wall ball shots. Now, what will be different for pair two is they go the opposite direction. So it's a front half event. So getting through this while you're fresh is going to be a big game changer for these pairs coming up after them. Let's check back in with Jamie Hagiu. Thanks so much. We're down here on the field. I'm actually right next to all these, the second pair that's waiting to jump in. They look like they are really just kind of hanging out. There's not so much movement on them. Some of them are drinking water. Some of them are cheering them on, but they are just anxious to get out there and start the second half of the workout. And look at Quinn Robinson. He was bopping up and down for Reignited, doing some air squats. He's going to have to squat right away when the hounds are released. You want that. You want to you get the, the blood flowing. The last thing you want to do is run into 100 wall ball shots absolutely cold because that's gonna that's gonna beat you up pretty good center part of your screen let jumping the female athlete is having to jump to get those wall ball targets and it's 10 feet Bryn Carrick is having to jump and I, here, here's the thing it should be 10 feet right it should be 10 feet a, a lot of that too is because of the if you're gonna force mixed pairs to be synchronized 
you have to give them the same target to throw to because oftentimes you'll see that 10 foot, 9 foot discrepancy between the men and the women. And now you're changing the range of motion completely, so that makes synchro much more difficult. Throw this one at you. Does Bryn know that she's jumping, or is that an effort-based thing that it's just happening because she's working? I think that's just like your, your instinctual athletic response to, okay, what is it going to take to get to this to this target? So it, it's probably not a conscious decision. She just knows she has to extend harder to get that ball to the target. CrossFit Gambit's making a move. St. Louis-based team, and they have to make a move here, Chase. This is a team that did not have the day one that they were expecting. Clayton Adams, Joel Laney, Corey Clark, Kelly Jackson. And remember, Joel Laney told Jamie yesterday on the lifting event that he felt his back go on him a little bit, still went out and finished it out. Sitting in 16th overall, 11th place in event one, 19th in event two. But a lot of, like you said, uh, there's a lot of things that are gonna change for these teams. And it's amazing as that we got to the rig for those muscle-ups, I want to say right around the seven minute mark. And now we're still at the 16 minute mark. This is how long the last two movements take. We do have hands up though. And I think one more rep here for Reignited. Well, that wasn't synchronized. <laughs> <laughs> one, more <laughs> one more rep for Reignited. Now we do have a pair from Gambit actually leading the way. So Gambit and Reignited have released their second pair. We're gonna get across the floor to this, the mats first. And then we will go to work on wall balls and work backwards. This event is called Down and Up. One pair went down, the other pair will go up. So basically 200 synchronized wall ball shots in a row here, split between your two pairs. This is like the, the world's toughest 90-yard sprint across the field after 100 synchronized wall ball shots. This is stay strong. That is a painful-looking run from the Finns. We'll see stay strong, second pair is out. And we'll see a much different pace on these pairs. Can you text Rich Froning and ask him uh, which one's John and which one's Patrick? <laughs> yeah. Those are the Froning cousins. I'm sure I'll get one here in about two minutes. <laughs> Back to Reignited. Quinn Robinson on the left. Stephanie Simmons, who cleared the snatch ladder yesterday, is on the right. See on the right side, he said he had one rep to go. And that, you know, that's just losing count. Maybe you're not hearing your judge working together with your athlete. And those little missteps in an event that takes 34 minutes, is that gonna be the deal breaker? Probably not. But we still have some more, a, a faster team event coming later in the afternoon where that will make a massive difference. I almost wonder which one is worse, waiting to go under the rig or just being in a world <laughs> of hurt, not being able to see your teammates compete all the way at the other side of the field. This is Razor Ranch. And that'll release Tucker McLemore and Cassidy Lane now for the Texas crew. Lane left, McLemore right. He said we'll see a much different pace for the second pair because we are opening with these 100 wall ball shots. However, the rings are going to be the difference maker for a lot of these teams. And when you think about a wall ball shot, it actually has a massive impact on how well you do a ring muscle-up because of that push-throw position, right? You're taxing the sh front part of your shoulders, your chest, and your triceps, which you need to get out of the ring dip portion of the ring muscle-up. So you may feel great on these 100 because you're opening with it. It's like, hey, let's do big sets together. Let's really get ahead of these, these other teams. But you got to save a little bit in the tank for the ring muscle-ups. Now, afterwards, different stories. Single arm dumbbell over it. Squats, GGs, and a lunge to finish. So. The back half of this event is going to be very exciting to see how these teams attack the second half. 80-35 just sent their second pair out. That means everybody except for Ocean State Blue is onto their second pair. Stay strong. They're right in the middle of your screen. Now you're leaders. And looking to have a big day. Came in as the number five seed and have now fallen into the first heat. Gambit now changing back in front 
all the way to the right in lane nine, second place for Stay Strong. You're out of Troy, Michigan. I think we're going to see a lot of shakeup on the leaderboard today just based off the events that we have on tap. I mean, you, we talked about teams struggling on the handstand walk. You have one athlete blow up on the handstand walk and it completely changes where your team finishes and has nothing really to do with the even the fitness level of your team. You just dipped into the red a little bit too much and that put the brakes on for your team yesterday in event number one. And with these team style events that we have today with a worm event coming up later, I think we're gonna see a lot of change on the leaderboard, especially in those middle teams. Got a hand up for Reignited. So some jockeying here on the wall balls. Really good work by Robinson and Simmons. They look to be now in first place and have a chance to release themselves to the ring muscle ups. Just a much different pace that we saw for the, the first pair. No surprise to see that. Now, how do those dips look coming off the ring, coming off those wall ball shots? So yeah, that's a, that's a slow press out. Quinn Robinson drops off those ring muscle ups, so he'll release to Stephanie Simmons. But what I like that he did there is that when he dropped off, he controlled the rings for his partner. You'll see a lot of athletes will just drop and the rings will be swinging everywhere. And we said saving seconds. Saving seconds is more important than really going fast because you're gonna have to make those up somewhere. So if I spent 10 seconds trying to chase my rings, you're gonna have to make that up somewhere. And when you look at what's left, there's not a lot of there's not a lot of room left where you can make a difference. Back to stay strong. Again, this is the Finns and Sammy Scorzelli. Uh, Sammy Scorzelli will drop off the rings. John and Patrick Finn, the two brothers on this team. Don't mess with John. Works for the Defense Department. <laughs> really kipping through those ring missile ups. They will change out. There is the other fin. Patrick got into competitive CrossFit in a way that I think a lot of people get into competitive CrossFit. Some people that were fitter than him asked him to do a competition, and he didn't want to embarrass himself. That's how he got into CrossFit? Well, like competitive. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so he started taking everything. He got the nutrition, the sleep. Yeah, yeah. I remember my first one, I had friends sign me up for it and then told me after the fact that we're going to go compete. <laughs> Lots of deadlifts? Fortunately, no. Ten more reps here for Reignited with Stephanie Simmons on the rings. Simmons is the veteran on this team. 2017 regionals, 2018 regionals. Division two softball player at Wingate. Down in the Carolinas. So a hand is now up for Quinn Robinson, who is kind of the heart and soul of this reignited team. He's one of six children. Rosie is his sister, has battled cancer twice, including as recent as last year when reignited went to the CrossFit games and they had a rose on their t-shirt just to remind them of her battle, huge inspiration to this team. He's gonna be a much different single arm overhead squat than we saw the first pair go through. You had your 100 wall ball shots, your 35 ring muscle ups, obviously you split that up between the pairs. Look at Quinn's mobility. These look easy. They are easy for some people, and then, <laughs> and then completely the opposite for others. It's a man after my heart there, just chucking that dumbbell forward and chasing. While I cringe on the other side of the product. Well, one of us is an affiliate the, owner. Yeah, the affiliate owner in me is just cringing at the dumbbells being tossed around, but across the competition, if they allow it, then yeah, I don't blame yourself for doing that. I'd do the same thing. Sorry, Bryn Jaffrey, I try to take care of your dumbbells. Now for teams is after these, these are the the last difficult technical piece. And that is a great save. 
and actually kind of surprised that Finn didn't come back down and reset. Well, as you said, is the, the ring height, the ring swaying around a little bit. We don't really have a, you know, we, yesterday it had been a different story. There was, there was a big breeze yesterday. So thankfully for these athletes, that's not a part of the equation today. So saying on the left side of your screen for, for Reignited, this is the last highly technical skill set that they have to work through with these single arm overhead squats. Once they get to the GHD, it's on, right? You don't have the ring muscle ups and the wall balls like the first pair did. Get yourself through here in the middle. In fact, put yourself into the red because one of you is going to get a rest once you get to the GHD sit up. So the middle 55 here on these overhead squats is really where you want to bury yourself because you're going to get that little GHD break and then a lunge towards the end. Almost done on the muscle ups for Gambit. Done on the muscle ups for Gambit. So now moving on to the dumbbell for Corey Clark and company. That's a 70 pound dumbbell for the men. 55 for the ladies. And that's a, that's a weight that is, is much easier to manage, in my opinion, as an athlete, where that weight can really just put my arm in a good position, sit me down below parallel like I need to. And that was a no rep for Quinn Robinson on that slight stumble backwards. And he's, he's getting right towards, the, right towards the edge of that red line, which is what you want. And this is the discussion you have with your, 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 your partner. It's like, all right, I am bearing myself to get to these 55, so you're gonna need to take the first leg on the GHDs, because I'm gonna need a break. And that is indeed the case. Stephanie Simmons right to the GHD. They didn't even have to talk about it. Teammates from Reignited have peeled themselves off the turf. <laughs> So Simmons right to it. That riser is inserted for the female pair. They'll pull it out when the male athlete pops up. There's a lot of sneaky legs being taxed in this event. The wall balls, the overhead squats, the GHDs. It's called a glute ham developer. Exactly, but you know, CrossFitter is always like, hey, I know this is what this equipment is used for, but what if we did this? How about we do sit-ups on here? And this is, uh, to me, this is the classic, you're, you're doing a stadium event. It's funny that we're in a stadium now, but we're, you're just saying it's like, all right, you hang off the, uh, the side of the wall. I'm going to sit on your legs, and you start doing sit-ups. That's, uh, that's what this reminds me of. But that leg drive that you're going to need for the GHD is going to tax those lunges dramatically for the finished part of this event. Dumbbell started to get to the crew from Gambit. And that's shoulders, that shoulder stability, that shoulder mobility. Clayton Adams on the right. And you know, this might be a, it's like this is my bad arm. This is the one I'm only going to do two sets of the 11 with and three on the right side. Quinn Robinson now onto the GHDs. Simmons making sure she doesn't leave her boot belt behind. Just don't do an Alexis Johnson and throw it into three <laughs> lanes down. <laughs> that was great. Third place is now CrossFit Lakeville. They were leading from the front early. They have fallen back and now worked their way forward. You can see them just off screen to the left. The other thing we see is, we see reignited in how far back he is off the pads on the GHD because there's just no time to adjust it between the men and the women. Obviously, he's a lot longer athlete. And so having that position, it's way more core when it comes to this position where you, you're not actually able to utilize your legs to help with the movement. So it's a much tougher movement when you're that far off the back of the pad. But at the same time, we said, saving seconds, saving time. There's not enough time to mess around with that GHD and as far as getting it set because you can still get the work done. It just feels a bit different. Well, done with the GHD. So now to the 100-foot synchro sandbag lunge, and then that'll be it here for Reignited. Sandbags are 100 pounds and 70 pounds. Chase, I'm going to put that in perspective for you. The average recliner weighs 105 pounds. 
All right, so a lazy boy lunge is what we're, we're finishing with on the, the second pair. Just picture throwing one of those on your back and marching down the football field. And I mean marching. This looks easy. It looks easy, but it's it's not, especially after everything that they, they went through just to get to this position. But you're also in a position here is that you have another heat waiting in the wings. Yes, you're in the lead by quite a substantial amount in this heat itself, but this is a team that needs to make big moves and big strides to get themselves at least into the final heat tomorrow with a shot at a top five position. Thing to keep in mind as you look at the clock, this is a 34 minute capped event. We've been out there for so long, you lose a little bit of sight of that. But Reignited is in a position where they may be the only team to not get capped in this heat. Puts you into a really good position looking at where you could fall into the fold with the rest of the team. So 30-45-ish unofficially here for Reignited. And that's what you wanted to see out of a team that competed at the CrossFit Games last year. Well, they definitely they, they need to make big moves here. Back to Lakeville, the Minnesotan team. Now that's the pace I'd like to see. Because you see a lot of slow sit-ups out there. It's like, listen, the most you're going to do if you're splitting with your pair is 40. Like, let's turn up the volume and the speed a little bit. We saw the smiling faces of Reignite at the end of that lunge. And to me, that just says, you thought you were more tired than you really were. <laughs> DJ Hillier here. Three-time regionals athlete. He hosts his own fitness podcast, so your direct competition. <laughs> this is what you were talking about here, Chase. Well, you know, if you're related to the Fronings in any way, you're genetically predisposed into being very proficient with GHD sit-ups. That just comes with the territory. It's actually what they do at the, uh, the Thanksgiving dinner table. And this is what a GHD should look like. The way that the machine moves, like you should move the machine with the effort you put into it. Yes, it's only 75 split between two people. And I see a, it's almost like pouty paced GHD sit-ups across the field. This is what we're asking for. The hard part's over. You got through the overhead squats. You got through the muscle ups and the wall ball shots. All you have is a lunge to the end. And we just saw that you're not gonna fail. And now into second place here from Stay Strong, Sammy Scorzelli also keeping up that tempo. And Scorzelli and Finn will go pick up the sandbags. Sammy competed here last year as an individual. She has been on this field before when it was 105 degrees. They've got to be synchronized at the top here, so they might look a little bit off. That is still a synchronized motion. Not only is Stay Strong in second place, Stay Strong is in second place. Close, it's gonna be close. They've got people eating their dust behind them with 50 seconds left to go in the heat. Oh, what are we saying? When you put the most effort into the overhead squats in the second pair on the way down, one of you is gonna get a break when you get to the GHD. You're not doing a whole lot, so you need to send the GHD sit-ups and just hold on to the end here at the lunges. 30 seconds left to go and just a couple more feet. Cross that red line, drop the sandbags, and move. And at the 30-45 mark, Stay Strong comes in second in the heat. Two teams will beat the cap here, although we do have a couple more making their way onto the sandbag lunges with Lakeville. And we have hit the cap at 34 minutes. Here in Down and Up, Team Event 3. So the only hiccup we really saw for Reignite is the end of the first pair's 100 wall ball shots. But beyond that, this is the performance you'd like to see from a team that competed at the CrossFit Games and returning all four team members. Now on the back half, good communication, good pacing on here on the overhead squats. Just getting to the GHDs, I would have liked to seen them push the pace a little bit more. I think maybe they got comfortable where they were in this heat. 
But look at the face they have crossing the finish line. Super happy, not really that tax to get through. So to me, that says there's a lot more left in the tank that they should have emptied in the middle port of that event. Maybe the good news for Reignited, they have more in the tank to empty with three events left to go and needing to make a move. Second heat still to come here for the teams down and up at the Granite Games here in Minnesota. That's what you get when you come to Minnesota. <laughs> that is a Minnesota nice summertime. 2022 Granite Games, week three of the CrossFit semifinals, presented by Trifecta. Chase Ingram's alongside. Jamie Hagia is down on the field. My name is Joel Godad. This is the third event for the teams. We call it Down and Up. These are the standings after the first two events. Not a whole lot surprising for those top five, kind of what you expected to see. No, especially after an event like yesterday with the caliber of individual athletes that are on the team sitting in the top five. But there's a big drop off from third to fourth and fourth to fifth. And what that means to me is like there was a lot of parity yesterday ex except for your top three. This is a 34 minute time capped event. Most teams needed every minute of that. It's a lot of work. And it's different work, right? You get the, the sandbag lunge to the GCs and overhead squats, but the ring muscle-ups and wall ball is where the first pair needs to push the pace. The second pair, they need to manage the first pair well, but once you get to the overhead squats, that's when you start to kick things in gear. Take a look at our recipe for success delivered by Trifecta. Choose your pairs wisely. Do you put your best together? Or do you split the talent between the two? And that second pair needs to be ready to go in the wings when that first pair is done. Down to Jamie. Thank you, Joel. In this event, we're going to see synchro lunges, dumbbell squats, and wall balls. But there are two movements at that GHD sit up and the ring muscle ups where they can share the reps however they like, looking for those athletes to take bigger sets on these muscle ups. Thank you, Jamie. I thought for a second she had joined Invictus. I mean, it wouldn't be a bad addition. <laughs> <laughs> she, she, she is the team's expert when it comes to the games. Invictus Unconquerable will be in lane one all the way down to Union Square Black. Invictus and Open Box Athletics, five and six, your leaders right in the middle of the field. They can look left and right. And underway, this is the down part. Everyone starts on that starting mat. We'll run all the way to the finish mat, grab the sandbags, and then return. First portion of this, just a, a little sandbag lunge, not very far, just stay together, focus on your breathing. You're not trying to jack your heart rate up too much. But going from this into the GHD sit-ups, one partner's gonna get a break. You're not gonna do that many GHD sit-ups. So quick transitions, don't waste any time here. It's the rig where the, the race is won for this first pair with the 35 ring muscle-ups between the two of them, but then the 100 synchronized wall ball shots. How do you hold this sandbag? Because look at where Allison Weiss has that on her back. 
I like that. You, you just have it right in the mid part of your back. Now, an athlete will put it in the middle because it won't offset it, right? If you put it on one side of your body, you're going to get some of that rotational fatigue in your midline when it comes to that. But that puts a bit more stress on your shoulders when you hold it together in the back. So really, for, for just a buy-in, it's whatever you're comfortable with. There's not a wrong way to do it. Side note, Allison Weiss competing for Unconquerable, Brittany Weiss competing for Invictus. Good sense of humor for those coaches. They paired them against each other again today <laughs> after they did the same yesterday, and we got a pretty good runoff at the end. Jorge Fernandez in the green shirt is on the GHD for Invictus. Now, these athletes, whatever sets they decide to go with, you're going to get a rest after this. I like the intensity we see on the GHD sit-ups. It's just blow through these as hard as you can. Get them done, take your rest, and just wait for your second athlete to knock it out. Weiss is moving like a teen champion there. Nicholas Hecht on the left side of your screen in the tank top for open box athletics. Brittany Weiss just switching out with Jorge Fernandez. How do you feel about the speed that Brittany Weiss was working there? Yeah, this is good. This is the intensity that you want to see, knowing full well that once you get to the dumbbell overhead squats, you don't really have to go fast on the single arm overhead squats that's coming up after this. So you want to make sure that you don't waste any time here. You can gain some ground, maybe 5 to 10 seconds in a set of 35 to 40, but you can lose 20 plus if you just have a casual GHD sit up. That may be negated once we get to the rig because of the muscle-ups and the wall ball shots. So it's actually more imperative to have the intensity for that second pair. And we, I mean, that was a clear example of what we saw happen in the first heat. So if you're in the wings in the, in the second heat, you really get to see where the important parts of this event, where you should push is. It's like what you, what you do in, in testing, Seeing it unfold with a whole group of 10 will change your game plan coming into the second heat. Christian Harris taking over for move fast, lift heavy. He's working with Winter Rodriguez, who cleared the snatch ladder and then hit the 11th platform for move fast, lift heavy yesterday. I think that was our second rotation on these 75 GHD sit-ups. Back to Unconquerable. Unconquerable is now in front, many thanks to the way that Allison Weiss is attacking these GHDs. And they only had one transition. Transition taking five to seven seconds. That's about three or four reps at an appropriate speed for a GHD sit-up. There's a great pairing there, too. And there's back to Fernandez and Brittany Weiss. On the other side, you've got Allison Weiss, who has won the teenage games, but new to this kind of competition. And then Eric Carmody, who's been to the games as an individual. Invictus builds these teams really smartly. Your big two up-and-comers here, Jorge Fernandez on the left, probably has an individual competition future. Holden Rethwell telling us that there's probably not a most more improved athlete down in San Diego than Brittany Weiss over the last year. And we talked about yesterday the way athletes can move in and out of team individual competition. Some start in the team, start to really understand what it takes to have you know, like the, the appropriate mental game when it comes into this, the training that gets involved, a low pressure setting, getting yourself prepped for maybe individual competition or vice versa the other way. What's happening in that conversation? Oh, you know, good, good, healthy. Oh, that's, I mean, that's coach, right? So you're going to sit there and he's like, hey, this is what I'm noticing in maybe in heat one. Look, they were way too slow on that overhead squats, GG sit-ups and lunges. So when you guys are done with the rings, now it's game time. That's when you guys got to put the pedal down to the metal. Undefeated. Center screen. Unconquerable on the right. Rhapsody further back on the left. And move it forward even more here for undefeated. So as we pass the five minute mark, the split we had in the heat leader in heat number one was right about 7-10. The thing I like about an overhead squat in general, it allows you to breathe freely a lot more than say a goblet squat where you're holding it in the front and, and closing off basically uh, the ability to really utilize a full lung capacity while you're breathing. The hard part is obviously is the technical aspect of no, seeing it. If you're a good athlete, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the first of the rig here is Invictus. 
couple of great individual athletes. Both of them did the individual quarterfinals this year, and Jorge Fernandez whiffed on the ring. So that's a couple maybe costly seconds. About 10 seconds lost there. But this young man was 12th in the individual quarterfinals. He could very easily be here, Chase, as you alluded to, in that individual capacity. And that, that high catch coming over the top of the rings, that's going to save your arms a little bit. Instead of getting that full depth of dip position. Nothing wrong with that. You'd have to pass through some type of dip, so you can't do a straight arm pull to the top. But there's nothing that says that you have to do that. Well, they did have the NCAA Gymnastics Championships in Minneapolis a year ago. That probably would not have flown on the old still rings. <laughs> right. And, and, you know, those rings move way more than these. <laughs> uh, strung by a wire, the strap is twice as long. Lane four is Greater Heights Ascend. Lane three is Rhapsody. Lane five is Invictus. We had another miss on the rings. Again, a lot of that is, you, know, you, you see sunglasses out there that the sun isn't quite shining through. I mean, how many times I said depth perception, but that is the challenge of having an outdoor venue. It really does change your perception of where things are relative to what you normally have inside your affiliate. The other thing is like the ring height is about 96 inches, which when you're at your affiliate, you set the rings up exactly what you prefer. Okay, I want mine at 89, I want mine two inches out of my reach, or I like them higher or shorter straps. So if you're not used to, say, this height relative to what you normally train, that's just something you gotta learn on the fly. Well, what did I tell you when we walked in here today? They looked a little high. I'm but, also short, but. Yeah, well, and, for, and that's why they have risers, right? For, for a competition setting, higher is better. It's more fair across the board for all athletes. It's much tougher for, say, a very tall athlete to navigate a low set of rings than it is throwing a riser out there for a shorter one. Breaking boundaries is on the right side of your screen, now in third place. Team that made the jump up from the first heat into the second heat here today. No surprise, they competed very well last year at the West Coast Classic. Amanda Fisher working with Logan Southern. Now, if you think about a, a classic test that is 30 ring muss ups for time, you get a time range that, like, sub five as an individual is, is a big goal. Beyond that, it's about three minutes. They got to the rings Invictus in lane number five at about 5.30, so they've been doing it for about just over three minutes split between the two. That is first place. Breaking Boundaries is now in second place. So nipping at the heels here. Funny thing with Invictus is I was about to say they put their best pairing first. I don't know if that's true. <laughs> Well, that's the thing. It's like, okay, who goes where? Who does what first? And it really just depends on the skill sets that you have with your pair. I said at the top of the, the event, choose wisely. Do we put our best athletes together as a pair and maybe the next one not as much? Okay, well, what are we sacrificing there in time? It's usually how long it's going to take them to get through the ring muscle-ups. Okay, do we split the talent, which is something I usually don't recommend when you do mixed gender events like this. But the ring muscle-up changes the way you look at that completely because if you do split up the talent, your overall average time on the 30 ring muscle-ups is gonna be lower as opposed to one doing well and one being maybe very poorly. Invictus breaking boundaries, Rhapsody in that order right now are your rankings. That's lanes five, right side of your screen, and three. I will say the, the harder version of this event is the first pair. The buy-in of the lunges is whatever. GHD sit-ups is nothing. The overhead squats are technically difficult, but not for 55 reps. For these caliber of athletes, let me, let me preface it with that. But the ring muscle-ups and the wall balls to end is a very, very difficult couplet to end with, especially at the volume in which they have, having to be synchronized with the with the wall ball shots. The second pair gets it a bit easier, right? They, they have a tougher start, but they're fresh. And so that means on the back half, we said that we saw the same thing in heat one. 
once you get through the ring muscle-ups on the back end and you get to those overhead squats, it's go time. I don't really, I'm not worried about your feelings. If you can keep doing overhead squat, do an overhead squat. So the, the first pair, I think, is, is getting the short end of the stick between the two. Verdant CrossFit from Idaho, the only team still on the rings. Everyone else onto the wall balls. This is the final movement for the opening pair. 100 synchronized wall balls, 20 for the guys, 14 for the ladies. That then releases your second pair. They will go in the reverse order. So 200 wall balls here for each of these teams. 100 for the first pair, 100 for the second. Then they will do all the work in descending order. Ring muscle-ups, overhead squats, GHDs, and ending with the sandbag lunge. I really like this pace by Invictus that they have going on. Steady, calm. Good communication of when to break. A lot of times you'll see one athlete just break and the other have to, you know, follow the suit there. So they definitely have a plan. They're sticking with it, and that's what you need to do. It's not a race as far as speed, but it's the consistency of the reps. Listen, we're going to do 10 sets of 10. We're going to get to 100. We're going to take a 10-second break. There's a clock that these athletes can see to the left. So you can even use the clock to your advantage. Look, we're gonna go 10 reps every 30 seconds. It's gonna take about 20 seconds to do 10 reps. We get ourselves an eight second break, and then we pick it up and go again. Breaking boundaries in second place. Came in as the 14 seed, jumping into the second heat today with a seventh place finish and a sixth place finish yesterday and sixth place overall. And now they have fallen down with that mix up on the wall balls. And that's what he said about communication being very important. Don't just say, hey, let's just do as many as we can until one of us can't. That is not the approach you need to be taking. That is my approach. <laughs> yeah. What I said is like, you don't want the med ball to, making, to make decisions for you when it's time to break. You want to go in there and just do, look, there's nothing wrong with 10 sets of 10. In fact, I would argue to just do that right from the back. And again, back to your point on Invictus. They move so well together. Everything is pre-planned, well communicated. It's almost like they're on strings. They look like the. Like, they look like they're on the same. Is it like a, a dancing marionette? Yeah, exactly. puppeteered. <laughs> but look at it. This is exactly what they're doing. They're doing 10 sets of 10. They had 20 reps left. They just broke at 10. And then Brittany's saying, Jorge, this is the plan. Get back on the ball. It's 10 reps. Like, I don't care how you feel right now. I know you can do 10 reps. You don't want to do 10 reps. And we get it. Nobody wants to do 10 reps at the end of 100 after everything that they've done. But you're done after this. Let's get it over with and get, get take our break after that. And as Josh Bridges would say, I can't add more time. You're going to suffer for this time, suffer now, and then you can take your break. Now, the split check from Gambit, who had led at the halfway point in Heat 1, was 1640. So this is how far ahead they are of that Heat 1 team. That is a three-minute advantage as Invictus moves on to Alchama right and Kim left. Now, with this new group, I'm, well, a little no ramp right off the first run, another one. So two no reps in a row. I would still say the same thing as a coach. 10 sets of 10. We don't need to overstress or get ourselves out of control in the beginning part of this event because we have the rings coming up after this where we need more energy, right? We need more stamina in the shoulders rather than more time on the rings. Four-time CrossFit Games athlete is a teenager, Devin Kim on the right. Joshua Alchama on the left. Basically recruited by his teammate Jorge Fernandez for this team is Christian Harris and Winter Rodriguez are firmly in second place for Move Fast, Lift Heavy. Christian on the team last year, Winter Rodriguez, new to the bunch this year, was an individual semifinals athlete a year ago. And in third place, Greater Heights Ascend who had a phenomenal day lifting yesterday. Poor Jordan got left out of the interview <laughs> after it was over. And Christian Harris running the, the wrong way at the end. Now, the, those little, those, not brain, like, what was it? Uh, wad drunk moments is what we'll call it. It's like, you're so tired, you just forget 
where you're supposed to go. And if I see my teammates in front of me, I obviously think it's like, oh, I must run to you to tag you in. But you got to sprint across the field to the other end. It's like the toddler races. <laughs> Second pairing is also released for Rhapsody. See just left of screen. Invictus on the right, Greater Heights Ascend on the left, and then Rhapsody way on the left. Greater Heights Ascend is a new team put together this year. Invictus is jumbled up a little bit, but of course we know the pedigree. Those are all athletes we know, and Rhapsody a games team last season. But they all have experience three to four athletes that have been to the games on teams before, and they, though they may not have experience with each other. How about this? Brittany Weiss cheering on her sister Allison, not on the same team. Blood is thicker than team ties. Sweat, yeah, we want to keep it fitness related. I cheer for my little brother too. It's like, hey, you're doing a great job. Great job, buddy. <laughs> Well, I've been here for three minutes waiting for you. <laughs> Remember that time yesterday when I edged you out by a second? <laughs> yeah. I got you by three minutes today. It's like, bro, that was five years ago. Let it go. Back to Al Chama and Devin Kim. I think they started off with a very big set right off the bat. I was thinking tens all the way through. No rep. There's a greater height difference in them. I don't know if that makes a difference, but they have clearly more no reps than the Fernandez and Weiss pair had. It does, but I think the no reps are actually coming from the, the just hitting the line itself between the two, not necessarily the, the synchronization between the two of them. Move fast, lift heavy in second place. Right side of your screen. Five reps left for Invictus. Invictus was in first place to start here. They remain in first place, moving on to the muscle ups. This is the up portion. This event is called down and up. First two teammates go down. Second two teammates come up the ladder. We're at the 30 ring muscle ups now. So between the two, you're probably going to see a time check. If you're proficient in your transitions, you don't need to do huge sets. That's the other thing. You don't need to bury yourself early in these sets. It's OK to do less reps and say you would normally do as an individual because you have your partner there. When it comes to shared work in pairs or even in teams, it doesn't really matter how much the individual does in one setting as long as reps are constantly being done. So that short transition from male to female, if you don't have to do huge sets. Now, if you can consistently do big sets, obviously that's the, that, the approach you wanna take. But look, I'm gonna do three, you're gonna do five. We're gonna have a quick transition between the two. We never get too taxed. Reps are always being done. A lot of athletes will almost think that doing less reps is a negative on the team setting when it's quite the opposite. Breaking boundaries in second place in lane eight. I think I said that, that was move fast, lift heavy earlier. It's breaking boundaries. Nicole Corey and Kyle Spears. So one of the ring muscle ups for Kyle Spears. Didn't think that was Will Carter. Kyle Spears is the coach of this team. He did not compete with them last year. He just coached them in the semifinal round. He's the one replacement. He took Logan Fry's spot here in 2022. I mean, still going. That's a big set of muscle ups right off the bat. minutes into a 34 minute time cap and on to the ring muscle ups now for greater heights ascend on the left side of your screen open boxes on the right with joey tortora and his very nice beard
Here is Alchama. Former professional contemporary ballet dancer. Wow. Which part of this event most translates? I would say maybe the single arm over his Because <laughs> you got to have strong legs and great mobility. I was thinking more, nobody puts baby in a corner. <laughs> Yes, it'd be a good partner to lift your, your fellow teammate up to the rings. Now, that's great game planning between these two because they, they tapped out those last two muscle-ups for both of them, and I was a little concerned when she finishes struggling to get that last rep, knowing that he would finish out the set. So that was a great game plan. Now, these do have to be synchronized. There we go. I think this is the first time we've seen athletes using opposite hands to do this. Why well, just pick your favorite arm? Like I said, this, you, you know, you have five sets of 11 coming up. So your odds, one set, your third set, and your fifth set, you're gonna be doing 11 more on one side. So you wanna start on your favorite arm. It really doesn't matter. No, it was just one of those, it, like, but, yeah. visually. Three left here for Spears. Victus is having a little bit of trouble staying synchronized on these overhead squats. And the time added under tension as you wait, work to get on the same page. I right, see so a little rotation there. Maybe the plan was to switch hands and start right away. But just staying together, we've seen a few missteps early on in the set as well. See Invictus on the right side of your screen. There, look, off, you're off, off base again. You just did two reps that didn't count. And Will Carter and Nicole Soto coming up right behind you from Move Fast, Lift Heavy. Now, I know they need to stand side by side, but it's... There's a lot to say for at least angling yourself a little bit so you can see each other. And Devin Kim is a half step behind. So she has Joshua in the corner of her eye. And we're taking breaks here. I, I said earlier is let's put like bear yourself here because you're going to get the break on the GC sit-ups. However, Invictus just doesn't seem to be in sync. Look, one versus the other, one versus the other. Uh, like, you, they've wasted so many reps so far. And this is, as a coach, I'd, I would actually tell them to slow down a little bit. Instead of try 11 in a row, maybe we need to go 6-5 and switch arms in between. You've got the marionettes on the right in that picture and the, the whack-a-mole on the left. <laughs> and there's another one. Open box is joined. Background left with Kelsey Keel and Joey Tortora. There's Will Carter and Nicole Soto from the New York-based Move Fast, Lift Heavy crew. Soto competed individually at the MAC last year. Will Carter, a former regionals athlete back in 2017. Former Ithaca Bomber captain on the football field. If you look at the back, Carter is standing a half step behind so we can watch the tempo of his pet partner. That's a good move. We're in Victus where they're side by side, not even looking at each other. There she goes. Right? There's a lot of communic a massive amount of communication error. Ten minutes left to work. 34 minute time cap. Only two teams finished in the first heat. I think we're gonna get more than that here in the second. We saw a team get through the GHDs, your lead pair at the 29.30 mark, as we're just barely getting to the 25 minute mark. Watchful eyes here as Alchama works on the GHDs. He's going to get his break after this set. He's going to get himself mentally prepared for that lunge to the finish line. Still well ahead. 
of the field and well ahead of the time to beat. So looks like they'll be okay. I like the Devin Kim pit change there. Waited, Alchama was done. She slid the pad in, popped right on. Again, here's Carter and Soto with three more reps. And they do count that. It doesn't look synchronized, but it's technically synchronized at the top. top. Yeah. So now on to the GHD for Carter and for Soto. One of the greatest football rivalries in the country, by the way, from Ithaca. The Cortica Jug. Ithaca and Cortland. Time to beat 30-45. The two teams that finished were reignited and then stay strong in 33-46. The next best team was capped plus two, and that was CrossFit 80-35. Second change for Invictus. The time check for the time to beat is 29.30. So they're nearly two and a half minutes ahead of that pace. It should be done with these 75 pretty soon. Do you close your eyes on the GHDs? I mean, if I'm outside and the sun's up, absolutely. And a lot of that, too, is, I mean, you can get very disoriented doing yes. GHD sit-ups quickly under fatigue. So that closed eyes is, is a way to hedge against that a little bit. I'm gonna get in trouble for the technical terminology. I'm not a medical person, but like you get like vertigo. Yeah, when no, that is going upside down and right side up so quickly, so many times. Well, so many times. This is the fourth change we've seen for 75 GHD sit-ups. Now they're well ahead of the second place team, so that's not necessarily gonna be a bad thing. This is the penultimate movement, just a hundred foot synchro sandbag lunge to follow. Still with six and a half minutes left to go and two minutes ahead of the pace we saw in the heat one winner your number one team coming into the day is your number one team in the event and on the same page here and we talked about it with allison weiss from unconquerable at the beginning of the event look at the difference in the way that you carry the sandbag it's all personal preference but it'll be difference across the board it's whatever's comfortable for you I'm not sure which one I would prefer. Sometimes having that free arm makes you feel a little bit more relaxed through this, where you have the sandbag behind you in that reaching back position. Just put a little bit more strain on the body, yet the, having that balanced weight distribution for the line is what one may prefer over the other. You can hear Jorge Fernandez all the way through. Don't put it down early. Unofficially in 28-40, Invictus. That's your new time to beat. They will win, there's no one else to beat it. Invictus still in first after three events. Ah, the old shoes off at the end. Well, the field is hot. It might be hotter. <laughs> Carter and Soto now move fast, lift heavy. A hundred pounds in that sandbag for Carter. Soto's weighs 70. How heavy is that in the annals of sandbags? That's, uh, I mean, hundred pound sandbags usually traditionally reserved for the women. So it's, it's a much lighter one, which also encourages the athletes to go unbroken to push the pace the, you know sometimes the weight will start dictating the intensity of which you approach the movement with dare I say to move fast while lifting heavy I mean that's the goal right onto the sandbags for OBA four minutes left to go here in the event that is a no rep and they're gonna have to back up behind the yellow line. Yellow line inconsequential there. It was just backing up because they had Stambord forward. That back's giving Will Carter a little bit of trouble. 
and he is encroaching on Nicole Soto's lane space. Well, that, that sand starts to move a little bit, and therefore the weight distribution throws you off a little. 30-29 is the unofficial finish time for Move Fast, Lift Heavy. And Keel and Tortora now coming up behind. And what they want in Move Fast is to have them slow down just a little bit so that heat one time can give themselves another five points between the two of them. That's going to happen. 30-45 for Reignited. They will beat OBA here, and Reignited needs every point they can get. What's important here on the team side is that every place finish from 1st to 20th is separated by five points. So there's not that decreasing point differential from 1st to 30th like we see on the individual side. So getting people in between is massively important when OBA was only five points behind Invictus, but since Invictus takes the win, they only had a 20-point cushion on move flat, fast, lift, heavy. So that five-second behind difference of the heat one time, which maybe they weren't even aware of, cost them a five point. So now that has decreased to 20, or from 20 to 10. Rhapsody just finished. Rethwell and Torres for Invictus Unconquerable which has doubled the cheering section. Invictus has come over as well. You got six people at the finish line egging you on. The next time from heat number one is 33-46, so that doesn't seem to be a factor. No one else out on the field as well, so they should be clear ahead of getting right where they're at. And Invictus Unconquerable came in in ninth place team that has a chance to qualify, but they have to move here, so this will be a big finish in terms of helping them. Well, ninth place, they had 110 points. They were only 55 points, or sorry, four, uh, 35 points out of fifth. Rhapsody at 145. They're at 110. The question is, who is going to middle between them? But they can at least move themselves up. They were tied for 110. Seventh is 115. So you could see a three a three place move depending on who gets between them and the teams ahead of them on the leaderboard. You always need a good middle. 33 coming up here on the clock. 33-46 is that next time from the opening heat. And Rethwell and Torres are across in 33 even unofficially. It's going to be close with that 33-46 time, as you said, with these three teams trying to finish. 33.02 will be the time we have on the score sheet. Five teams have finished in this heat. That is about to grow exponentially. Undefeated will come across. They'll also be joined by Greater Heights Ascend. That's undefeated. And then we've got Vernon. Time cap coming up in 15 seconds. And Union Square Black is still back on the GHDs. Boy, breaking boundaries. They fell off pace. They were in it early on the first pair, but they are left out on the sandbags. And Invictus, pick your team. Good event on both sides. Just right from the start, Invictus leader after day one and two events. We were curious how the team would stack up with more team-oriented events here in day number two, and they did not disappoint. As they were almost three minutes ahead of the first place pace from heat one. Pair two struggled a little bit in the middle of the overhead squads, but fortunately for them, the lead at which they had on the rest of the field gave them at least some breathing room to work through those overhead squats in the middle. And then the lunge at the end, no issue. So far ahead of everyone else out here on the field. All but two teams wind up finishing in this final heat. So 10 teams total. Invictus in 28-41. Greater Heights Ascend down there in seventh. We're in a qualifying position after day one. Undefeated was right around that cut line. Finishing in eighth.
three events halfway through this CrossFit Games qualifying competition now on the team's side. Let's go down to Jamie Hagia. Thank you so much. All right, yesterday we saw more individuals shine. Today was more team. How did you guys decide on the pairing for this event? Oh, good question. Uh, I, I would honestly say that, uh, actually, I don't know how we decided. Me and, uh, I, think, me? I think Josh likes Devin a little more. I like Britt a little more. And then we just kind of, I, I don't know, honestly. We, we got it. It just kind of worked. It just kind of worked out that way. Okay, great. And going back down seemed equally as tough as going back up. How did you disord, uh, decide who was starting and who was going to finish this event? Same. We were just kind of told. I mean, in training, we did it the way we performed today, and it worked out. So we were like, might as well just stick with it. It was a good um, set. So, yeah. And Josh, I saw you in the pain cave on those dumbbell overhead squats and finishing. How much pressure and how do you handle that when you're trying to finish this off for your team? I mean, you just think one rep at a time. That's the main goal. Um, usually overhead squats like that are okay for me, but I struggled a little bit today. Um, Dev kept me checked in and, and it worked out. Thank you guys so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. All right, two things. Sometimes not as much thought goes into it as we all think. And <laughs> yeah. Jorge is dating Brittany's sister, so good choice to pick Brittany as your teammate. Yeah, sometimes no plan is the best plan. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> Invictus is your winner in event three. More to come from the Grand Games. Welcome back to the Granite Games. I am here with Ben Bergeron. He is the head coach of CompTrain. And Ben, you have had a lot of experience coaching former games champions and high-level athletes. For those who, have, who are aspiring to be out here, what does it take for these athletes to make it to this level? Well, it takes a lot. It takes commitment, dedication, all the buzzwords that everyone hears. But the obvious one, it takes serious levels of fitness. It's, Everyone loves to talk about mindset and all the other stuff. It takes being fit first. And then one of the big separators between the good and the great is their mindset. And then you, your athletes come to you to learn from you. But flipping that, what have you learned from your athletes? A whole lot more than they've learned from me. Um, I've, the opportunity to work with some of the best in the sport, you'll learn a lot of what it takes. It's not a lot of balance at the super highest level. It's a level of curiosity and coachability. It's um, a total commitment to the task at hand. It's a full-time job and then some. It's not just about the six hours in the gym. It's about the 24 hours. It's what you're doing when you go home. It's how you eat. It's how you maximize the time outside so you can get the little slivers of relationships with other people that matter in your life. It's not a lot of balance to be at the top, and it's been a, more than a privilege to work with all of these athletes. Thank you so much, Ben. The 2022 CrossFit semifinals are brought to you by Trifecta, the official meal delivery partner of CrossFit. Noble, the official footwear and apparel brand of CrossFit. Thorn, the official supplement partner of CrossFit. U.S. Army, know your army. 
and by Arasti, the official rapid recovery partner of CrossFit. What does it take? How do I train? What do I eat? How much do I sleep? How do I react? What if this happens? What if that happens? It all adds up. It's not about what I do. It's about what I don't do. No excuses, no shortcuts, no gimmicks, no tomorrows, no bull. Castings. For simple shapes, a complete solid pattern may be used. A mold box is filled with special molding sand that is rammed home around the pattern. The molten metal at precisely the right temperature is poured into the mold. The assemblies are tumbled. Shaping is done with the aid of machinery, and the fine finish is evidence of the craftsmanship that has gone to their design and construction. The reason I started using Thorn products was because uh, Steph Nikita, she was very influential in terms of what products we should use and what are the good products out there. I always want to make sure that I'm sharing trusted companies and products with others and Thorn definitely fits that. NSF is a priority for me because I know it's a quality product. NSF certification is a gold standard for supplements. You know that what it says on the label is actually in the bottle. Dear coach, thank you. Thank you for always being there. For running a class at 5.30 in the morning so I can get home before my kids wake up. For making sure I build on my strengths and work on my weaknesses. For being a compass that guides me toward a better version of myself. For constantly putting the needs of others before your own. For helping me lose 100 pounds last year for helping me realize that asthma can't stop me from achieving my goals. For reaffirming that life doesn't head downhill after the age of 40. For making the impossible possible. For being an amazing coach, friend, and mentor. Thank you. Thank you for always being there.
just the start to go.
Effect. The Minnesota mashup for the ladies. A 25 minute time capped event. Starting off with 10 wall balls already complete. On to that rogue GHD for 50 GHD sit ups. Back to the rig for 20 wall balls. Out onto the floor for 40 dumbbells. Single arm overhead squats. 50 pounds for the ladies. Back to the rig for 30 wall balls, 30 ring muscle ups, 40 wall balls. Out onto the competition floor for 200 double unders. Back to the rig for 50 wall balls. And finishing up with 10 dumbbell clean and jerks with 50 pounds. So if you want to abbreviate it, 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50 for the wall balls. And in reverse, 50, 40, 30, the double unders, and 10 on those extra movements. Three heats of individual elite athletes gonna be throwing down here for event number three. Hands are up. Sierra Chumlin. And Chumlin out in lane number 10, first off of the 50 GHDs. And now we're gonna have the rest of the ladies. Second round of wall balls, bumping things up to 20 reps. 20 reps on the wall balls two and a half minutes in once again 25 minute time cap for your ladies chefs in lane number seven was your number two athlete on to round number two of the wall balls lots of reps lots of movements very early on as chumlin Lane number 10. Off of the wall balls. On to the double, the dumbbell single overhead squats right behind her. Just a few seconds, Jordan Chefs. Your one and two. But lane number eight, Julia Crawford right there with them. That's your one, two, and three. Early on here, just about 3.20 on the clock. Down the field and back. Always coming back to the wall balls. That final round of wall balls, 50. So we're gonna be working our way down. 
Our entire heat here in heat number one, all within about 10 reps of each other. As Chumlin tries to hang on to the lead down in lane number 10 early here in heat number one. But two lanes over, Julia Crawford out of Maverick CrossFit. Now out in front. 20 reps in. Staying with that dumbbell. Not taking a break. Four minutes in. And Crawford now will adjust. 10 final reps before she can head back for 30 wall balls. Increasing by 10 each round here on the wall balls. As we descend in that secondary movement, 50 GHDs and now 40 single arm overhead squats. Next up's gonna be ring muscle ups. So your leaders going from wall balls to muscle ups. As we cross over the five minute mark, leading the way, trying to extend that lead, Julia Crawford. Down in lane number eight, black pants, orange top. Hands are up all over the place, looking for 40 reps with that dumbbell, 50 pounds on that heavy rogue dumbbell. Chumlin. And Kiovetti going to be your number two and three. Advantage going to Kiovetti. Lane number five as well, Jessica Meek out of CrossFit DSSC. Crawford very fast through those previous rounds of wall balls. She, if she can extend that lead here in the round of 30. 22 reps in for Crawford. Shirts coming off down in lane number 10 for Chuck. Got to streamline some things. High speed, low drag. Final wall ball for Crawford. And she'll be your first athlete to mount up on those rings. Along the backside of our massive rogue rig. Gonna be looking for 30 ring muscle ups. Crawford will have some company down in lane number five. Meek will be your next athlete. Moving forward to the ring. Two and make it three reps in for Crawford as Meek hits the ring. Close second. It goes one, Crawford in lane number eight, two. Meek in lane number five. But Meek with a nice big first set, looking for 30 reps. And Crawford will be back on the rings. Lane number seven, Jordan Sheff's going to be sliding into that number three position early on here, right about the seven and a half minute mark. Chumlin and Kiavetti up onto the rings. Eleven reps in for Meek down in lane number five. Ten reps in for Chefs down in lane number seven. Ten reps in for Crawford as well in lane number eight. Looking for 30 reps. 
Who's gonna step out in front here on this massive set of 30? On the rings. Fifteen reps in for chefs in lane number seven. Twelve reps in down in lane number three for Bolella. Fifteen reps in for Bolella in lane number three. Crossing over the ten minute mark. Yeah, let's go, Chef. Twenty reps in for Chefs. Lane number seven. Seventeen for Crawford. Twelve reps in for Chumlin. 16 reps in now for Kia Vetti down in lane number nine. Our athlete's gonna go from those 30 ring muscle ups back to the wall balls for 40 wall balls. Once again, a 25 minute time capped event. As up on the 11 minute mark, trying to get through the middle portion here. Minnesota mashup, 30 ring muscle ups. Nice. 24 reps in for Fs. Five reps to go down in lane number five. Jessica Meek trying to be out in front. Hitting the rings in that number two or three position. Looking to come off first with three reps remaining. Eleven and a half minutes in meek down in lane number five looking to come off the rings in that number one position As she heads back to the wall balls one rep For meeks down in lane number five and now three to go for chefs 22 reps in for Fulmer And that'll do it for Jessica meek down in lane number five Back to the wall balls. Three reps to go for chefs at the 12 minute mark. Leading the way with that 14 pound med ball. That big set of 40, second to last set of wall balls for Meek. But Jordan chefs Gonna be that number two athlete onto the set of 40 wall balls. And now three to go down in lane number for Fulmer. Kiovetti, five muscle ups to go. Twenty reps in, twenty to go for your leader Jessica Meek, down in lane number five, her closest competitor, just two lanes over, lane number seven, for Jordan Chefs. And now fifteen reps in for Chefs.
One more muscle up to go for Bolella down in lane number three, and that'll do it for Bolella. Putting the pressure on Meek and Chefs. Our athletes slowing way down on that big set of 30 muscle ups. But gonna be back to it on the wall balls. Our ladies through the round of 30, moving very fast through the wall balls as Meek heads out. 40 wall balls complete for your leader. Center of your competition floor. Lane number five going to be heading out to the double under platform looking for 200 double unders. Jordan Chefs, your closest competitor. Bolella out of CrossFit Norwalk down at lane number three. Coming up on the 15 minute mark. And Jordan Chefs, lane number seven, heading out for some double unders. A beautiful afternoon here for a set of 200 double unders. Crossing over to 15 minute mark. 10 minutes remaining athletes, 10 minutes to go. Just heat number one of three for your elite individual female athletes. The Minnesota mashup event number three. All your elite athletes looking for them very coveted positions heading out to Madison this week or this summer rather for the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. Chefs and Meek, first two athletes out working on that set of 200 double unders. At the 16 minute mark. And now Crawford moving fast back onto the wall balls. Chiavetti as well. Hands are up down in lane number four. Falmer. And now do it for Falmer and Chiavetti at the same time. And now advantage Chiavetti as she runs out to that double under platform. Chiavetti out of CrossFit override. Meek and Chefs on their second set of 100 double unders. Slide advantage going into the double unders for Jessica Meek down in lane number five. We all know some days the double unders are fast and right there, no problem. But some days, and we've got a lot of activity under our belt so far. And Meek within closing distance for that 200 reps. And she'll head back. Our largest set to finish out event number three, 50 wall balls before she'll head down for some heavy dumbbell clean and jerks. Meek getting right to work on that set of 50. Trying to hold off chefs in lane number seven. 18 minutes in, seven minutes to go. Great weather for your ladies out here. Not too hot, not too windy. And of course, week three of our semifinals underway here at the Granite Games. Your ladies trying to 
put a mark on the Granite Games. Here comes Jordan Chefs. Chefs wasting no time. Getting right back to work. Twenty five rep deficit is chefs over me under Meek. Crossing over the halfway marker for Meek. Thirty-seven reps in for Jessica Meek as Kiavetti back to her lane in lane number nine to start her round of fifty wall balls. Twenty-five reps in for Jordan Chefs. Crossing over the twenty minute mark, less than five minutes remaining, ladies. Less than five minutes remaining. And now five reps to go for Jessica. Down in lane number five, leading the way. Looking to put a stamp on heat number one here. And she'll be all done. Heading down to the opposite side of the floor. Two heavy rogue dumbbells. We're looking for 10 clean and jerks with those dumbbells before she can run across the line and close this one out on top for heat number one. center of your competition field at the 21 minute mark four minutes remaining jessica meek out of crossfit dssc 10 clean and jerks with those 250 pounders two reps in eight to go Jordan Chefs was your closest competitor. About a 10 rep deficit behind Meek. And that'll do it for Chefs. And she's running down to her dumbbells. Four reps in for a Meek. Five reps in for Meek as Chefs. Dumbbells in the air. Six reps now for Meek. Four to go. Two minutes, three minutes remaining, ladies. A 25-minute time cap. Three minutes remaining. Four reps now in for Chefs. Two final reps to go for Jessica. Lane number five. And now one rep to go for Jessica Meek. Four reps to go for Chefs. But Jessica Meek will finish up here. 22.54, the time to beat. And two reps to go for Chefs. In lane number seven, here comes Andrea Chiavetti. That'll do it for Jordan Chefs. Andrea Chiavetti, next athlete, onto the dumbbells at a CrossFit override. About 90 seconds remaining. Four reps. In. For Andrea, six reps to go. Two heavy 50 pound rogue dumbbells. 
as we come up on the 24 minute mark. Four reps to go for Andrea Chiavetti. Can we get two members, maybe more across of that line? Julia Crawford out of Maverick CrossFit onto the dumbbells with two final reps to go for Andrea Chiavetti. Come on, CrossFit Override, where are you guys at? Andrea Chiavetti will finish up and run across the line. 24 minutes, 22 seconds. Ladies, you got 30 seconds remaining. 30 seconds to go as Julia Crawford. Three reps remaining, make it two reps. And 20 seconds to go. Can she finish up? Julia Crawford, somebody from Maverick CrossFit, make some noise. We're going to count her down. 10 seconds remaining. Can she get across the line? Five seconds to go. Three, two, one. And time. Jessica Meek, 22 minutes, 54 seconds unofficially. We'll see how it stacks up. Two more heats to go, don't go anywhere. Quick reset of the floor. We'll be right back to the action. Beautiful, beautiful day. Beautiful day here. A little bit overcast, sun's starting to come out. Hey folks, make sure you guys stay hydrated out there. Good way to do that. Swim by Yeti. Get yourself a Yeti cooler. It'll keep everything cool that you need cool all day long. Official cooler of the Granite Games. Go check them out. Yeti. The 2022 Granite Games here at TCO Stadium in Egan, Minnesota, presented by Trifecta. Out in the beautiful Minnesota skies, getting the sun on us. Through the eyes, on the face, on the skin, alongside Chase Ingram, Jamie Hagia, 
is our reporter down on the field. My name is Joel Godet. To vent three on the women's side, it is the Minnesota mashup. Chase Ingram, this is your dream of the <laughs> Not a barbell in sight, Joel, but these the athletes, when you're looking at this, it's that inverse chipper, 10 to 50, 50 to 10, crossing through the middle. I love the way this thing's set up. Event description presented by the United States Army. Our recipe for success is delivered by Trifecta. Those muscle-ups in the middle, especially on the women's side, is going to be the game changer, the separator of this long chipper. But I see you, Karen. I see those 150 wall ball shots in there, and that's gonna get tough towards the back end when you think those 30 muscle-ups and then that 40, 50 wall ball shots to finish the end of this event. Nasty this little the, twist. Sorry, Chase, this is the second heat. So you're looking at people right now that are trying to move here on Saturday. Chief amongst them, Emily Rolf, games veteran. Can she get herself into the final heat Sunday? You, know, you got two events to do so, and you have two chippers to get you there. And if you think about Emily Rolf's skill set, is that this bodes well for her based off her performance yesterday, which wasn't bad, by the way. She had a good performance for her skill set. Fee Sagafi, same thing. Great lift for her. Unfortunately, that put her in a 22nd place tie with Emily Rolf. Fee was eighth in the opening event yesterday, so 17th overall coming in. But again, a day that maybe more favors her skill set. See how things stack up when we are done with 25 minutes of work. We had only three finishers in the first heat. Time to beat is 22.55 from Jessica Meek. The question is where to race in this. So you're going to see a lot of athletes go 10 unbroken, follow that up with 50 GHD sit-ups, and then 20 wall ball shots. So the 10-20 in the beginning is nothing for these athletes. So you're going to see them actually race more on the GHD sit-ups than they need to on the wall ball shots when it comes to the beginning part of this event. Funny enough, this is the last time these athletes are going to do a movement that doesn't tax the shoulders. You've got wall ball shots, single arm overhead squats, double unders, clean and jerks. So there's a lot of interference here, and obviously the ring muscle ups to begin with. So this is the last time these athletes are not going to use their upper body throughout the rest of this event. Fee Sagafi out of CrossFit Mentality, Mentor, Ohio, east side of Cleveland. Good pace, good tempo on these GHDs attacking them early. I mean, the, the caliber of athletes that you have here competing, especially in the later heats, 50 GHD sit-ups is borderline to nothing. When you think about the amount that they would have to do, especially if you think at last year's quarterfinals compared to this one, but it's, it's absolutely just almost a, a, a placeholder, the beginning part of this event. 10 wall ball shots, no problem. 50 GHD sit-ups a mere inconvenience and then back to the rig again for 20 more wall ball shots but what you're looking at is when they get through these gc sit-ups and the 20 wall ball shots the 40 overhead squats leading back to the rig is going to be it when we start to see a little separation of the field as chase alluded to the wall balls rise in reps you see the reps varying depending on the movement as we continue throughout the rest of the event. All right, Joel, the reps on the wall ball shots, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 as the event goes on. And then you have a varying amount of movements going from 50 down to 10. Say it's the 200 double unders. But 20 would seem like kind of an easy. Yeah, it's a cute number system, and I'm a big fan for it. I like when you see higher volume double unders as they say the monostructural element of this event, it's good to see a higher set. So as far as the programming is concerned, it makes the double unders matter as opposed to say putting it where the 50 is. 50 double unders going to take someone maybe 25 to 30 seconds casually. 200 towards the back end when you split that between 40 and 50 wall ball shots has an impact on how athletes approach this event. So Fee Sagafi is the first one to reach the dumbbell and a couple of no reps downfield for Emily Rolf. A lot of that's just making sure you get depth. The challenge here for 40 reps, having to rotate or at least advance 10 at a time. Again, it's all about positioning. Now, a piece of this tells the story as you advance down the field every 10 reps. It also forces you to break to varying degrees. You saw Fee Sagafi basically just walk forward, and she'll do it again here, and then get right back into it. 
puts the dumbbell down and works her way back in. Well, how do you break up that mandatory stepping forward? It's already set for you. That's the nice thing about the way this flows is that you advance 10 or you advance every 10. And you saw what Fee did, and which a lot of athletes you'll see do, is they'll switch arms as they do that to give their arm a break. What's interesting here is that we're changing all of these varied movements between the med ball and the wall ball shots with other things, GC sit-ups, double unders, clean and jerks, but this is the one where you have some interference or some redundancy, which means similar movement patterns as you go from 40 overhead squats with this single arm back to the rig for 30 wall ball shots. Top three in the event, Fee Sagafi heading back to the rig. She is in first, Emily Rolf, and then Carissa Stapp, who was just next to Fee, closest lane to you in lane one. Competed at the games last year, finished 10th on team. I love it. Doing wall balls all by your lonesome right now for Fee Sagafi. And she needs to. She's about 55 points out of a qualifying position, which isn't an insurmountable amount of work when you think you have four events on the weekend left to go. But at the same time, with that 22nd place finish and an eighth place finish in event one, if she wants to get herself up in the top five, you're gonna have to start getting more top five finishes. And if an opportunity arises, if you can hit a home run by getting a top three or a top one position, you gotta go for it. The hard part for Fee is that she can be as far ahead of heat two as she wants to, but she has to understand is that there's still another heat going. So don't let off the gas a little bit at all. If you're alone in this heat, knowing there's, a, there's one to come. This is the round of 30 wall ball shots. And Fee is now joined by the rest of the field catching up. No stranger to being all by herself. Trains alone nowadays. Different schedule than Scott Panchik. They used to basically be training partners, but Fee Sagafi has gone to the brute strength crew, really helped her strength numbers. It's changed up how she trains. She lifts first. Doesn't like training by herself. Said it was very lonely, so one day a week would jump in with Scott Panchik. But she is very used to and comfortable now looking around and seeing nobody left or right. Was very impressive for Fee as she did a huge set on that set of 30. I think she went unbroken for that set of 30 wall ball shots, taking that right into the 30 ring muscle ups. And this is that 30 30 halfway point. You can do 30 ring muscle ups unbroken. All of these athletes can. And as Fee drops down, the question is should they? No, nobody can do 30 ring muscle ups unbroken. <laughs> what are you talking about? Maybe the muscle or the wall ball shots, I hope, is what you were talking about. When, it, when you or I guess look at this, yeah, when you look at the skill set of these athletes for 30 ring muscle ups, we said on, on the team side, is this is a this is a classic test. And it, it's really funny, I'm surprised there, there still isn't a named workout for 30 ring muscle ups for time. It's such a classic benchmark. Yeah, 30 ring muscle ups for time. Exactly, right? And then, you, and then you have that in the middle of a chipper that with a 25 minute time cap. But this is the huge separator for all of these athletes. So the way you manage that, if you're great, then break it up a lot. Take your little breaks, shake things out, because the, again, the wall ball shots are increasing, and that 40-50 split at the end is gonna be tough. Let me come back to that in a second, but let's go check in with Jamie. Thanks, guys. I'm down here on the field uh, watching Fee do these muscle-ups, and she looks very smooth, very relaxed. Yesterday wasn't her best day with those heavy lifts, but these muscle-ups she's cruising through, and the rest of the day with the chest of our pull-ups and gymnastics as a body weight specialist should be a really good day for her. Chase, are you doing sets of five, sets of 10? It depends on the athlete. 10 may be a bit much, but if look, if you're great at this, and a, a lot of times you look at athletes and you say, okay, where should I push? Where should I use my skill set to my advantage? And oftentimes you'll look at an athlete, and as a coach you'll suggest, it's like, if you're great at this, then make this the easiest part because this is gonna be very difficult for other athletes. So say you could do sets of 10 on this and take, I don't know, a, a certain break schedule system. That's still going to make it very challenging because you have 90 more wall ball shots coming with 200 double unders in between that. So what you think you should do as an athlete is look at this from how can easy can I make the thing I'm the best at? Therefore, I can put more effort into things that I'm not as good at. Fee Sagafi being one of those athletes, she's five foot two, great on the rings, as you can show here. But five foot two isn't is an, isn't an advantage when you go to wall shots with 90 ball reps to a 10 foot target so for her is just be great but make it as easy as possible so she she has five reps left to go and then allow herself a bit more energy that she's going to need for the difficult part of this event for her some might call it a disadvantage 
to be five foot two at the 10 foot wall ball target. On the opposite, you see Emily Rolf, who, who will have a completely different back half of this event than, say, Fee Sagafi. When you, those wall ball shots start to increase, Emily Rolf being a taller, longer athlete, a super hyper-conditioned athlete, if you want to say it in that way. So for her, it's navigate, da damage control your way through these ring muscle-ups. And then when she gets to the 40 and 50, this is where she can make a move on the back half of this event. 25-minute time cap. Nine minutes in, 22 minutes is the time to be. Fisagafi is in first place, lane two left side of screen, lane five right side of screen. Emily Rolf is in second, and then Carissa Stapp on the left side in lane one is in third, and Fisagafi is back under the wall balls. This is her round of 40. She did the 30 unbroken. And you think of what she just did leading up to this set of 40. She did 40 single arm overhead squats. She got done with that and went back to the rig for 30 wall ball shots and then 30 ring muscle ups and now 40 wall ball shots. So it's just a shoulder blast at the back half of this. Let's check back with Jamie. Yeah, we talked about earlier in these heats, the shorter athletes with these wall balls to a 10-foot target, we're seeing feet jump. Her feet are literally leaving the ground to get that to that 10-foot target. Good thing she's well-conditioned, but definitely making that extra jump will help her get that ball up to that target. V made it to the CrossFit Games for the first time back in 2019 when she finished 24th was there last year coaching Molly Chacon, and then famously ran with Scott Pancheck along with the rest of the CrossFit Mentality crew. They actually said she was so stressed last year at the games doing everything else she was doing. He lost four pounds. <laughs> it's easier to be focused on yourself sometimes than it is to be pulled in 10 different directions. I think Fee is doing sets of 10 on this set of 40. And Emily Rolf is having some struggles with the ring muscle ups now, right behind Fee Sagafi. Well, Fee may get off the rig before anyone gets to these wall ball shots. Five, a break on five, so. And we've got singles right now for Emily Rolf, and that's all she needed. She had just one left, but she had just done one before that. Now, Rolf on the right side of your screen is two minutes behind Fee Sagafi, who did three sets of 10 and two sets of five on the back, back end of those 40 wall ball shots. 200 double unders for Fee Sagafi. Now, these will be on a floor surface. If you remember at the CrossFit Games last year at North Park, there were double unders on turf. Which is a, a complete game changer. So it, it, at least they got a, a rubber mat. So we're on the bottom half of that. So Fee Sagafi, if you look at the right side of your screen, just finished four wa 40 wall ball shots. Now on to these 200 double unders. Now her hair tie just came out. I hope the rope doesn't hit that. So the, the first human to create a hair tie that does not come out during double unders for CrossFitters is going to be the next millionaire. I'm going to be Mr. Wonderful here. I don't know the market share there. <laughs> It's always helps to be first. <laughs> See the split on the mat. They'll be doing 100 double unders on the back half and then move forward for the next 100. I gotta be honest, I would do all of my double unders on both sides completely uncontrolled. <laughs> yeah, I understand you want me to be on this side of the line, but... Well, oddly, I mean, that's a challenging thing to do for some people is to stay in one place. Obviously, that's the correct technique that you would like to use. And then for V, the curious thing is like 200 is a, is a that's a big bulk set of double unders. How is she going to manage that? Is it going to absolute fatigue with the shoulders and taking break when basically you accidentally hit it, or break it up into certain sets? I would I would suggest, you know, as Emily Rolf's coming up, doing controlled breaks, knowing you have the 50 wall balls coming. Just having something where you can keep the heart rate down. You don't want to fatigue the shoulders too much because those 50, as you said, see you did three sets of 10 and two sets of five. So those last 50 are going to be much tougher for than the first 40. What's that number that you look at? Athlete dependent. 
you can have someone who's just an absolute monster at double unders. And then you look at the same thing. Can you do 100 unbroken for two sets? Yes. Do you need to do 100 double unders broken for each set? Well, you got to think about what's coming. 50 wall ball shots. That'll be the highest set we've had in these increasing sets. So we said it's all shoulders. Everything. Everything in this event other than the GHG sit-ups is all shoulders. You can see it right now in Fee Sagafi's breaks. It is all shoulders. She's on the back half of the 100. You can see Emily Rolf is on the front half of the 100. Now for her, it looks like she's taking very deliberate breaks. Talked about Fee coming in in 17th. Emily Rolf is 11th after a fifth place and a 22nd place yesterday. And they'll be joined now by Caroline Stanley. Who's trying to do some work after a 21st and a 7th yesterday. She is in 13th overall coming in. So what Fee's doing is she's breaking sets in a, or breaking her sets up into sets of 20. Taking about a 10 second break in, in, in between these sets. And what that allows her to do is it allows for that heart rate to come down. You start to feel yourself tensing up in your shoulders. If you think like you're, you're flexing up in that shoulders trying to whip the rope around. And when you do a set of 20, that's about 12 seconds worth of work. She's taken about a 10 second break. So she's got a one to one work to rest ratio in these 200 reps. This is a nice moment here for Caroline Stanley. She is in third place as Fee Sagafi will head back to the rig for the wall balls. But talk about a confidence boost. Stanley comes in as the sixth seed in this semifinal. She's just 22 years of age. To be out on that mat doing double unders with Fee Sagafi and Emily Rolf, it's those little I know I belong here moments as the young athletes continue to progress in the sport. And as a new athlete with a lot of these names, like you hopefully, th their focus is elsewhere when it comes to that, but that when it, when you have a new athlete that's, it's human nature to see, to see those things. Well, and you, when you look at it after the fact, where was I? Who was I with? What does this mean for me going forward? So Fee just did a set of 10 on her first set on these 50. Hand and up. so that two minute edge that she had on Emily Rolf when Rolf came off the ring muscle ups going into the set of 40 is now 45 seconds. And Rolf will head back after Jess Harper had joined her. So Emily Rolf, right side of the screen, just getting to the med ball. Sagafi in the pink top on the left side, still doing sets of 10. Jess is taking a huge break here. She was ripping through the double unders in her first set. And that's the thing is like, maybe she's great at him. She thought that's where she should catch up, where uh, you, know, you know Fee is good as well, but she was doing those sets of 20 to give herself some rest going into this wall ball shot, knowing this will actually be the toughest part of the event for Fee Sagafi. 50 wall balls, still 10 double dumbbell clean and jerks to follow this. So that would be 30 reps for Fee on the right side of your screen. Still sticking with sets of 10. Now she did three sets of 10 and two sets of five on the 40. Canadian Emily Rolf on the left side of your screen. Was fourth in the Atlas Games to qualify for the CrossFit Games last year where she came in 15. Rolf also doing sets of 10. Fee did another set of 10, so she did more sets here than she did on the 40. Of course, that was coming off the ring muscle up, so no surprise to see she may have to take a little extra rate before she got to the double unders. He picked it right back up. That was her shortest break after her set of four set of 10. It looks like she's gonna finish things out. And Fee Sagafi will go chalk up. Double dumbbell clean and jerks here at 50 pounds for the women. Fee Sagafi checks into this competition at 135 pounds. She is lifting almost herself for these final 10 reps. And that's tough with dumbbells just because they get so squirrely. And you think about it, the hardest part about a dumbbell is controlling them in space. They get all over the place. And with you think the shoulder work that has gone into this, it makes it 10 times harder to hold onto these. And you've got to move every two reps here. So it's hard to find a rhythm. Emily Rolf coming right up behind her. 
Rolf picked up another 15 seconds, so she's only about 30 seconds behind Fee. And Fee Sagafi will march forward toward reps five and six. Emily Rolf has not yet started. First rep is in the air for Rolf. And Fee Sagafi very cognizant of where the competition is. Able to take a longer break there, but she's got to be able to keep pace here down the back. The competition that she can see, the competition that she can't see are the 10 ladies waiting in heat number three. 22.55 from the first heat is the time to beat. Fisa Gaffey will do that, but yeah, Chase is right. How much space can you put between you and the people that haven't gone yet? Well, Rolf has an opportunity to catch up. Well, she has caught her here. They're now both on the same square. Sagafi and Rolf are dead even, but Sagafi's dumbbells are in the air first. And now Sagafi's getting reduced to singles. And Emily Rolf has now passed Fee Sagafi. Doesn't have a whole lot of time, though. And Sagafi equals her. And for Rolf, you got to pick him up. You got another heat behind you. In the air for Rolf, one more rep. And Emily Rolf sets the dumbbells down and closes the gap with a heat win. And Fee Sagafi, who has worked so hard on strength all year, it's the double dumbbell clean and jerks that just caught up to her here at the end. And oh, you can see man. that point. And that, look at that. That's that's not a strength deficiency for her. She's Exhausting. just, a, exactly, she's absolutely smoked. And we talked about the amount of shoulder work that is in this event and where 150 of those reps are at a disadvantage for an athlete like Fee Sagafi. Fee just took a look around, but again, as you talked about, not being chased by the people on the field. She's being chased by the people not on the field. Needing to jump up from 17th place coming into the day. Oh, come on. That left oh, arm lockout, wow. and then the right gave out. Chase, how long do you wait before you go again? That's the hard part, right? Because you don't want to give too much time. Obviously, you're well ahead of the field behind you, but. It, you're sitting outside the top five by about 55 points. You have 10 athletes that are still waiting to go. You start to look at the times in the previous heat, and is that going to factor into play? But for her, she waited a long time before the last rep and couldn't get it. You're almost going to have to double your rest time. And that's the worst part, because right now, she's not too tired to do the rep. Her shoulders are just no longer cooperating. Caroline Stanley, right side of screen. Now nine reps behind Fee Sagafi. Came in in 13th after a seventh place finish in the lifting complex. And look at Sagafi, like it was nothing. And in 21.45 unofficially, she is finished. My God, My God is right. <laughs> That, and that's, this is the game these athletes are going to have to play, being this far out of a top five position, is pushing themselves right to the brink. And I think the dumbbells, the dumbbells at the end seem so innocent. It's only 10 reps. 50 pounds and 75 pounds is, is, is not light, especially at the volume of work they've had into this point. And it's almost like putting in a failure movement, like strict handstand push-ups. I mean, ring muscle-ups being one of those handstand walks we saw yesterday sneak up on some people. Carissa Stapp, who, remember, was in the top three for the longest time, has now come to the dumbbells as well. Caroline Stanley is working on her final two here. Conditioning is where she really lacked in the past, has put in a ton of work. Hard work pays off this past year. There's Carissa Stapp. Stanley drops the dumbbells and she finishes third over the time of Jessica Meek. She gets in before Jordan Sheff. So right now is in fourth place overall. Still with one more heat to go as Carissa Staff works. This is the round of five and six.
Time cap's going to come into a factor here soon. Minute and a half away. I like what she did with that touch and go rep as she advanced the dumbbells forward. That just gives her, you know, some, sometimes coming down from the top and not rebounding from the bottom, but that touch and go makes it a little bit easier than doing that dead stop from that bottom position. And step is through inside of 24 minutes. A couple other athletes still working on the dumbbells here. Jess Harper in the blue on the left, Ashley Shoemaker on the right. See two different styles, one between the legs, one on the outside. One not more efficient than the other, just depending on your preference. Going between the legs, what you see is they don't have to move their feet as much. So if you look on the left, she has to split her feet out to do the next rep, where if you go right between the legs, the feet tend to stand still, so your cycle time is a bit quicker. Valuable points here. Shoemaker put him down. Harper just got no repped. And Shoemaker is across ahead of Jess Harper. Inside the time cap with still 15 seconds left, Jess Harper is complete. Kelly Benfi also on the dumbbells. Won't have enough time to finish, but will be the next closest woman as we hit the 25 minute time cap. Emily Rolf is your new time to beat. 1952, Chase Ingram. Fee Sagafi in 21.47. And they were, you know, Fee Sagafi led early. You look at the bottom part of your screen. Her overhead squats were absolutely beautiful, switching every 10 reps. But as the we get to the middle portion of that, we figured Emily Rolf would struggle a little bit. It's just not a movement that is basically con conducive to her skill set, where Fee Sagafi on the left pulled ahead there by two minutes coming off of the rings. Emily Rolf was behind Fee Sagafi, but once we got down to the dumbbells, the 40 wall ball shots, the double unders, and the 50 is where Emily made up all her time. And at the very end, the last two reps, Rolf was able to pass Fee Sagafi and not just pass her, but put almost a minute and a half on her because Fee Sagafi kept failing that last rep. Well, just look at the strength and the, the shaking as those dumbbells came to her shoulders before the jerk or the press out. 1952 for Rolf, we talked about Sagafi, and then Caroline Stanley came in as the sixth seed out of quarterfinals. Good things out of the youngster. Five of your six to finish here in heat number two. Presented by Trifecta here in Minneapolis, the 2022 Granite Games, week three of the CrossFit semifinal season inside Viking Lakes here at TCO Stadium, the training facility of the Minnesota Vikings with Jamie Hagia down on the floor. Chase Ingram, Joel Gadet, the ladies. Overall standings coming in. This is two events. Danny Spiegel, a first place and a second place. That'll get you a first place. <laughs> That's how math works when you when you look at the scoreboard and Danny Spiegel had a hell of a day. Only reason why she didn't get two first places is one second race in Mal O'Brien in event number one, but the clinic she put on on the lifting event, something we expected to see from, from Danny Spiegel. Now, how is she going to shake out with an event like this? Down to Jamie Hagia. 
That's correct, guys. All eyes will be on Danny Spiegel, the overall leader coming into this event. After speaking with her yesterday and her coach today, they did say yesterday was great events for her, but today they're excited to test all their training and all the hard work she's put in. She's going to stay in her lane and see what she can do today. Thank you, Jamie. Our event description is brought to us by the U.S. Army. This is the Minnesota mashup, down and or up, depending on which movement set you're talking about. All the things on this event, but 150 of those reps being with that med ball in the wall ball shots, 14 pounds to a 10-foot target, but just shoulders, shoulders, shoulders. Recipe for success delivered by Trifecta. Well, let's talk about those shoulders. <laughs> Don't get to the muscle-ups too quickly, right? You, get, you have 60 wall ball shots to get there. You're going to need the shoulders to get through that. But once you're there, the back half of that, I see you, Karen. I see you hiding in there, 150 wall ball shots. And after those 30 ring muscle-ups, that's when things get real. Chloe Carano had a great first day. Has brought herself up from the bottom third rankings-wise coming into the event. Amanda Barnhart came in, conversely, as a favorite in this event. We said all eyes on Danny Spiegel, but really for me is all eyes on Amanda Barnhart because high volume, high pulling, or high skill gymnastics like muscle-ups has been a weakness that she's been trying to close for the past couple of years. Alex Kazan, the upstart, fourth place after two events. A lot of hype around the young underdog. Underway for this final heat here in event three that starts with 10. Very quick wall balls. It's deceptive. You get through one thing, you feel like you're going, and then all of a sudden, you get smacked in the face. And when you, as a coach, when you look at this, it's like, okay, what's the appropriate pace at the beginning of this? And it's, the answer is chill. As chill as you can be. You're not going to separate yourself in 10 wall ball shots, but you will in 40 and 50. So pace yourself out until you get there. You can't win the event, Chase, if you don't win the first round. <laughs> That's, yeah, right. I know a lot of people in my affiliate that try to do that, and it still doesn't work out for them. Now, on their 50 GHD sit-ups, you can make up some ground here. S sneak yourself 10, 15 seconds. Keep this is a strong, casual pace. It's still the very beginning of the event. We have a long way to go. I mean, the best time we've seen is right around 19 minutes. This is a long, long event, but don't waste time. Save seconds. We've said that on the team side, and this is just as important on the individual side. Doing a, a slow, casual GHD sit-ups, you don't want to bleed 15 or 20 seconds when you can make that up. Chloe Carano right in the front of your screen there. Level 10 gymnast had a great start yesterday. Mal O'Brien had a great day one as well, making new coach proud. She has really taken on a lot of the characteristics of the fittest man in history. Well, I mean, why wouldn't you? It's <laughs> the success that Matt has had over the years because of the way he trained, the work he put in behind closed doors. And what you probably see from Matt is, you know, look how casual he is just watching Mal, and look how casual she is. And that's the approach at the beginning of this. If, you know, you, Matt the Fraser's like, look, wake me up until we get to the rings. That's when things are going to start getting serious. The thing that Mal said leading up to the Granite Games where the uh-oh went off in my brain, Matt Fraser always said, I train to have no weaknesses. And Mal O'Brien said, I like training my weaknesses now. In fact, I crave them. Uh-oh. And then Mal O'Brien gets back to the rig after Kayla Stefano in lane two went to the wrong spot coming off the GHDs. We talk about being disoriented for a hot second. <laughs> You're right. I mean, and that's a tough little turnaround. 50 GHD sit-ups as a, a controlled pace. And Stefano in the all black coming off the left as she runs to the rig and then grabs the, the lane three. Now you're over there in lane number two. It's like a real life dizzy bat race. Yeah, it's kind of what it is, right? You go up and down on the GHC sit ups, and then you got to move to a, a wall ball shot that has the same disorientation when you're looking up the entire time. Now, fortunately, it's only 20 reps. All these athletes will be going unbroken as they go from the 20 wall ball shots to the 40 single arm dumbbells, right? This is where that shoulder fatigue starts to compound because after this, is we go back to the rig one more time for wall ball shots and then to the 30 ring muscle ups, which is gonna be the game changer for these athletes. Danny Spiegel was the first to the overhead squats here and just a no rep for her. 
talked about it off the top. She said yesterday was a Danny Spiegel day. Today will be a little bit different. Chase, where does it get hairy in this event for Danny Spiegel? Uh, it, it's, it's the rings, right? She, I mean, she's so strong and she's so fit, but you go to the rings and it's, it's, a, it's a weakness for her, but it's managing that work because, as we said, can you get through that enough with enough time close to that? I mean, look at Emily Rawls. She was two minutes behind Fee Sagafi coming off of the rings, and she made that time up on the back half. What Danny Spiegel doesn't want to do is the panic out there, thinks she needs to push harder than she should, and then possibly hit failure on the rings. Narrow overhead squats of Mal O'Brien. Compare that to what Danny Spiegel has. Wider base on the right of screen. And what's tough for Danny is when you go that wide, it's really hard to get clear depth on the squat. She's already had a couple of no reps so far, where Mal O'Brien has the mobility to have that narrow position, which makes it a lot easier to get below parallel and clearly show she's below parallel. O'Brien came in as the number one seed. She has Chloe Wilson, who's fighting the cut line coming into day two, trying to make it into the top five and a ticket to the games, just to her, her right, our left looking. O'Brien back to the rig. And Chloe Wilson just behind her. For these 30 wall ball shots, this is where the question or the delineation between can and should. Can you do these unbroken? Absolutely. It's only 30. Should you do these unbroken? That's a different story. Because coming up after this is the 30 ring muscle ups. Are you going to gain a lot of time in 30 wall ball shots compared to the rest of the field? If you go unbroken, maybe 10 or 12 seconds. Are your breaks on the ring muscle ups going to be twice that? Absolutely. So maybe save yourself a little energy here in the shoulders and to be able to utilize that more on the toughest part of this event, which is the 30 ring muscle ups. Third place on the right of your screen, Kelly Stone. Talked about Chloe Wilson. She's on the far left of your screen. Chase, those were the two women you had an eye on fighting right now to get into that top five. Chloe holding on to that fifth spot, 152 points, but only eight points back is Kelly Stone. And if you look at the scoring system, if they're in the top 10, that's a difference between two places on the leaderboard. Mel O'Brien is the first to the ring muscle ups. 30 here, midpoint of the event. Mal taking a big break before she starts her first set. Now I say midpoint of the event in terms of time, where, where, where we are <laughs> working down the movements. There are still a ton of movements. I don't mean that in terms of a number of reps left. Time to beat is 19.52. Like Mal started with a set of five. Chloe Wilson just ripping through on the right. Firefighter from Utah. Danny Spiegel popping in. He's got a smart break for Danny. That was a long press out on that last rep. Sometimes as a coach, you, you say, it's like, all right, we're going to try to do six sets of five, which Mal O'Brien is currently on that page. She's already on them two sets of five. And then Matt, you can see behind her, is keeping track of the time, which is what his job is as a coach. It's like, okay, we're going to go in 10 seconds. And, and his, he's going to be watching how Mal performs. If she has maybe a tough press out on the set of five, gives a couple suggestions. Hey, rest 10 more seconds or knock a rep off. Okay, now we're going to fours. Mal O'Brien in the top three coming in. Amanda Barnhart was in second, and this is the spot to watch for her. What can she do when she gets to the rings? It's been a big improvement for her. And for her, how do you close the gaps? Amanda Barnhart's been in the top 10 now three straight years. She said, I've got to limit my 38s. My 38s have to become 21st. I don't have to be the best ring muscle upper in the world. I just have to be an okay one. There's other athletes that had that in the past. Brooke Wells is a classic example is that she would have something outside the top 30 in say the endurance events, but something inside the top three on the more strength power output ones. And now she's made herself more well-rounded over the years. The same thing can be said for Amanda Barnard. It's totally doable to maybe lose a little bit top end strength, but gain much more on the gymnastics side. 
Amanda has worked to lean a little bit. She said, it's tough for me to, it's tough for me to be small. She's one of the bigger athletes, leans into who she is, dominated in the weightlifting yesterday, but has put in a lot of effort over the last few years here on the rings, did better in the pig flip ring muscle ups last year, was happy with that. Sydney Wells on the end of the rig in lane 10. Now, this is something for Sydney Wells. I don't want to call it damage control, but ring muscle ups, not her strength. Until a year ago, she literally just went to class, <laughs> did so well at the West Coast Classic last year, decided she was going to dedicate herself more to training, and ring muscle ups is one of the things that's been at the top of her list. I mean, people forget she's so new to CrossFit competition. I, two to three years at best when she started thinking about maybe taking it seriously. Takes a big break here on the ring muscle ups. Still works her full time job. Hand in the air for Mal O'Brien. And a long break here in the midst of these 30 ring muscle ups. Mal looking for the trifecta, winning the open, winning in North America the quarterfinals. Can she win a semifinal? Mal took a big break. She's still stuck with these sets of five. Good news for Mal, though, is that nobody else is touching a wall ball except for her. So despite that, here's the 18-year-old still at the front of the pack. So the back half of this, really, you look at these 40 wall ball shots coming off the 30 ring muscle up. So shoulders are absolutely shot. There's not a lot left in your triceps. If you see on the right side, we just finished the 30-30 middle portion, and now we're on the back half of the event. But the back half, <laughs> it's a much different event than the front half because of the compounding effect of the wall balls into the double unders back to the wall balls and we saw how much that can take its toll on those last cleaner jerks with those dumbbells we still have 300 reps left now 200 of them are double unders but a lot of movements and a lot of time time wise we're a little bit more than halfway through fighting for second place on the right and left of your screen, Amanda Barnhart, Alex Kazan is up on the rings. Her coach, Justin Kotler, is in the pink just behind her. Now, Kazan and Barnhart can get off these rings in maybe the next 30 or 45 seconds, depending on the breaks that Mal takes. Right, she took a pretty big break after her first set. They do have an opportunity to maybe close this out because, Joel, as you said, the, the disadvantage of being a taller athlete on the rings is clear. We saw that with Emily Rolf. The advantage on the backside of wall ball shots makes up for that. So this is a really balanced test when you look at this chipper. Barnhart will break here. Well, that was the last one. On to the wall balls. Kazan was just in front of her. And Gazan had a very short break from rings to the med ball. Left side of your screen, O'Brien just picked it up. She took almost a 20 second break. And I think it was just no rep. Now just got a no rep. So Mal O'Brien is in first here. I think she did two sets of 15, followed by a set of 10. We'll run all the way down to now the 200 double unders. Well, Mal's been doing big sets, but she's also been taking pretty big breaks. Which definitely isn't a bad thing if that is the game plan that they have set out between her and Matt. And you know there is a specific game plan set out between her and Matt. It's 30 reps for O'Brien. Mallory's in first. Alex Kazan is in second. Kelly Stone just behind. That's your top three. Oh, Mal's in a huge set right off the bat. So on heat one, Sagafi is doing sets of 20. And she's just ripping off. Man, she might go unbroken on this first set of 100. Do you think from 100 to 101, you just kind of 
you <laughs> smudge it, you just jump the line. For, for uh, Flair's sake, yes. For, uh, for a little necessary break, I, I would encourage possibly taking a little rest here, as you see Mal doing. There it was. She won 100 unbroken. Will she go her second 100 unbroken? So Gazan's done. She has about a minute 40 second lead by the time she gets there. That may be closer to two minutes. Mel already a little break. Now that one in a decisive break, and this is it's fine. She's got plenty of time. She's well ahead of the pace in heat number one. Now her job is to just be aware of the athletes around her, obviously aware of what the time to beat is. And these are the things you saw Matt Fraser do in competition. He would get to a certain point where then he would start to manage his effort relative to the field around him because he knew you don't get bonus points for beating someone by two minutes. Two seconds to two minutes, it's four points no matter what. And so what he would tend to do is he would conserve his energy if he was ahead in the field, knowing it's still a long weekend to go. Why waste all of it here when the point system or the points you get are going to stay the same? Chloe Wilson just came into the mix. Everybody else is starting to come into the mix here as Mal O'Brien says, you all enjoy it. She's out. Crush that set of double unders. Wilson is with Stone on the double unders. Remember, they're next to each other in the overall leaderboard. Gazan is the leader right now in the double unders. She's moved on to her second hundred as Amanda Barnhart and Danny Spiegel have started theirs. Mal O'Brien is all by herself with the time to beat still five minutes away. 50 wall balls here for Mal, and then the 10 double dumbbell clean and jerks at 50 pounds. Your two leaders right now are 18 and 20 years old. There's a meme that's going to come out of this. Everybody just doing jump ropes while Mal does wall balls by herself 50 yards away. Mal's passed a set of 15. This is the biggest set she's done aside from the early part of this event. Denny Spiegel is on to her second hundred. Excuse me, she's still on her first hundred. That was Chloe Wilson that took the step forward. But Danny is who we spotlighted at the top. She comes in in first place overall. Honestly, she's not in a terrible spot when she said, Day two is not my day. Well, she can finish with a top 10 finish here all of a sudden. All right, great. And where, where is she relative to athletes outside of the top five in this heat? She had about a 52 point cushion on sixth place. Hand is in the air for Alex Kazan, so she's in clear second. You've got Stone and Wilson, and then I believe Spiegel as Kazan trots herself back down to the 50 wall bolts. And this is new for Alex Kazan. That didn't exist for her last year at the West Coast Classic. She kind of informally worked out at CrossFit Culmination with the underdogs crew, but Justin Kotler was not her coach, and he did not coach her at the semifinals. Chase, I have to imagine it makes a difference when you've got a guy standing there yelling at you what the game plan is. <laughs> well, look, sometimes it depends on the type of athlete you are, and as a coach, you need to be a bit of a chameleon of sorts, molding to the personality of your athlete. Some people like the drill sergeant. Some people like someone screaming in your face. Others, you need a softer approach, and that's, that's the coach-athlete relationship that they build upon. And you know Justin's one of those, I mean, he's a very intense coach that's clear when you watch the way he he is just wrapped up into his athletes performances but having someone there in your corner whether it's dictating what you do as far as pacing and breaks or just from a motivational standpoint it is very close behind Mal O'Brien Alex Kazan is in second place and then it all kind of jumbles up a little bit there are points to be had Chloe Wilson and Kelly Stone are onto the wall balls and again, they are right next to each other on the leaderboard at the moment. Mal taking her time to get to the double dumbbells here. Why not? Oh, no, no need. You got your eye on the clock. You're about two minutes out of the previous time to beat. And if you guys remember what Mal did in dumbbell events at Granite Games last year, she went out and won the thruster run event absolutely crushed the finale. They had those dual dumbbell lunges to get to the finish line. 
Mel O'Brien is going to wind up barring disaster here through three events with a first place, a fifth place, and a first place. And that's the first break we've seen Mal take since she picked him up the first time. There's a lot of hyperbole, especially in this sport sometimes. I don't think it's hyperbole to say that you're looking at a future fittest woman on earth. And that's conversation that's out there all the time. And she said sometimes it's tough to go on Instagram because you read all the comments about yourself and it's like, I just want to block that out. But when you compete like this, all eyes are on you. That's an event win for Mal O'Brien. Who comes in second? It looks like it'll be Alex Kazan. That's great for her, sitting in fourth overall with 156 points. The crazy thing is for all the hype that Mal gets at 18 years old, Alex Kazan is 20 and could very well qualify her for her first trip to the CrossFit Games. You are looking at what could become an awesome rivalry budding in this sport over the next several years. And I don't even think just between these athletes, but there is a surge. There almost like a transition of the youth movement in cross. We talked to Justin Berg about that yesterday, but on the female side especially, is that these athletes so accomplished at just such a young age, but you know, even with Mal to manage those expectations. And what's fun with Alex, never went to the games as a teenager. She's not somebody that aged up from the teenage ranks to the elite level. She's somebody that worked and appeared at the elite level as she aged up into it. Time cap, not an issue for any of these women. That's still almost five minutes away. And Alex Kazan finishes in second place in the heat. Does not beat Emily Rolfe's 1952 time. Chloe Wilson on the left, Danny Spiegel on the right. Important points, more so right now for Chloe Wilson. Yeah, this is a very important four points for her to try to hold on to as Spiegel's making a charge on her. But Wilson will beat her unofficially in 2044. The only person with a better time than that was Emily Rolf from a prior heat. And then Spiegel comes in just after. That's a huge finish for Danny Spiegel. I mean, there's one thing to say damage control, and that's to not get in, like, the bottom 10. But in a position where she's potentially going to get in the top five or near that on a, quote, damage control event, that is huge for Danny Spiegel. And Kelly Stone, time ticking away, doesn't yet have to look over her shoulder too much for previous heats. Fee Sagafi is the next time at 21.47 to watch out for from the second heat. Well, maybe a look over your shoulder to Amanda Barnhart. Six reps still behind. You see that touch and go rep advancing forward, getting to utilize that little, again, not necessarily rebound, but that momentum at the bottom swing of that. Fisagafi's time has come and gone. So she is now placed ahead of Kelly Stone here who, as we mentioned, came in neck and neck with Chloe Wilson. Chloe Wilson has passed her. Wilson was in fifth, Stone was in sixth, so that gap will widen just a bit. How do you feel about Amanda Barnhart? We talked about damage control, and that sounds too strong, but she came into a good uh, an event that had the ring muscle-ups. How's she going to do there? Where she's working here? I mean, you see where her, her time's gonna be that might that might get her close to a top 10 finish. And so you start to see the reward a little bit paying off that maybe what used to be a bottom 10 finish into near a top 10 finish. That's what you wanna see when you're working weaknesses. You don't go out there to take something that is, is a, a detriment to your skill set and try to make it a strength by losing your ability to hit home runs in other events. What you wanna do is just make yourself serviceable. In a, in a sense and to get where Amanda got after this I think this is a great finish for her in the event but also a great boost of confidence for her going forward it's an eighth place finish in the event for Barnhart at 22 31 
That's Chelsea Nicholas, the aerospace engineer. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Say some for the rest of us. Fitness and brains is unfair. <laughs> she is uh, works in the structural aerospace engineering area. So when you fly in planes and they don't fall apart, thanks to Chelsea Nicholas. I used to be in that area of expertise, and if you knew what you were flying in, you would not you would not board a plane for the rest of your life. Done in 23:42, and Sydney Wells is still back on the wall balls here. Tia Claire Toomey is in the blue, clapping in the background. Shane Orr just next to her in the Proven shirt. Brooke Wells just over the tier banner in the background. Sydney Wells is a great athlete. Great athlete in college. Competed in the SEC. Still new to CrossFit, and it's one of those things where there's a lot of hype because of who she is. But it is still a learning experience, and she is here to learn and grow. Kayla Stefano, two top 10 finishes yesterday. Thought that today shaped up really well for her as well. She's looking right now at somewhere in the ballpark of a 14th or 15th in this event, but a former teenage champion. Works in patent law right now. Said she wants to be good at everything. I want to be a millionaire, I want to be a billionaire, I want to be good at fitness. I want to be good in the professional workspace. I want to be good at weightlifting, which is where a lot of her athletic focus has been. So far, so good. <laughs> <laughs> and we hit the time cap. She was three reps short and has become one with the ground. 1847 for Mal O'Brien. We saw this last year at the Granite Games where Mal O'Brien would start off pretty quick, right in the average pace of everybody in the front 20. Like we said, the 10, 20, 30 is not going to be a big deal, especially the GHD sit-ups in between. But Mal O'Brien stuck with her game plan on the rings, doing five reps at a time, extending the rest in between to keep that pace. Broke a little bit on the 40 before she got to the double hunters, but this is where we're like, okay, is this a good idea? And she said, yes, this is a very good idea because I can sustain this all day long. And then once she got to the dumbbells, I mean, if there was gonna be a foot race with anyone there, they would have lost it the way she handled those last 10 reps. Mel O'Brien is with Jamie Hagia. Thanks so much, Joel. Mel, in a long event like this with some of the toughest movements coming in the middle and towards the end, how do you pace a workout like this? Uh, don't go out too hot. No, you're not going to win the workout in the first 10 wall balls, so. It was 150 wall balls and five different movements. What was the most challenging part for you? Um, my heart rate was super high after the ring muscle ups. Obviously, I think that was kind of a separator. So after that, it was just a grind. How did you decide to break up your muscle ups? I just did six sets of five. I know I can always do sets of five, so I was confident with that. And then you had an early lead and you kept your foot on the gas pedal the whole time. When did you know you could make that final push and you could see the light at the end of the tunnel? Yeah, uh, on the 50 wall balls for sure. I just tried to hold on as long as I could and stay ahead of the time I needed to beat. Thank you so much, Mal. That is an event win for Mal O'Brien. Two of them in three events. 18 years old and not going anywhere. She beats Emily Rolf from Heat 2 by a minute and five seconds. Men are coming up next here at the Grand Games.
right, folks, here we go. Our first look at the fellas for the Minnesota mashup. Not gonna change much from the ladies. If you were here for that, if you're just rolling in or you're just joining us at home, man, we appreciate you guys tuning in here to the Grand Games 2022. This is our elite men's division. Heat number one, taking on Minnesota mashup. It's gonna have a 25 minute time cap. It's gonna start with those quick 10 wall balls you just saw from all the gentlemen in the heat. They're gonna move forward to that GHD. You see them atop for 50 reps of GHD sit-ups. Then they'll return to the rig for 20 wall balls. You know, those wall balls at 20 pounds. Then they'll advance past the GHDs after that round of wall balls for 40 dumbbell single arm overhead squats, 70 pounds on the list for the fellas. They'll return back to the rig for 30 wall balls. They'll stay at the rig for 30 ring muscle ups. They'll stay at the rig again for 40 more wall balls before they head past that set of dumbbells that they just used out to their ropes at the mat with the yellow line on it you see out there. And that's gonna be 200 double unders. When they wrap up those 200 double unders, they'll return to the rig for a last time for 50 final wall balls. Then they'll head back towards that set of two dumbbells near the finish line for 10 double dumbbell clean and jerks and a quick step to the finish mat. You'll see them advance two reps or after each pair of reps, they'll advance forward until they've completed all 10. That folks is your event number three, Minnesota mashup. Creep it up on two minutes. Hands pop it up in the air. Demister, Creed, and Hong. Hong not gonna waste any time. Trying to close that gap on Demister. Demister cutting away at his wall balls. Sam from CrossFit, Triple River. Okay, this round of wall balls, 20 reps. Albaladejo also in the fight as well. Hand in the air for Demister in lane number five. Demister done. Gonna jog past the GHD. Same for Hong. They're gonna be the first to reach the dumbbells. Lane number two, Marshall Creed. CrossFit 217. Also going to work. And again, you'll see these guys advance every 10 reps on these single arm overhead squats. Again, 70 pounds, no joke on that weight. Shoulders a little bit smoked from everything they've done so far. Still lots to go, all of our gentlemen. On to the dumbbell now. Demeester still in the lead. Sam right in the middle of lane number five, hand in the air from his judge, about to advance forward to another block. Demeester 20 reps in of the required 40. Hong, Creed, and Jones, hot on his heels. Marshall Creed, the first to advance. Albaleo also advancing, but Chase Merritt gonna go to work just ahead of him. Again, Demister off to an early lead. We're passing four minutes on the clock. Hand in the air. Demister done with the dumbbell for the moment. He's gonna head back for yet another round of wall balls. Compounding interest, so to speak, on the wall balls. Compounding on the shoulders, compounding on the legs. Hand in the air for Hong, hand in the air for Merritt. Chase and Josh looking to wrap this up. 
Chase will ditch his dumbbell, but it's going to be Creed turning and burning just ahead of Hong. Creed double timing back to the rib. We all say you may not win it on the transitions, but you can certainly lose it on the transitions. Jones also heading back as well to start this round of wall balls. Hand in the air for Demister. About to wrap up this round of wall balls. He's going to stay in the same general vicinity because now it's 30 ring muscle ups. Two heats of elite men coming up next. Our guys here in heat number one looking to lay down a solid time. Going into heat number two. Always looking to make a move. Up the leaderboard. If they can, as we pass 6.15 on the time clock. Creed moving himself into second. Jones and Hong battle it out for a third, along with Merritt. Hong going to be the first to put a muscle up on the board. Again, 30 reps. The total they are looking for as we approach seven minutes on the clock. Ten reps in is Marshall Creed. Fourteen reps in is Josh Hong. Demister, fifteen reps in, I believe. Seven thirty on the clock again. Thirty reps, the total they're looking to reach before they go back to the wall balls. Hong twenty reps in and hanging tough to make it twenty one. Twelve reps in for Jones in lane number one. Coming up on eight minutes and twenty seconds. Jace Merritt at sixteen reps. Hog 26 reps in. Hog, your leader right now, lane number three, five or four or five reps away from finishing the muscle ups. Hand in the air for Sam Demista right there with him. Going to be your one and two come off of the muscle of same story. Marshall Creed looking to close out his as well. Three left for Creed. Hong catching a no rep. Three remaining for Hong, three remaining for Demeester. Three remaining for Creed, all knotted up at three reps apiece. Creed in about 10 minutes. Gonna be Creed wrapping it up first. Hong done as well. Both of them will turn for the wall balls. One to go for Demister to join him. Should be your one, two, and three. 
And Sam DeBeaster, done with his 30 ring muscle ups. Creed and Hong, just ahead of him as we pass 10 13. 40 wall balls before they head to their double unders. Hand in the air for Eric Evans looking to finish up this round. On the ring muscle ups, just five to go. Eleven minutes in. Twenty-five minute time cap in place. Plenty of time on the clock for these gentlemen to finish up. Woodring down to three. Woodring in lane six down to his last muscle up. Hand in the air down in lane number one for Stuart Jones. Look at a close shop as well on his muscle ups. Chase Merrill in lane number eight, addressing the wall ball to start off his round of 40. Evan, same story. Get ready to crank on his wall balls. Hand in the air, though. Demeester. Stand steady. Done with that round of 40 wall balls. And he will retake the lead as he heads to the double under mat. 200. Dubs in front of him. Marshall Greed also done with his wall balls. Double time and down to his rope. Hong, Josh Dunn, heading down, rounding out your one, two, and three, going into the double unders. Creeping up on 13 minutes. Again, our first look at our men's elite division today. This event number three, Minnesota mashup. Just past the halfway point in our line of time. Past the halfway point for the most part in our allotted work. Still a lot of wall balls left to go. On Woodring. About to finish up. Gonna be CJ Gerald done next though. He'll head out just in front of Woodring for the dubs. Coming up on 14 minutes. Halfway point on the double unders, it appears, are Creed and Demeester. And Evans wrapping up his wall balls now. He'll be done, a turn and head towards the double unders along with Chase Merrill. Also heading down. Folks, we are at the 15 minute mark. 
little less than 10 minutes remaining. Again, one of these guys gonna set the time to beat for our next seed of competitors. Again, this is our men's elite division. Demister hand in the air from his judge. Sam looking to wrap up those last few double unders, and he will. And for all that effort, he gets to come back for 50 more wall balls. The biggest chunk of the wall balls. He's done quite a few more so far, but last 50 balls. What? Before he heads out for some double dumbbell clean and jerks and then a short trip to the finish mat. About 16 reps or so in is Demeester. Creed getting started along in his first rep in lane number two. Demeester taking a very short break and going right back to work. Honk done with the dubs also back. Still your one, two, and three intact. Demeester one, Creed two, Hong three. As we hit 16.40 on our time clock. Beaster past the halfway on his wall ball requirement here again 50 reps. Hong about 15 reps in. 36 for Sam Demeester. Thirty reps in for Creed in lane number two. And in the air for Sam Demeester, looking to wrap up. Two reps to go for Demeester to finish up these wall balls. And Sam Demeester, done with the wall balls, he will grab a little bit of chalk, and he's got to head down to that pair of dumbbells, waiting for him at the end for some double dumbbell cleaning jerks. He will do two at a time at each specific block, advancing forward to the finish line. Last few for Creed, handful of reps to go. And Creed, last rep. And he will take the save course. He's gonna chalk up before he heads out. Going about 1845. Just past 19 minutes, Creed, double timing. Towards those dumbbells, Sam Demeester chipping away. 10 dumbbell cleaning jerks. Demeester wrapping up that pair. He's gonna advance six reps in, Sam Demeester. Creed putting the first two to bed. Woodring moving into third. Demeester, last spot on the field before he crosses the line. Two reps to go as we approach 20 minutes on the clock. Big Sam Demeester out of CrossFit. Triple River. 
Make some noise, ladies and gentlemen, for Sam Tamiser. Set that time to meet at 2005, 2005, unofficially for Big Sam Tamiser. Woodring, a little bit left in the tank. If he can, he catch Creed. Creed advancing in lane number two, a few lanes away. Norman Woodring advancing as well. Both of them taking a big breath. Woodring. Not wasting any time. Norm Woodring. Not the Norm CrossFit. Two reps ahead of Marshall Creed out of CrossFit. 217. Woodring. One rep away. And he will ground his dumbbells and take it to the line. Makes a noise for Norman Woodring. Hong looking to play catch up. Creed struggling a bit in the last four or so reps. Can Hong catch up? Josh Hong. Two reps in. Touch and goes for Hong on those two. Will he do it again? Hong, touch and go on number nine. Last rep for Hong. He will advance to the platform and make his way to the finish. Hong will finish up at 21-19, rounding out your one, two, and three here for heat number one. Still plenty of time on the clock. Creed finishes. Marshall will take it to the line and wrap things up. C.J. Gerald will do the same in lane number nine. Big round of applause for C.J. and Creed. Great job, fellas. Eric Evans. At a CrossFit Gold Standard Athletics in lane number four. Your next athlete on deck to get these last few reps wrapped up on the dumbbell cleaning jerks. Get double dumbbell cleaning jerks, 70 pounds, the weight for each of those dumbbells. Still got a handful of athletes looking to finish up this event. Can we get them all done? Can they all get it finished under that time cap? Get a 25 minute time cap. Athletes, we have two and a half minutes remaining. 2.30 remaining. Kyle Bowman. Golden Goose CrossFit athlete down at lane number 10. Kyle making his way to the dumbbell. Evans advancing forward. No doubt there's an impact on these athletes from this event. They're going to be wearing this one for the rest of the day for sure. Stuart Jones, lane number one, advancing forward as well. Evans wrapping up reps five and six. Four reps to go. Two minutes on the clock. Bowman advancing. Kyle, two reps in. Evans. Touch and go. Closing out seven and eight. Just two reps remaining. Eric Evans, two reps to go. And he can put this one to bed. 90 seconds, guys. 90 seconds. Well, folks, make some noise for Eric Evans just right there in sight of the finish line. One to go. Bubba closing in on him. Athletes, you have 60 seconds. And Jones, solid rep, dumping his dumbbells. Big round of applause for Eric Evans. All the way down to the other side of the field. Bill Kyle, Big Kyle Bowman looking to finish up as we hit 45 seconds. Kyle, one to go, touch and go, and he will wrap it up. Big round of applause, Kyle Bowman, right around 24 24. Guys, you have 30 seconds, 30 seconds remaining. Stuart Jones. Jones going to finish up number seven, three reps to go. 20 seconds. Chase Barrow looking to close it on that finish line. 15 seconds, two to go. Can Jones get it to 10 seconds? Make some noise, folks. Let's cheer him on. He keeps working. I'll keep counting. Three, two, one. 
not quite able to get across that finish line. Big round of applause for all your athletes. Great job, guys. Sam Tumister set that time to beat. Going to heat number two. Event three here at the 2020 Granite Games, TCO Stadium, Egan, Minnesota, week three of the CrossFit Games semifinal season. It's presented by Trifecta, alongside Jamie Hygea, Shea Singram. My name is Joel Godet. Thanks for joining us and the rest of our crew here in Minnesota today, land of 10,000 lakes. This is Minnesota Mashup, brought to us by the U.S. Army. This is Heat 2. Chase Ingram, there's a lot going on here. Well, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of wall balls, specifically 150 total. And then you have that 1 to 50 range, and then 50 to 1, a little cross paths of rep scheme as they navigate through event number three. A recipe for success, as always, this weekend is delivered by Trifecta. Saw Mal O'Brien talking about it after she went. It's just getting to the rings the right way. The 10, 20, 30 of wall balls before you get there is basically irrelevant, but how you get there is super, super important because we have a full Karen in this event of 150 total wall ball shots. Could you clarify that it's the wall ball shots, not just <laughs> a full Karen? Yeah, right. A full angry person out there. <laughs> that is the list with Matt DeLugos and Tyler Edgerman in the middle. And right next to Tyler is Chandler Smith, who needs to have a great day. And it's Chandler Smith. He's only in 13th place, but he's also 63 points back.
back. And to make that up, we saw Emily Rolfe make up some of that in the previous event for the women. So there is a lot of left on the table, but with a field like this, eight games athletes returning, plus a few rookies in here, I'll say, oh, I'll say games, those who haven't made the games yet, when I say rookies, that are also looking to make a name for themselves in the top five. And Chandler needs to have himself a day, and it's all gonna start in this event. An 18th and a 9th yesterday for Chandler Smith. Easy, quick 10 wall balls for hitting the GHDs for these 50 reps. early part of this event will go faster. The reps in number and in strain are more backloaded here. But if you want to make up a little bit of time early on, it can be done here, but the pace is super casual. And it's because of the wear and tear of leading into the rings. We've seen a lot of different strategies from athletes. Should you go unbroken all the way through? Even if you can is a good question to ask yourself as an athlete, but the steady pace that we have here and I think a lot of this pertains to what the most important part of this event is, and it's behind the athletes. That is those 30 ring muscle-ups right in the middle. That section of the rings is gonna take anywhere between, I don't know, four to five seconds, depending on how you pace it out. I don't really see anything going faster than three. And that's the most time that will be spent on any individual element in this chipper. Chandler Smith right in the center of your screen. Great success in 2020, where he was mere decimal points of a second from making it to Aromas in the final five. Finished sixth place. Then the 21st place last year, and Chandler told us more desperation in his training this season. Not that you coast, but you had success in 2020, and your approach is a little bit different. Almost subconsciously, you take your foot off the gas pedal a little bit in some areas because you have this feeling of, okay, I've made it to this level, now what do I do? Well, that hunger comes back when you have what you might consider a setback last season, and he starts with a quick no rep. Well, not just that, the last few seasons, getting cut in certain positions, just missing out on the 2020 games by a handful of points, getting cut last year again by just a handful of points. So Chandler Smith, who has one of the most highest upsides relative to his current, I would say, finishing place in competitions just off his skill set and athletic ability, it's hard to agree, uh, disagree with, like, he is one of the fittest p people out there, but putting it all together is the challenge. And what I like that he does with Ben Bergeron in the backside is, like, Ben is a wonderful, I would say, mental coach. He's a, he's a good coach when it comes to competition, great with programming and things like that, but his mental coaching is top notch. And that is, for Chandler, one of the biggest things that he can use to advantage is utilizing Ben Bergeron in that aspect. Quick no rep there on the overhead squats for Chandler. This is a 70 pound dumbbell. I have worked out at CFNE before, CrossFit New England, that Ben Bergeron owns. He was in the class. I looked over to him and he had taken a break on the deadlifts and I went, okay, I'm gonna take a break here. Ben Bergeron is taking a break. I think it's okay to take a break. And he's taking a page out of his own playbook when it comes to running an affiliate. He also used to do those excellent seminars for affiliate owners back in the day. And look, that it that is a thing. It's a, it's a very community-centric feel there at New England. And you sometimes you see athletes in the group classes as well, depending on what the programming is for the day. Yeah, Catherine walked by, was immediately no longer tired. Advancing every 10 reps on these overhead squats. That is a 70 pound dumbbell for point of reference, two points. That is the same weight as a newly born bear cub <laughs> or maybe a different clientele here, 30 bottles of wine. That one resonates with me just a, a little bit more than the bear cub. And Chandler Smith and Eggman side by side moving into the final 10 reps of these 40 single arm overhead squats. And you'll see athletes switch every 10 to give their shoulders a break. As I said in previous heats is that sometimes you have a good side and a bad side depending on your mobility and strength in a shoulder as Eggman gets a no rep on the right. And you saw Chandler Smith earlier, he had a weird switch in the middle of his overhead squats. And that was just due to, okay, my shoulder's a little tired. I guess I'll switch now through those overhead squats and back to the rig where you will now live for a little while. 40 single arm overhead squats at 70 pounds, back to the 30 wall balls, then 30 ring missile ups, and then 40 wall balls. 
the time set in heat number one by Sam Demeester. He got to these or through the overhead squats right around 430. Now he he came out a lot quicker than these athletes did. His back half was a bit slower, especially after the 30 ring muscle ups. And the casual pace you see is that casual pace you're kind of expecting to see more on the women's side is listen, I'll take a little break here, let my shoulders relax, let the blood flow get back into them, shake my arms out, because going from these 30 wall ball shots, you are going right to the rings where I said, the toughest part of this event is here in the middle for these 30 ring muscle-ups. See Chandler Smith arms, kind of that skier movement. And Chandler taking his second break, and that's something I would like to see how it unfolds when he gets to the rings because Edgeman just below him went unbroken on a set of 30. Looks like Chandler Smith might have done something like 12, 10, 8. Took two breaks and they have yet to start muscle ups different from each other. So that's when you start to see it's like, hey, what's the cost benefit? In fact, Chandler Smith just got to the rings ahead of him. Took two breaks in the 30 round, uh, round of 30 on the med ball. Well, and Tyler took a lot of time to chalk up and prepare here. Look at the height that Chandler Smith gets on these ring muscle ups too. That is not a huge press out for him. And no, and that's a benefit. You're you're using less muscles to dip out of the bottom. Edgeman on the right, you can see how low he catches those rings right underneath the shoulder doing a full press out on the rings where Chandler Smith is nearly cutting that range of motion in half. Now on the flip side of that coin is that you have to put in a little extra effort to catch that high on the ring muscle ups and it just depends. I actually like what Chandler's doing because when you throw in how many wall ball shots we still have left to go, 90 more reps are waiting for these athletes. And that is just 90 more press outs from the tricep in the shoulder when you think about that wall ball shot. Chandler Smith on the left, Tyler Edgeman on the right. He was sixth at the MAC last season. Did not compete in the last chance online qualifier, was just a little burnt out after the semifinal season. So despite having a really good shot potentially to make it to the CrossFit Games, it was a reboot for Tyler getting prepared for now. Matt DeLugos in lane six. One of the underdogs, you can see his coach Justin Kotler in the pink shirt behind. And this is what a coach is for. <laughs> now what we saw from, say, Emily Rolf, who is in Heat 2, had a slower start to the front half of this event. And that's not where her advantage is. I see the same thing for Matt DeLugos. Matt, when he gets to a wall ball shot, it might as well be break time for him, different than what you see for a lot of athletes. What he did in the quarterfinals last year, where it had 120 wall ball shots into 120 cal row, he did the wall ball shots unbroken and then smashed the row. So the dude can hurt, but he can, he can do some damage on the med ball. So, I would be curious if he manages through these 30 ring muscle ups and then on the back half of the event with the 40 and the 50 wall ball shots at the end and you know those dumbbells aren't going to be a problem for him. Watch for DeLugos maybe to put a put a big push on the back half of this event. Part of it's the shirt, part of it's the hair, part of it's the headband. I'm just saying it looks this, like this he's guy, about to go play with Agassi in he was, anymore. He was uh, yeah, exactly. He was he was born in the wrong decade. This is this is someone who <laughs> who my father would have played sports with. Got a hand in the air for Chandler Smith. So as soon as he re here, coming to the end of the 30 ring muscle ups. And also knowing where he is in the field. Certainly you don't want to seed any ground you don't have to. But again, the field of heat two, the field that we have coming up after this. So yep. Not only we have a bunch of slouches coming up in heat three. Chandler Smith back to it with two more reps here. And this is a good event for Chandler Smith's skill set. This is a grunt work, grinded out athlete. He paced the 30 wall ball shots coming into this, or he broke it up into three sets. That was able to manage through the rings and to get ahead of Edgeman, who's on the right, who got to the rings actually quicker than Chandler Smith did. So Smith back to the wall balls. The round of 40 on the wall balls in lane two on the left side of your screen. That is John Wood. 
who was initially supposed to compete here at the Granite Games with his fiance Zoe Warren, but she withdrew because of an injury before competition started yesterday. If you remember the names, John Wood and Zoe Warren, they got engaged last year as part of Backcountry Black competing at the CrossFit Games. Did an event at the Coliseum. John had asked Tommy Marquez, hey, can you help me out with this? Tommy put him in touch with Adrian Bosman. Bos said here, take the ring, give it to this person. They went out on the floor, competed in the event. They're walking off the floor. John still doesn't have the ring. <laughs> Somebody from CrossFit gives it to him. John drops down onto a knee. In the meantime, Zoe Warren had somebody from the staff pull her over. She thought she's in trouble. So John is proposing and Zoe goes, not now, John, I think I'm in trouble. <laughs> they wound up getting engaged on the Coliseum floor. So some would argue that is getting in trouble. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Working through the 40 wall balls, so too is Chandler Smith who leads the way. And Chandler sticking to the game plan that he's had so far is taking those breaks every 10 reps. And if you can stay consistent, you're not gonna cede a lot of time to other athletes who are doing big sets. So we just finished the ring muscle ups, the 30-30 in the middle. And the big chunk, the, the toughest part as far as fatigue and volume, the 40 wall balls, 20, 200 double unders, and then the 50 wall balls. 90 reps back to back with the 200 double unders in between. And John Wood, engaged in all, has taken over and is in first place. 50 seconds ahead of the pace set by Sam Demeester in heat number one. Sam is right about 12-10. That backcountry black team came in 20th last year at the games. Going individual, John was 41st in North America out of the quarterfinals. Chandler Smith done with his wall ball shots. One part of this event that may get overlooked when athletes, when they're tired, is the distance between the movements. Now, it's a long event, so not a lot of the transition is gonna take away from that, but it's really easy to walk a hair too slow. When a normal pace would have saved you 15 seconds, that, that little steady walk in between does add up. Mark Juan Jones on the right, that, see that subtle jog? That little jog for him is gonna get 10 seconds on Chandler Smith, just like that. And that's the distance that we have. The distance in this event, the way things are set up, matters. 160 feet. This is a football field, so 160 feet from sideline to sideline. You've got to eat up about half of that here. And I know you're walking to try to regain composure, but if you're going to go that slow, right, that's a pace you're going to go at, which is fine if you pick up the rope right when you get there. That could be a part of your plan, but if you get there and wait, right, that is time lost on the double-unders. John Wood is saving so much time. He's done with the ring muscle ups. He just kept his grips on. All right, DeLugos catching up to the field after his 40 wall ball shots. If he can stay within maybe 60 seconds of these guys, which really 100 double unders at a casual pace is gonna take a minute. If you can stay unbroken, try to stay relaxed, you're gonna get your time. Where people screw up is they try to race double unders. That's okay when it's a set of 30. 200? Try to stay relaxed, pace this out, use this as an opportunity, I say, to, quote, catch your breath. It's not going to happen. But you don't want to bury yourself further knowing the 50 wall ball shots at the end can potentially be your last opportunity to get yourself at the top end of this heat. Marquan Jones is on to the back half of the 200 double unders. Trying to jump himself past Chandler Smith into second place. John Wood was the first one to the double unders on the far side of your screen. The cycle rate that Wood has. Just see this, the, the balance between him and Chandler Smith. He's getting about a half a rep every two. And that tight, quick bounce. And what that does is that you're not jumping off the ground. You're just bouncing. You're bouncing on the balls of your feet. You're staying light. The rope is quick and you're expending a lot less energy on the double unders. And John now hits the jog about halfway back to the rig, yeah. still in first place. That's what you want to see. And another that is, is, the, is the game within the game. If I'm John, I want to get to that rig. Uh, when Chandler Smith turns around, I want him to see me doing wall ball shots. So what may be a, a detriment to me as an athlete, a little bit of running to the rig instead of getting some, some win back, 
there's that game within the game. It's almost like when you're running around, say, a course on a, an event. is like, as soon as I turn this corner, I'm going to turn the Jets on. Hopefully, I can break some spirits for those that are chasing me. So for John, if he can turn around or Chandler turn around and see he's doing wall ball shots, they may, that may deter him from trying too hard to get back to the rig. Chandler had taken a massive break and has just taken another one here. Mark one. Come all the way up from behind, right side of your screen in lane seven. And still doing that job. That means he did a huge set on the double unders. Former Clemson wide receiver. Played back in the day with Taj Boyd, New Hopkins, Andre Ellington. He's on some really good teams down in South Carolina. Chandler is done in lane number four, walking back to the rig. Ooh. Oh, I didn't see the dumbbell. I was a little, <laughs> I was a little worried with the dumbbell, but he was going around the dumbbell. I was like, oh no, that is, that is not a good sign. Talked about the dizzy bat race during <laughs> yeah, the women's exactly. heats. Sam Demeester finished this in 20 minutes and five seconds. What stands between the finish here and this heat, 50 wall balls, 10 dumbbell clean and jerks at 70 pounds. Of Chandler, third place in this heat. And John Wood just took a break. Wood's been doing a big set to start things off. Mark one Jones on the left, taking a little break. Chandler Smith has been doing sets of 10 up in this point. Looks like he's sticking with that game plan, but for Chandler, he got an eighth and an 18. Chandler's gonna have to start getting some top fives if you wanna make his way, because this field is way too deep to think top tens are gonna get you into the top five. Chandler needs to really make sure he gets some points in this event. John Wood is having a great event. Segments of two, double dumbbell, clean and jerks. So 140 pounds, 70 in each hand and still three minutes to go between John Wood and Sam Demeester. He said Demeester was out very hot, so his, his time checks in the earlier part of this event were right on par where Wood was, but Wood's back half. Not to say effortless is what he's doing, but the consistent smooth pacing, which is what's required with a long high volume chipper. And he's making quick work of these. Marquand Jones done with his last set of 50, still jogging. Try to keep an eye on the back, see where DeLugos is, and maybe he can move himself back up into the top five. DeLugos is actually sitting in 12th overall, just seven points ahead of Chandler Smith. So if DeLugos wants to have an opportunity to get into the top five, he needs to make some moves as well. That's the time to beat 1744 unofficially. John Wood by two minutes and 20 seconds ahead of Sam Demeester and Marquand just went all Gumby armed. Oh, and this is what we said about the dumbbells. 70 pounds in each hand is not light. I don't care how well these athletes make these look. And when you have the amount of shoulder work you've had up until this point, the stability aspect is so much more difficult than it already is using heavy dumbbells. I'll be honest, they looked pretty heavy. But maybe, yeah, maybe on that rep, right? But he, he regained his composure pretty good. Far right side, you can see, that's lane 10. Dylan Hamming has also made his way to the dumbbells. We're still a minute and a half away from Demeester's time to beat from the first tee. Marquand trying to get back to the games for the first time since 2018. Matt DeLugos trying to make his games debut. So on DeLugos, who's in the back half of the event at the ring muscle-ups, has moved himself into at least a top five position. But the time, the time of Demeester is about a minute away. Chandler Smith looks like he is out of gas. And, and he didn't start out of control. Usually, if someone starts too fast, you see, okay, you're, you're paying for the pace at which you started with. But Chandler didn't seem to start that aggressively. Marquand beat the time to beat from the first tee. That's going to happen in lane 10 for Hamming as well. Might be the best finish for Dylan Hamming this weekend. He had a 26th and a 12th coming in. See, DeLugos is yet to put the dumbbells down. Just one of those athletes that's one of the taller, if not the tallest, in the field, yet he's just so capable and so strong. 
those high volume gymnastics still taking its toll on him. 1947 again, still ahead of the Heat one times. And a good closing for DeLugos. Said that would probably be a back half event for him. There's Tyler Edgeman. Chandler Smith just looks wiped. And these are important points. If you're even with Edgeman, to let him get past you, you're watching points tick away off the leaderboard. But how much is left 20 minutes into this? Well, he was already seven points behind Tyler and Matt. Matt and Tyler actually tied with 116 points. So Matt's going to get the edge on Tyler. So that'll at least move him up into a 11th place finish. And Edgeman is done. Only person who beat him in the first heat was Demeester. Norman Woodring has the next best time from the first heat. We're about to hit that at 20.51. I'm getting a little worried about Chandler. It's how fatigued he is at this point. He said, with this field, eight games athlete, including himself in the men's field, and you look who's sitting at the top in the top five spots. Phil Toon, Mertens, Mayer, Zachary Bunton, Nick Matthew. I mean, that's gonna be a hard top five to crack. So Chandler really, really needed to try to get some points in this event. And not to say it's a little too late, but that might spell, that, that might spell disaster for Chandler Smith's chances of returning to the games, he even will, though we're halfway through. He is in ninth place at this juncture. And it's not just a finishing place. This, this fatigue state is also another concern. How much did you push yourself beyond that red line? Are you gonna e even be able to recover in the next event that we have later this afternoon? Chandler could do a 19th, but you're probably looking at, I don't know, a 14th place finish. Right, it's like, okay, look at the finishing place. Now look at the points. Now look at what you had to do to yourself just to get yeah, those I, things. I, I All those things come see. into play. Still have a lot of time to go before the cap. Still three athletes out on the field as Chandler fights to recover here. And, and listen, Chandler Smith is one tough individual. Wrestlers are crazy. They're just crazy human beings. There is a screw loose with and then, wrestlers. And then army wrestlers. Okay, right, put that on top of it, right? Now you look at that. Chandler is not someone to just be dramatic for dramatic sake because of a finishing place. That is something I'm curious to see how he's going to recover before the next event. It'll be a calculus for him because the thing he told us about Army life, it's what is the mission, how do I reach the mission, and if I need to, how do I redirect to accomplish the mission? There's going to be some redirecting here for Chandler Smith before event number four. John Wood, though, the new time to beat in 1746. John Wood on the left side of your screen was behind Chandler Smith at the start of the event. Chandler doing some breaks in that. This was on the back side of the 40, and this is where Wood made the pass. He did a huge unbroken set of wall ball shots in the set of 40. And then from there, he was basically in cruise control. Now he's, and I said he's working his butt off out there to get the job done, but once he made the pass, he just settled into his pace, methodically went through the 50 wall ball shots to get himself to the dumbbells. And as it stands, nearly two minutes ahead of the second place person. The break is between Tyler Edgeman and Chandler Smith. That's where heat one scores start to factor in. Those are the top five scores though, overall, when you include the first two heats, one through five, as we get set for heat number three.
2022 Granite Games from TCO Stadium here in Egan, Minnesota. Week three of the CrossFit semifinal season presented by Trifecta. Getting set for the Minnesota mashup alongside Torrance Training Labs, Jamie Hagia, CrossFit Big D's Chase Ingram. My name is Joel Godet. Overall standings on the men's side. Phil Toon is in first place. The red line indicates those going to the CrossFit Games after day one. The blue line between the red line, last chance online qualifiers. Phil Toon, though, took the world by storm. Great day for Phil Toon. And if you've watched his career over the last couple of years, you're not surprised at all on his performance yesterday, not just with the thruster handstand walk, but the way this guy can move a barbell is one of the top ones we have here at the Granite Games. Now, the question is, without a barbell in sight, and a couple hundred reps coming up. How is he going to handle this big chipper? The event description is presented by the U.S. Army. Wall balls split up with descending movements. Sands the 200 double unders. The recipe for success is presented by and delivered by Trifecta. And we saw this on the men's side in the last heat, especially is the pace at which they took things out early on in the event. It's the 30 ring muscle ups right there smack in the middle of this event. That is the game. Basically, this is when the event begins at the 30 ring muscle up. So pace yourself there. There's a full Karen, 150 wall ball shots in this. The start list here, Brent Fikowski, outside qualification after day one. He's in sixth place. Eyes on Phil Toon. Eyes on Colton Mertens, who comes in in a really good position. A third and a third. He is in second as we're underway for the Minnesota mashup. Keep my eyes on Brent Fikowski in lane number two. You can see him in the center of your screen. And the opposite, basically the antithesis to Brent Fikowski is Colton Mertens because as Brent is one of the tallest men in the field, Mertens is the shortest. And we say we see Karen in this setup. That does make a difference for a shorter athlete. Now, fitness still reigns supreme when it comes to being successful here at the Granite Games and especially the CrossFit Games. However, it is there are some advantages and disadvantages, and being a taller athlete is very advantageous when you think of things like Karen, 150 wall ball shots for time, even more so in an ascending rep. It's gonna get much more difficult as this event goes on. 24-year-old Phil Toon out of CrossFit Naples in the Brute Strength Camp down on the southwest side of Florida. We said at the top of this event, 10 wall ball shots, 50 DHD sit-ups, 20, 30, you know, we, we, we say this very casually because that's the approach these athletes should be taking at the beginning. This is a back half chipper. And on the back half chippers, it seems like there's more volume. Obviously, the 200 double unders in the back half skew those numbers a little bit. It's even split once you get past the 30. But the difficulty of the movement, you got 50 GHC sit-ups. These are going to be way easier at the beginning of an event than 50 wall ball shots. The 40 single arm over at squats will be coming up are way easier at this point of the event than the 40 wall ball shots. So making sure you get yourself in good position, not just relative to the field as far as timing is concerned, but there's a way to tip the scales too much too soon and you end up blowing up towards the end of the event. Phil Toon does keep turning his head. He is looking around and checking the competition. A lot of times on the GHDs, you'll see folks just close their eyes and go to their own place. Some of that's habit, four's a habit. Mertens is off to a very fast start. He's the first one off the wall balls Fikowski with a set of 10. Right behind him. But Mertens sitting in second place overall. He had a great day yesterday. Now, this is an, an event that he is going to excel in per se, but the dudes fit super, super aggressive when it comes to the competitive landscape. So he's coming out hot in the beginning part of this event. 20 wall balls here. Merton's done with that. 40 is the rep scheme for the single arm dumbbell overhead squats. This is a 70 pound implement. Brent Fikowski with a very quick transition and actually got to the dumbbell, I think, before Mertens. And not a lot of separation here in the beginning, and no surprise there, as your top athletes are all within a few reps of each other. About 10 to 15 seconds. Fikowski just behind Mertens. 
Fikowski got a no rep on his first rep of the second set. Same thing happened on the first one, just for depth to get underneath. But at, earlier today, we said this is Brent Fikowski day. Brent Fikowski does not lose chippers. In fact, Brent, I don't know if Brent Fikowski has actually legitimately lost one. If anything, maybe a second place in any chipper. And that includes open, regional, sanctionals, semifinals, and CrossFit games. This man is just a master planner layered on just elite fitness. Burton's on the other side. Same thing, right? This guy is smart. He's calculated. He's a hard worker. And he's, he is not backing off the pace whatsoever at the beginning part of this event. Really see the length in Brent Fikowski here, six foot two. Just looks like a wisping willow. Travis Mayer in the backside. Look for Travis more on the back half of this event. Travis Mayer may have the best wall ball conditioning of any athlete in the game. Travis Mayer has done Karen, which is in this event, 150 wall ball shots unbroken with a 30 pound med ball. Fikowski on the left, you see that arm sweep. What Fikowski likes to do is say he's so calculated and meticulous in the way he prepares for competition, in the way he executes his movement. And what that's, he's trying to do is really shake the arms out. You keep your arms in front of you for an extended period of time in the front position, it's actually gonna tax that a little bit more. You see on the right side, Colt Merton's also doing that arm sweep just a little bit. In tune to the, to the right of Merton's, dropping the arms down, lifting the hands up at the last second to catch the ball. That is a way to save just a little bit of fatigue from the shoulders. There is something that is elegant about the way Brent Fikowski does it, though. I've tried that and hit myself square in the face, and I never did it again. With the ball in your hand. <laughs> With the ball in my face. Don't mark that. Fikowski done with the wall balls. He is into the middle, the thick of this event, and that is the 30 ring muscle ups. Now this will be where Brent's gonna be a little bit slower than some of the more lighter athletes, more well-versed in the gymnastics. So look at Phil Toon over there in lane five versus the, the, the tempo from Brent Fikowski. But look how relaxed Brent is. Brent looks like he's barely elevating his heart rate and he did a big set right off the bat. On the right side you see in lane six and lane five, Burton's in Toon, much faster cycle rate. I wouldn't be surprised to see those two extend their lead on Fikowski out of these 30 ring muscle ups. But after that, some of these smaller athletes have lost their advantage on, say, the skill set that Brent Fikowski is going to bring to the table in the back half of this chipper. It's not apples to apples with Brent Fikowski, but in talking to him in the lead up to this, it is a gymnastics pull. He's done a lot of work this offseason in chest to bars. And the reason I point that out here is just in terms of his approach. How did he approve in that area? He's played with rep schemes. He's played with time domains. How much rest are you taking? Am I ripping off a big set and then resting a little bit or a lot? Am I ripping off a small set and resting a little bit or a lot? Talk about him being the professor so calculated. It's really interesting to see how he attacks these ring muscle ups as we are almost seven minutes into this event. Let's go, uh, go down to the floor and check in for the first time here with Jamie Hagia. Thanks, Joel. I'm uh, going to speak about Leo Franco, who has worked his way into this top heat of 10 males out here. He actually, I caught up with his coach and good friend, Elijah Muhammad, a former games athlete. He said he walked into his gym after seeing Easy perform at the 2016 regionals and said, I want to do that. So Easy started coaching him, and he said that he knew right away that he had the it factor. He has really only been training seriously since 2017, but already with this, he said that Easy expects him to make it this year, finishing around fourth, that's his estimation, and if not this year, definitely next year. So this is a name to look out for in our future. Jamie, thank you. Leo is obsessed with CrossFit. Told us he doesn't watch Netflix, he just watches Road to the Games and Miles to Madison. Just pops open YouTube. Let me watch some history. <laughs> That's good. I'll see how the past greats are done. Fikowski back on the left. That's Toon on the left of the screen on the right of the screen. I know Fikowski got there ahead of Toon and Mertens who are on the right side in lanes five and six. And I said I wouldn't be surprised if Toon Mertens 
made a pass here during these 30 ring muscle ups, but it might go right back to Brent because we have those 40 wall ball shots coming up right after this. If you're watching at home and trying to work on your ring muscle ups too, watch Phil Toon. They always talk about whip your head through at the top, flip that hoodie over your head, Phil Toon with a really good head whip as he comes through the top. It's like Toon has four reps left to go. Hand in the air for Fikowski though in lane number two. So Fikowski he is still right more. there. And Jules, you said, is Fikowski working on a weakness? Those those very high volume, simple pulls, the, the pull ups, the in fact, the only chipper he hasn't won started with 100 pull ups. That was the triple G chipper back at the CrossFit Games. I believe it was 2018, 2017 where he was last off the rig and he you know he couldn't he couldn't game plan himself back into contention after those 100 pull-ups so yeah he's been working a lot of weaknesses here but it's not the complex ones that give him trouble it's the high volume simple ones he broke with one rep there finishes out the ring muscle ups and now onto the wall balls 40 of them here brent's been around for a long time like one of the ultimate known names in CrossFit. He's been to the game six times previously, but even at this point, Chase, the thing he said, I want to show up in 2022 with a Brent Fikowski people haven't seen before. I want a slightly different set of skills. He has the nickname, The Professor. It's earned for a reason. He is so analytical and he is going into the workshop to say, where can I save seconds and how can I attack this? Fun fact, I think in Europe, it's actually a crime that is punishable by prison time if you call yourself a professor and you don't actually have a degree <laughs> a degree to back it up. So we're speaking in CrossFit terms. When he goes to Europe, he's the teacher. <laughs> yeah. Merton's on the right side of your screen. Still. He's in lane six. Fikowski's over in lane two. Brent still just ripping off a huge set. I think Brent's going to go wire to wire here on the four, on the 40. And this is what we thought we'd see on the back half of this chipper. As Fikowski had lost the lead on the ring muscle ups and now tied it up with Phil Toon. I thought for a moment there wasn't a hair out of place on Fikowski's head, but it is mopping down a little bit in front of his forehead. It's just a... He makes it look like an easy jaunt through this chipper. 40 wall balls done. He is on to the double unders. 200 of these. 100 on one side of the yellow line. 100 on the other. Phil Toon's got him by a rep right now. And Phil breaks unintentionally. Well, this is what happens when you have shoulder fatigue going into double unders. And it's this weird phenomenon. As your shoulders get fatigued, it almost makes it harder to keep your wrist down on double unders. The arms tend to float as you as you shrug your shoulders up, right? So the cue here is to relax the shoulders. Just, just relax at the neck and put the hands low. You almost have to force your hands to stay low when those shoulders get more fatigued. And look at where Brent's hands are. They are low, never rising above his waist. Nick Matthew with a hand in the air and Travis Mayer with a ball on the ground. Surprised to see that from Travis, as we said earlier. This thought this would be a good event for him with this skill set, but looks like he might be bonking a little bit in the middle of this event. There are breaks, and then there are breaks, you know, planned breaks and half two breaks. That looked like a half two break. I said, is that there, there's breaks that you decide to take set to 10 with the med ball, and then there's breaks where the med ball decides for you. The only man you can wow. see left on the wall balls, Zach Bunton with the red shorts in lane seven, making his way to the double unders, beat Travis Mayer out of the rig. And Phil Toon not backing down whatsoever with Brett Fikowski. And so that set of 50 is going to be a big deciding factor. Fikowski takes a little bit of a break. It looked like it was on purpose, got right back to it. See Phil Toon, a bit more action from the elbow and forearm, so he's using a bit more arms, where Fikowski on the left, he a little bit straighter arm, more, more from the wrist, right? See Fikowski spinning that rope from the wrist. That allows his shoulders to relax just a little bit, as you see Toon on the right side shaking his arms out. 
Toon has a bit more elbow bend, so you can see from the elbow down, he's using a lot more of his arms on the double unders. And this is surprising, very surprising. Travis Mayer coming up from the rear. Time to beat is 17.46. Once we're done with the double unders, 50 more wall balls, and Phil Toon followed closely behind by Fakowski onto that. Fakowski moving at a little bit of a quicker pace than Toon. Not by much, but again, saving seconds. They have yet to separate themselves between three different movements. So being able to get to the certain implication at the same time is so valuable. See, as Brent got to the rig, he had that one quick look to his right. Now what Brent did in the set of 40 went straight, wire to wire, unbroken. Toon had a break one or two times in that set of 40. And they're, they're not more fresh coming off 200 double unders as far as their shoulders are concerned. And what you want to see is how did they navigate those 200 double unders prior to it? Were they forcing big sets just to try to get some time? Or were they taking strategic breaks? If you feel yourself working too hard on the double unders, it's okay to take a little break, a little breath, and then get back into it. Brent Fikowski doing wall balls belongs in the MoMA. Tim Paulson, right side of your screen in the green shorts, third man to the rig. Cleared a lot of folks on the double unders. And Paulson came in after a great day one, a first place and a 12th place, has him just outside of games qualification in sixth at the start of the day. Anthony Davis at the bottom part of your screen. He's through the double unders, trying to match up with Sam Quant. And uh, yeah, Fikowski. And there's a break from Phil Toon. And he sat there and looked over at Brent Fikowski and saw that he wasn't putting the ball down. And, and look at the tempo. Phil Toon really going. Brent Fikowski never changed a beat. Just walked through the wall balls. And now is in first place and making his way with Phil Toon behind him and closing to the double dumbbells. Fikowski needs to look over his shoulder. The different skill sets between the two of them. But as always, fitness will reign supreme between that. And Phil Toon, a very strong athlete. Toon to the dumbbells first, 70 pounds each. Two reps at each station. It'll be 10 total reps here. And Toon has edged ahead of Fukowski. And Toon opting to go between the legs. It's going to allow his cycle time to be a little bit quicker because he doesn't have to move his feet. But even though Brent on the right is going outside, he's keeping his feet very narrow. So he's not wasting time by doing a step out that we'll see other athletes do. You can hear the roar of the crowd start to come up a little bit. And it's all of Toon Town getting behind Phil Toon right of screen. Oh, and Fikowski had to put him down. Now he just took a knee. Phil Toon is ahead, and I don't know if he's going to relinquish it. Phil Toon came into today as your day one leader. Yesterday, he had a second. He had a third. Two more reps here for Phil Toon. Looking for his first event win here at the Granite Games. Both men hands on knees. Phil Toon, a second place, a third place. And now a first place, strengthening his bid to make a CrossFit Games debut. And what a statement that is. It might just be one place at the end of the day in this event. But to go head to head with Brent Fakowski, and not only to beat him, but to watch what Brent is having to do just to hold on to second is a huge statement from Phil Toon. And Fakowski stumbles through, still 16 seconds ahead of Sam Demeester. But actually, Sam Demeester, excuse me, uh, John Wood. Sam Demeester was your Heat 1 winner. John Wood's 1746 from Heat 2. Chase is going to hold up. He's going to come in third in this event. Tim Paulson. A great finish for him, and these are the things that he needed. Last year, Tim was in a qualifying position and had one bad finish that derailed his bid to go back to the games last year. And Tim Paulson is putting on 
a great performance here so far. And for Mertens, just the back half of this event, not his strong suit, but, but still, still yes, great. exactly, still able to have a great finish for Colt Mertens. So that is, that is a great performance that we saw from Mertens and Anthony Davis. Who we didn't talk about at all, winds up coming in sixth overall in 1820. And here is Sam Quant, waiter carrying those dumbbells forward. We've got some times starting to become a factor from an earlier heat. 19-13, the next time up. That could become an issue for Quan. Quan is in 10th overall, 42 points out of fifth place, but that's held by Nick Matthew. And Nick Matthew is struggling. That is seventh place for Sam Quan. And regardless of where you finish in the event, if you're passing people that you are trying to chase down, that is huge. And another one is Travis Mayer. Yeah, Travis Mayer in the back part of your screen. And we talked about Nick Matthews struggling a little bit, but Travis Mayer was in third overall coming into this event. And for those on the outside looking in, obviously Brent Fikowski is one of them, but Anthony Davis, Sam Quant, that is big for them. Nick Matthew just finishing in 11th place overall. So there are still points to be had, despite what is perceived as a struggle here for Travis Mayer. He will come across unofficially in 1954. So all of that said, it's a 13th place finish. Not great, not a disaster. And the heat is concluded with Zach Bunton finishing as well. This is a leaderboard so tight between second and sixth. And with Brent Fikowski getting second, who is holding on to that sixth place position, that's gonna be good for him. You'll probably see him move up maybe close to the top three after this, but Phil Toon. We talked about Fikowski's resume when it comes to chippers coming in. But Phil Toon, center lane black tank top, didn't back off at all. Every time Fikowski would get ahead, Phil Toon would swing right back, so they finished. Fikowski gets to the rings first. Toon gets off the rings first. Toon would get to the wall ball first, and then Brett Fikowski would get back to the wall ball ahead of him. They got to the double unders at the exact same time, only separated by seconds. And even though Fikowski went unbroken for 50, as you saw Toon looking over to try to see if he could hear the count of Fikowski, he took a break or two and it all came down to the end, and then Fikowski got a no rep because he wasn't able to control the dumbbells overhead and then dropped to two knees, basically just opening the door the rest of the way for Phil Toon to get his first win of the weekend. Well, Toon's fans have the Toon squad jerseys on. Phil Toon drank some Michael's secret stuff before that event. He's with Jamie Hagia. I am here with Phil Toon. You just won this event. How are you feeling? Pretty bad right now, I can't lie. Way worse than when I practiced it. And you were neck and neck with Brent Fikowski the whole way. How did that change your strategy seeing him so close to you? It didn't, it actually helped my strategy because I probably would have jumped up a little bit too early on some of the muscle ups, for instance, and would have fatigued out too much, especially in this setting after all the volume we've done so far this weekend. With so many movements in that event, where do you think the separator really was and where that workout was won? The muscle ups, easily. Uh, if you go too fast in the GHDs, it definitely hurts your turnover a little bit on those muscle ups. So I kind of tried to like not let the speed of the competitors around me dictate what I did on the first portion of the workout, you know? Thank you so much, Phil. Yeah, thank you. Phil Toon's first event win here at the Granite Games. He is in first by, oh, stand by for math. 20, <laughs> 31 minus seven. 24. Thank you. Brent Fikowski in second, then John Wood from heat two with a really good score that held up. We're gonna move on to event four. The teams will lead that off about 20 minutes from now.
the 2022 CrossFit semifinals are brought to you by Erosti, the official rapid recovery provider of CrossFit. Rogue, don't weaken. Monster Hydro, the official energy drink of the Noble CrossFit Games. Guaranteed Rate, the official mortgage company of the Noble CrossFit Games. And by GoWatt, the official mobility partner of the Noble CrossFit Games. Teen Titans and Ageless Wonders. The first week of the age group semifinals is in the books. Individual games veterans lead the way in the 35 to 39 year old divisions, while the youngsters show the future of the sport is bright. We'll recap all the action from week one of the semifinals for the masters and teenagers next on Game Central. Hi everybody, welcome to an age group semifinals edition of Game Central. I'm Sean Woodland. Hope you're enjoying all the coverage of week three of semifinals for the individuals and the teams. Last week was the first of two weeks for the age groups in their online semifinals. The teenagers competed as well as the younger masters. They had six different workouts they had to compete in and the top 10 athletes from each age group, they advanced to the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. Let's start with the teenagers. Here are your top three finishers in each division. For the boys 14 to 15 year old division, RJ Mestre swept every competition so far. First in the open, first in the online qualifier, and now first in the semifinals. And in the girls 16 to 17 year old division, Olivia Kerstetter was second in the open and then back to back first place finishes in the online qualifier and in the semifinals. And remember, the top 10 athletes from each division advance to the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. And for a closer look at the teenage divisions, let's send it to Caleb Banfield. Lots of excitement happening right now in the CrossFit world, and I'm sure a lot of relief for our teenagers who have just finished up their semifinals. Let's take a look at each division. Starting off with our girls, 14 to 15 year olds, no surprises to see Lucy McGonigal having a near perfect run and taking the win with a lowest score for the weekend of seventh. The girls 16 to 17 year old category, another not surprising winner, Olivia Kerstetter finishes on top with a total of three event wins. Moving over to our boys and starting with the 14 to 15 year olds, RJ Meester absolutely dominates, but he does take a lowest placing for the weekend of 13th. However, he finishes with a very impressive 91 point lead over KO Subiono. And lastly, our boys 16 to 17 year old division, a name that we haven't heard around here much before. Great to see some fresh faces on top. Caleb McClure takes a 27 point win over Ty Jenkins in a very tough 16 to 17 year old division. A special shout out before we go goes to our Subiono brothers who have both earned their tickets to the CrossFit Games this year as teenagers. Thank you, Kayla. Let's turn our attention now to the younger masters, starting with the 35 to 39 year old age divisions and a handful of familiar names are inside the top 10 for both the men and the women. For the men, four games veterans are in the top 10. Frederick Agidius just missing out. He finished in 11th. On the women's side, China Cho wins and eight different countries are represented inside the top 10. Sam Dancer, your top finisher in the 35 to 39 year old division, had all top five results in the six workouts except for workout number four. Ionis Papadopoulos, Roy Gamboa, Craig Kenny also qualifying to the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. On the women's side, China Cho leads the pack. She only had one finish outside of the top five. Other veterans include Amelia Lepinen, Carly Matthews, and Anita Pravati. Let's head over to the 40 to 44 year old divisions where we have an athlete from Lebanon inside the top five, Samir Zarur finishes in second place for the 40 to 44 year old men. And then on the women's side, Becca Voigt going back to the games yet again as she finishes in third place. On the men's side, Michael Laverriere dominates. Every single finish was inside the top 10 and he won workout four. He had 500 total points, 69 more than Zarur in second place. And Alexander Jolive gets two event wins, but he did have two finishes outside of the top 10. On the women's side, we had Becca Voigt Miller finishes third. Friel finished with 509 points to win by 64 points over Julia Roggio. Friel only finished outside the top five once in six 
workouts. Over on the 45 to 49 year old side, looking at both leaderboards, a top 10 advancing to the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. A man who aged up into this division takes the overall win. More on that in a second. Jason Grubb, the defending champ, finishes in fourth. Jason Grubb mentioned him, finishes fourth. Consistency for the top two, Vlad Leoskevich and Mike Kern definitely paying off. Leoskevich never finished lower than sixth. Mike Kern had all top five finishes except for workout four where he took 17th. Open winner Angel Cardenas failed to qualify. He finished in 11th overall, 14 points out of a qualifying spot. And a name you did not see on the women's side. Defending champion Annie Sakamoto does not qualify. She has been battling a knee issue. She takes 13th. Michelle Susie has three event wins and wins the overall competition due to a tie break over Ali Crawford. Those are your qualifiers for the first part of the age group online semifinal. And for the top takeaways from what we saw last weekend, here's Tommy Marquez. Thanks, Sean. Six masters divisions and four teenage divisions threw down this past weekend. And while results are still unofficial pending video and score review, here are my top three takeaways from weekend number one for the age group semifinals. Up first in the teenage divisions, these youngins, they can move some weight. We had two different workouts where things got heavy under very different circumstances. But in both instances, the teenage divisions really showcased their strength. In event three, which was a repeat of the virtual semifinal snatch event from last season, Johan Roberts logged 30 snatches at 185, and Olivia Kerstetter hit 50 at 125 after breezing through the first three weights in their respective divisions. Then Olivia knocked out 260 wall balls before cleaning 242 pounds, and then Johan hit 330 on the clean. In both instances, they had a ton of work to do before they could earn their heavy, which makes their display of strength in the clean and jerk and the snatch that much more impressive. Up next, a division to keep your eye out for at the games has to be the women's 40 to 44 division. All three podium finishers last year's games are coming back. And as a reminder, Kelly Friel, Becca Voigt Miller, and Kelly Marshall stood on the podium in this division in 2021. Both Jen Ryan and Becca Voigt Miller declined their semifinals invites just a month ago to get a crack at this Masters division. And just like she did in Madison, Kelly Friel stands tall as the leader after the semifinal round. With the turnover we can typically see from year to year in the Masters division, I think it's interesting that we can add an athlete like Ryan to the mix because she was on the Invictus team at the games last year and then still have the full podium requalify. That to me stands out as a division at the games that is gonna be full of parity and is gonna have a heated race for the podium come Sunday. And last but not least, we got some new phases for some familiar faces and I'm talking about the 35 to 39 division. One thing that I think we'll see become more commonplace in this new era of Masters competition is seeing more and more previous individual games athletes each year qualify in the 35 to 39 division in the Masters competition. We've had glimpses of it in the past, including last year with some fun races, but now in 2022, we've got China Cho, Amelia Lepinen, Carly Matthews on the women's side, Sam Dancer, Roy Gamboa, and Craig Kenny all inside a qualifying position at this point. It only adds to the intrigue to the Masters competition, and as the sport continues to mature over time, it brings me great joy as a fellow Masters age athlete now that athletes that have extensive experience in the individual divisions are able to continue to compete and do so at a high level in the Masters competition. Those are my top takeaways from weekend one of the age group semifinals, and I'm pumped to see weekend two and the rest of the age groups throw down this weekend. Sean? We are in week number three of the online semifinals. One week remains, and right now the Granite Games are going on, as well as the Far East Throwdown over in South Korea. And virtually, we have the second part of the age group online qualifier, to the 50 to 65 plus athletes. And for the first time ever, we have our adaptive athlete online semifinal. You can keep posted on all the action on the CrossFit Games YouTube channel. And if you haven't already, remember the first four episodes of Miles to Madison are available now. You can check them out on the CrossFit Games YouTube channel. Thanks so much for watching everybody. Enjoy the rest of the semifinals this weekend. I'm Sean Woodland and we'll talk to you soon. What does it take?
How do I train? What do I eat? How much do I sleep? How do I react? What if this happens? What if that happens? It all adds up. It's not about what I do. It's about what I don't do. No excuses. No shortcuts. No gimmicks. No tomorrows. No bull. It's super important to have a baseline level of where you're at. Being able to have data at your fingertips is just a great way to improve your overall life and health. The at-home thorn tests are just an amazing tool. You can have some tangible evidence as to here's what's going on in your system. It's looking at the body as a whole and trying to fix different systems that will then contribute to overall health. What is this course about? Well, this weekend is your level one. It's the introductory component. The flowing content is gonna look like this. We are gonna have what's called conceptual framework lectures. We're very big on defining things. So we'll define CrossFit, talk about fitness, give you our stance on nutrition, talk technique, as well as programming. In addition to that, we're gonna have what's called nine foundational movements, and we're gonna give them to you in three series. We'll have a squat series, a press series, and also a deadlift series. While those lectures are going on, you'll have a demo person up front here on a box showing you all the things we wanna see in movement, and also some areas that can get yourself into trouble. From there, we're gonna break out onto the, into small groups onto the main floor here, where you're gonna get a chance to be led by one of my ninja slash rockstar trainers. It's very hands-on, very practical application. So if you're that person that came here this weekend looking to have your own personal movement corrected, that's gonna be an opportunity for you. But in addition to that, if you're looking to become a trainer or you're currently a trainer, looking for some additional cues and corrections for fixing movement, it's gonna be appropriate for that as well. One of the coolest things about this program is its infinite scalability. And so whether you are a games athlete or whether you're somebody that is uh, never done a CrossFit workout before, we have no way of knowing that. And so when it comes time for the workouts, if you'll just let us know where you are in the process, hey, I got a nagging shoulder, elbow, or whatever the story is, we will take care of you. And our goal is to make sure that we give you the appropriate stimulus for the workout that we're doing, but also keep you safe in the process. You're gonna have a good time this weekend. Uh, gonna learn a lot, gonna laugh a lot.
10 seconds. Stand by. All right. 10 minute time cap for the speed chipper. Your team's out here. Four way synchro chest to bar looking for 44 reps. It's a buy in before we make our way onto that heavy rogue worm for a four rounder. Worm clean and jerks and shuttle runs. The rep scheme. Descending by reps 11, 9, 7, and 5. After each round, one athlete will perform a shuttle run down and around their pylons. Two trips down and back, totaling 120 yards. Got to get through those 44 synchronized chest of bar. All four athletes sinking up. Razor Ranch and CrossFit Gambit going back and forth. But it's gonna be CrossFit Lakeville, your first off of the chest of bars at the 92nd mark. A 10 minute time cap looking for 11 worm cleaner jerks up and over. Got to touch the ground, got to touch each shoulder. And you'll see our teams march down the competition floor each round, dropping one team member off for their shuttle run before joining back up on the worm. Four heats of teams here tonight. Razor Ranch now running out to the worm in that number two position here in heat number one. Lakeville leading the way. Once again, a 44 synchronized chest of bar, a buy in before our four rounder first athlete. Heading down in lane and number nine, CrossFit Lakeville. 11 reps in. Down and back two times. Each athlete, after each round of worm clean and jerks, three minutes in, seven minutes remaining. Your leaders. CrossFit Lakeville, lane number nine, blue shirts. They'll move the worm. Next up, nine reps for athlete number two shuttle run. As CrossFit Gamut now, off of that 44 chest to bar buy-in. Razor CrossFit now at number two position. First athlete off for their 120 yard shuttle run. Coming up on the four minute mark. CrossFit Lakeville leading the way. Four worm cleaning jerks to go in round number two. Reignited now, putting their first athlete. Razor Ranch now, back to the worm. Athlete number two for CrossFit Lakeville. Heading out for their shuttle run. Four and a half minutes in. Coming up on that halfway marker. Working in that round of nine, Razor Ranch CrossFit in lane number three. Yeah. 
Five minutes in, five minutes remaining. Descending reps. CrossFit Lakeville through two rounds. Got to move that worm down one more segment to that round of seven. As CrossFit Gambit sending their first athlete out onto the shuttle run. Two laps. And then back to the worm. Heat number one of four. As Razor Ranch sending athlete number two out for the shuttle run. At the 545 mark. Leading the way, CrossFit Lakeville. Working in that round of seven. Worm cleaning jerks. CrossFit reignited number two athlete out and running. The running order is female, male, female, male. The number three athlete out and running for CrossFit Lakeville at the 615 marker. One more round to go, leading the way here in heat number one, CrossFit Lakeville. Final round of five worm cleaning jerks for CrossFit Lakeville coming up. Staying out in front. Razor Ranch. Trying to finish up that round of seven as Lakeville moves forward. Athlete number two for CrossFit Gamut off and running. Four reps and now three to go for Lakeville as we cross over the seven minute mark. Athlete number three for Razor Ranch CrossFit out and running. Final clean and jerk and final run for CrossFit Lakeville. Picking up the pace when I see the light at the end of the tunnel. Lakeville, one lap down, one to go before releasing the team to head all the way down to that stop mat. Eight minutes in, two minutes remaining. And that'll do it for CrossFit Lakeville. Setting the time to beat eight minutes and 13 seconds. Razor Ranch CrossFit working on their final five reps. Three reps to go for Razor Ranch. Set to release their final athlete down onto the shuttle. Two reps to go. Reignited now with three reps to go. Number three athlete for Gambit. Off and running. Final shuttle run for Razor Ranch. As we come up on the nine minute mark. Heat number one of four for your teams tackling the speed chipper. One lap down, one to go for CrossFit Reignited. Razor Ranch now. Right behind is CrossFit Reignited. Just about three seconds separation and 30 seconds remaining. CrossFit Gambit, five reps to go. Looking to get as much of this work done as possible. 20 seconds for CrossFit Gambit. Two reps to go. We're going to count them down. Ten seconds. Five seconds to go. One rep. Three, two, 
one time. And that'll do it. CrossFit Lakeville setting the time to beat with three heats to go for event number four to close out day number two here at the Granite Games. Your elite teams finishing out day number two. Stay strong, CrossFit Black. Lane number seven, CrossFit Height. And rounding out this heat in lane number five, Ocean State CrossFit Blue. seconds. Ten, Ten seconds. seconds. Stand by. Stand by. 
And here we go, folks, with that buzzer. Our athletes are released from their green start mats. A little bit of a buy-in here. 44 synchro chest-to-bar pull-ups. If our rig is a rock and don't come on, well, you know how it goes. Sets of rig shakers out there. Anyway, got 44 synchro to go, and then we'll see them advance to the worm. We're gonna break it up into four different sections on the worm cleaning jerks. We're gonna knock a couple reps off every time. We're gonna start with 11 worm cleaning jerks at the first position. You can see it laid out if you're up in the stands. It goes 11, 9, 7, and 5. We're gonna add a little shuttle run in. If you guys are just tuning in or just joining us, welcome, welcome, welcome. You made it just in time for the end of the day. Again, this is our team elite division. The speed chipper, event number four. Keeping our eye on our teams. Our judge will throw that hand in the air when they are down to their last few reps. Again, 44, the magic number to release them from the pull-ups. Good communications. Excellent coordination between our teams. Again, hard enough getting your own chest of bars going. It's gonna be our team right in the center. Stay strong, CrossFit Black. Just stay CrossFit next up. Lone Star. Lone Star CrossFit in the hunt as well. Going to be your one, two, and three in this heat. Again, compressed seats, only five teams. So again, we need the room. But it is 11 clean and jerks with the worm. Worm's got to hit the ground. It's got to touch each shoulder to count. When they complete that 11th rep, and again, keep your eye on your judge. Looks like going to be a team right in the middle. Stay strong, CrossFit, hand in the air. You can make up time in certain spots, but worm cleaning jerks are a rough place to do it. Pretty much tied up for second. Between our bookend and crews, Ocean State, and lane, and lane number one, Lone Star CrossFit. Last rep done there in the center for Stay Strong. You see it's going to release one athlete to start their shuttle run. They're going to go down around their pylon, around that marker, and bang, Lone Star CrossFit. Double time and out. And again, you may not win the event on the sprints, but you could certainly lose it. You could actually probably make up some time if you got some speedy runners. Now it's laid out. It's going to be male. I correct it. be female, male, female, male. Our batting order on running. Going to be Stay Strong CrossFit Black in the center. Their first runner back. They're going to hoist the worm, and they're going to advance forward into the nine rep zone. Ocean State and Lone Star back almost simultaneously. Ocean State with a bit of a lead. Lone Star, a little bit of a strategy there. They shouldered that worm for the duration of the run, which allowed them not to have to re-clean it to move it. Geo and crew from the Lone Star Cross, an interesting strategy for those guys. I like it. It may very well pay off for him. Hand in the air, in the center for Stay Strong CrossFit. Again, our reps diminishing. Worm staying constant. Hand in the air for Lone Star. Last rep in the center for Stay Strong. Looks like one rep to go for Lone Star. Well, they've cut that lead. They'll dump the horn this time. Gio on his run. Ten minute time gap in place. We're approaching the halfway point. All of our teams on to the worm. Stay strong, CrossFit. In the center. Lane number five, their second runner back, but 
Lone Star making up some time on that run. Good hustle. And they will advance forward almost simultaneously. Both teams will dump the worm and go right to work here. One of these teams looking to eclipse that time of Lakeville in heat number one. 8.13 the time to beat. We're just past 5.20 on the clock, so teams in striking distance. They're down to their reps of seven. Hand in the air for both Stay Strong and Lone Star. Last rep for both crews. And there we go. Lone Star going to maintain that same strategy, man. I like that. That is smart gameplay right there. Get it in where you can fit it in. Their third athlete double timing through her run. She's one lap in with one to go. They are going to pull ahead of Stay Strong CrossFit. Your leader now coming down to lane number one. Lone Star CrossFit there. Lone Star in the black tops. And they're going to press forward with all four team members back intact. They will ground the worm and go back to work on their round of five. About a two rep lead for Lone Star, which is a huge lead when you only have five reps to knock out. Last rep for Lone Star on their round of five. There we go. Lone Star sending their runner out. One rep to go in the center for Stay Strong CrossFit. We're approaching seven minutes. Stay Strong now with their runner in motion. Lots of cheering from the crowd. Lone Star. Going to have about a half a rep, half a length lead on the field. Again, time to beat 18. We are at 7.13 now. Lone Star looking to best that time. Lone Star going to round the whole team as one. Going to press to that finish line. And Lone Star setting the new time to beat around 7.27. Next up, right in the center, Stay Strong CrossFit Black. And they will log the second fastest time thus far. We still have two heats. All teams waiting the wings to rock and roll on this. The speed chipper as we approach eight minutes on the clock. Last rep for 80-35. And they will send their runner out. Hand in the air all the way down for Ocean State. Same story for CrossFit Hype there. Looking to advance into that final zone. Less than two minutes to go. That last runner having to pull some double duty there. Doing his two laps. He's going to do half a lap with his squad now. Here we go there all together. Man, nice hustle. Woo, some speedsters. 80-35. Right around 8-31. Less than 90 seconds, seems. Less than 90 seconds. Crossfit hype. Their last runner in motion. Oh, sorry, it wasn't CrossFit Hype. That was Ocean State's CrossFit Lair, last runner. And they will log a time just under nine minute hype. Looking to get those last five reps and run done if they can. Less than 60 seconds to go. And CrossFit Hype cutting it down to full for 45 seconds. And we know every stick and rep counts. Just a pair of reps, I believe, remaining as we approach 30 seconds. The last rep, we'll see, get to see the final runner on their sprint. And Hype done with the worm. Their final runner underway. How far can he get in that remaining time? 15 seconds on the clock. He cleared the field pretty quickly the first time. On his way back, 10 seconds. 
Let's make some noise, folks. Let's cheer them on. We're going to count it down. Three, two, one. And that's time. Big round of applause for all your squads out there. Hats off to our heat winner, Lone Star CrossFit Red. The Twin Cities here in Minnesota, Minneapolis, St. Paul. It is 70 degrees. It is a beautiful spring, early summer day here in the suburbs of the Twin Cities, Egan, Minnesota, alongside Jamie Hagia and Chase Ingram. My name is Joel Godet. We are outside here at the Granite Games. Underneath the sky, our feet grounded into the earth for this speed chipper event four on the team side. It's brought to us by Rogue and Chase Ingram. We've got to buy it. Oh, we have out mixed pairs earlier to start today, and all four team members will be doing 44 synchronized chest to bar pull ups. And then we have the couplet of worm clean and jerks and shuttle sprints across the competition field, alternating one athlete. So, where you strategize those athletes, it's going to be pretty interesting to see what these teams do in the next ten, two heats. A recipe for success delivered by Trifecta. All right, keep the transitions tight. That includes breaks on the pull-up bar, the way you guys move the worm forward, how you do each rep on the clean and jerks, and send the sprints. You are going to get a break after your set of clean and jerks. So three arresting, one's working. The sprint pace is going to matter. And there are only five teams. These are the ones competing. Because of the fact that you have all four athletes on the pull-up bar at the same time, every team has two lanes. Can't put all 10 out there simultaneously. Those are the five we look at. Undefeated, the lone Canadian team in the field. Invictus, unconquerable. Made a nice move this morning. 
ninth to seventh. They were 35 points actually out of a qualifying position. They only gained five points, but the closing of the gap as far as place finishing has closed a bit, but they still need to pick up points, not just place finishes on the leaderboard. These are synchronized 44 chest-to-bar pull-ups. Speaking of recipes for success, this kind of looks like a spigot over an open flame here. <laughs> I tell you what, being synchronized with a partner is one thing, but with all four team members is a complete different one. And usually if you practice this as an affiliate, which most of these teams probably have, is that you'll put two on one side of the rig and maybe two on the other facing each other. This is a whole nother beast because the athlete all the way on the right, it's going to be really tough to pace off the one on the far other side. So we talk about synchro is one thing, but this is definitely a next level. Now, the fact that there's only 44 is good, but transitions, it's okay to take more breaks on these chest of bar pull-ups. I know it's only 44, but most of the time you're going to lose or gain is actually gonna be on the second half of this. So the only thing you can really do here is maybe give yourself a little bit of an advantage, but put, don't put yourself as, at a disadvantage. Don't go too big, don't get out of sync, don't get frustrated is another one, but short sets, short breaks, it's a lot easier to stay in sync with smaller sets than it does bigger ones. Taking a look at Verdant, who visited the merchandise stand before the event began. All in their Granite Games 22 t-shirts. And you'll see the athletes, Chase, to your point, on the sides, doing chest to bar with their heads cranked to the side. Yeah, I mean, it's what you have to do to stay in rhythm. And the challenging part is when you have different athletes with different levers, that your cycle speed is gonna be a lot different. So staying within each, other, each other's pace is, is a challenging feat. Undefeated, the first team to the worm. 11 worm clean and jerks here. And then it'll be a round of nine, followed by a round of seven, followed by a round of five. In between, the athletes will do their 120-yard shuttle runs, which is down and back twice, so four lengths. Invictus Unconquerable, you can see in the background, just finishing. They'll now move on to the worm in last place of the five in this heat. And the first person they send out, it's going to be female, male, female, male. And it's touch and go pace. Look, if you can sustain this, teams have gotten a lot better at this over the years. I know this was something you probably don't encourage new teams to the worm to do, just because getting out of sync is a bit more detrimental when you break during a touch and go attempt because not everybody's on the same page. Whereas these single reps, honestly, if you look at, okay, what does Mayhem do? They do singles. Well, then maybe we should do singles too. <laughs> Off and running. Pretty good team to, I don't know, emulate, strategize and emulate, exactly. Undefeated is the first one of the shuttle sprints. Now these have to go female, male, female, male in that order. It doesn't matter which ones are running, but that is the gendered order here. And the first athlete usually kind of gets the short end of the stick because not only did you just do 44 synchro chest to bar pull-ups right into 11 clean and jerks, but you are the one that has to go off for the first shuttle run while everyone gets a break. And you've got to run a smidgen longer because the worm is being advanced. Right, and then right back to nine. So your first athlete, between your two female athletes, you probably want to pick the, uh, the more seasoned or the, the fitter of the two when it comes to work capacity, right? They're going right from the 44 to the 11, to the strength, back to the nine. So to be able to sustain that pace so your team doesn't miss a beat, right? You need a very fit individual to take that first leg on the sprint. There was Marley Rittinger that went for undefeated CrossFit first. Richard Deschamps, Ryan Jevning, and Anna Rebizant, the other three members of the team from Canada. And I like the single pace that they have going on. And this is what we talked about transitions. Transitions is also part of the movement when you do single reps on the worm. You drop the worm as a team. You see that pick up. Another thing you see Mayhem do, and that's pretty new to this year, is they'll do a set call and they'll actually pull the worm on top of their feet, which allows their hands to slide under the bag a little bit easier, which gives them a better grip to do the clean from the floor. Final rep of the nine, and you can hear the judge, male one. We saw some teams in heat one 
was actually an interesting strategy is that during, after the last clean and jerk, dropping it isn't really a part of the mandated portion of this on the other side since the rep counts when it gets there. And so some of them would actually keep the worm on their shoulder so that when they have to advance it forward once the athlete comes back, they save themselves a, a basically a clean. Although you do have to stand there under tension for a little bit. True, it's, it's a give and take, right? <laughs> Are you fit enough to sit there under tension? So there was that clean just to advance the worm. Right, and that clean doesn't count because they have to drop the bag on the other side and start from the floor. So there is an extra clean in there. Right back to work here for Undefeated. After they had Richard Deschamps, who competed individually at the Atlas Games last year, running that first leg. Moving to the round of seven clean and jerks. Then their second female athlete will take off for the 120 meter shuttle run. Undefeated was 67th worldwide coming out of the quarters, 184th worldwide coming out of the open from Winnipeg in Manitoba. What's tough here is just staying with the pace, staying intentful with the intensity of your cycle rate on the clean and jerks, knowing you are going to get a break save for one of you. And Anna Rebizant now, 23 years of age. She was on the undefeated team last year that was 30th out of quarters, but did not compete at the semifinal level. And it's tough here, especially on the second leg of this down and back shuttle. It's just really pushing the pace. I know you're tired and the legs are burning. You only got five clean and jerks after this for this third leg on the athlete's side, and then you get a break. So just hanging tough here at the end is a big part of it, being successful in this event. Down and back twice for 120 yards. Back to work here on those final five clean and jerks. I guess six, because there's that quote-unquote wasted clean to advance the worm. <laughs> yeah. Already the judge's hand in the air, that's automatic. Now for this last athlete, we got two more clean and jerks. He's gonna have a down and back twice, plus a little extra because he has to run back, get the team, and then they turn around and go those last 30 yards back across the finish line. So your last athlete is gonna have the longest sprint of the four. And it's Ryan Jevening, who you can also see the little yellow dot on his right ankle. He is also wearing the chip timer. Saving feet, right? We talked earlier, I was like, what's two feet to advance it for? It's like, I would love two extra feet at the end of this that I don't have to run. So putting him in front to save a little extra time is a very smart move. Time to beat is 728 by Lone Star CrossFit from the most recent heat. That has come and gone. Stay Strong was in 740 in the last heat. That too has come and gone. So some good early times. And undefeated comes across. About 7.54 unofficially. 7.55 is the number to put them in third place at this juncture. Meanwhile, we pointed out Invictus unconquerable to start things way behind pace at this point. Let's go! <laughs> Let's go. Down in lanes one and two, Union Square Black, the New York City-based team. Also saw breaking boundaries come through. Ten minute time capped event, so about 90 seconds left to work. Stark difference than what we started with this earlier this afternoon for the team event that had a 34 minute time cap. Trying to drag Lalo Torres across here. <laughs> Emily Rethwell, I'm the track athlete. Everybody get on board, let's run. But what I like they did here as far as where they put the chip timer is they put it on the last athlete to go. So you, they had to mandate who gets it and that's gonna be the last one. Whereas, you know, back in the earlier stages of, us, of the team competition, Maybe uh, more, the more savvy teams would put it on their fastest athlete who would just be waiting for the team, for his athlete to get done. And actually, Mayhem tried that at the games last year. It was illegal, and they got docked for it after the fact. Well, yeah, just ask Adrian Conway how he feels about that move from the 2017 games. It, it worked out for Wasatch in the end, but still, I think uh, I had a chat with Adrian Conway a couple days ago about that very thing, and it's uh, still bothering him to, his, to this day. Colin Bland here for Verdant CrossFit. Lone team left out there doing his shuttle runs. Verdant's out of Boise, Idaho. A 
I think the sprint pace that is needed to be in a top team in this event might be surprising a few teams because usually in a shuttle run situation, like, okay, look, I'm, I'm putting maximum effort, but it's going to take a little bit more than that as far as how you feel. Undefeated winds up winning as we hit the time cap. Verdon just short of it. And they, honestly, their first one's off the rig, never looked back from there. What I liked is those tight transitions, wasting no time to the worm. A lot of times you'll see some teams that get to the worm, they're a little disoriented, not everybody's on the same page. And even with all those tight transitions, though they got first in the, in the heat, still good enough for third in the event. And so knowing what the time is, is a huge factor in how you pace this event on the back half. Undefeated in 7.55, as we told you when they finished, that's good for third overall in the event. Union Square Black is good for fifth right now. They finished behind CrossFit Lakeville from an earlier heat. Heat number four, the final heat here in event four, coming your way in a moment. Week three of the CrossFit semifinal season presented to us by Trifecta TCO Stadium, Egan, Minnesota, suburbs of the Twin Cities, alongside Jamie Hygia, Chase Ingram. My name is Joel Godet. Overall standings on the team side, Invictus came and Invictus is doing what Invictus planned on doing. A 20 point lead over Open Box Athletics, 30 point lead over Move Fast, Live Heavy, 40 point lead over Greater Heights Ascend. And then Rhapsody is on the cut line Talk more about the team from South Carolina in a minute. But first, your event description brought to you by Rope. Long one to start the day, short one to finish for the teams. 44 synchronized Chester Bar pull-ups across all four team members. And then that couplet between the worm clean and jerks and shuttle run. And we saw in the back half earlier, staying together is a huge component of this. Keeping those transitions tight. Whether you're breaking on the pull-ups or those clean and jerks, even if you're doing singles, this is staying focused, staying together. The transitions on the sprints, gonna have to run a lot faster than you want to if you wanna take the time down to 728 by Lone Star. Down to Jamie Hagia. Thanks, Joel. We're seeing these synchro chest bar pull-ups. It's hard enough to sync up two athletes. We're asking all four to touch at the same time. So it's gonna take a lot of communication and a lot of teamwork, a lot of effort on these guys then. Jamie, thank you. There is something so satisfying. It's like an Instagram reel. You know those things that they just post that you can watch for hours? When all of these athletes will be in unison doing those chest to bar. Invictus leads the way right now. Team from San Diego, California. Rhapsody is on the cut line. 
looking to have a good event, the team from South Carolina. They are fifth coming in to event three. They stayed in fifth, but extended that gap between them and sixth place. I'm telling you, you can just get mesmerized watching all those synchro chest to bar as long as they're working. An important thing here is you don't have to do big sets, quick little breaks. You'll probably see some teams do four sets of 11 just because it's an easy count to keep track of. But it's really dependent on the athletes that are in the mix. You sometimes you'll see an athlete get off the pace and actually have to have the team come down before the plan was. And then Kelsey Keel did one extra rep there, so sometimes there are added or missed reps here and there. And one extra rep in a set of 44 with athletes of this caliber is, is not much, but you see they're getting off pace a, a bit again on the right side of your screen. And that's what happens, you do big sets, someone's not communicating. The thing here is like, how do you get started? That's just a tough thing for a synchronized chest bar pull of how to start the rep. And a lot of times it's much slower of a start than you actually think it was because, you know, we're, we're racing, we're for time, people think you have to move fast and that's not the case. Being big, being smooth is much easier to stay synchronized with than it is short choppy pulls. And greater heights ascend, first done with the 44 synchro chest bar buy-in onto the 11 worm clean and jerks. And then it is female, male, female, male on the 120 yard run. Open box athletics, top of the screen, joining on, on the worm, bottom of the screen, Rhapsody is in as well. Invictus in the middle, still working through those synchro chest bars or sometimes unsynchro chest bars. <laughs> Hey, that's the challenge of the team competition. We see Synchro across all four for the first time. This is the first time seeing the Worm. The most team action we've seen so far is mixed pairs. We had no teamwork yesterday as far as working together. Although, a little touch and go right off the bat. That'll catch them up pretty quick. Just one more rep here, they put it down. And the first athlete, this first female athlete has to go, she definitely has the most work that has to get completed of any athlete, and it is Kelly Baker. I think it's the, the toughest leg, it is basically you draw straws when it comes to it, because look, they got the 44 chest bar pull-ups, the 11 clean and jerk, she has her own shuttle run, 120 feet, and then she has to go back for a set of nine. This is the hardest leg that any athlete has to take on for these teams. Three minutes in, Greater Heights is send right back to it, worm off the ground. Open Box Athletics is gonna pick their worm up as well. Nice transition for Greater Heights at the mid part of your screen. Top of your screen. Touch and go, trying to make up some time. They were off sync on the Chester Bar pull-ups, but pretty in sync on these worm cleaning jerks. Joey Tortora in the front for OBA, Open Box Athletics. Ashley Wozni took the first run for the team from Philadelphia. This is the round of nine on the worm clean and jerks. And usually when you're doing clean and jerks, a steady set of singles is a good pace, but this isn't a high volume set. The most we're doing is 11. After that, it's just single digits. This is actually when you'd like to see a team opt for that touch and go if they can handle it, because in these short sets, it's a massive, massive advantage. And Nicholas Hecht takes off for open box athletics. Really good individual athlete, 39th in the world out of the open. He is expecting a child in the coming days. I was going to say, it's the it's the race against new dads in the making between Nick Heck and Jordan, Jordan Cook. Nicholas Heck and Joey Tortora are both young dads for the Open Box Athletics team. Kelsey Keel said they call the guys the daddy gang <laughs> at the Open Box. Heck's a three-time regionals athlete. This is the dad bot I'd like to normalize. <laughs> right back to it for Greater Heights Ascend. Ready, stop, go. That additional clean just to advance the worm and then right back to it on the round of seven. 
It'll be a female run for both sides. Emily Tanner will go for the team on the left, Greater Heights Ascend. Kelsey Keel will run on the right for open box. And still that clean and jerk, and you can see how important that is to be able to sustain that pace on the clean and jerks. Because it's not like Greater Heights is going slow. Strong, consistent reps, but again, with this volume, that touch and go is so good to be able to sustain. And Kelsey Keel is way out in front for open box. They're only 20 points back of Invictus. Well, Invictus just caught up to Greater Heights as well because they're also going touch and go on the worm. Greater Heights has a decision to make. I'm not sure how much they've practiced this. I know with the experience they have, three or four, three or four of these athletes have been on games teams before. You might want to take a chance here to try to do touch and go on these last five reps to keep yourself in the mix because they are bleeding places to Invictus and OBA just because of the touch and go pace for these teams. Kelsey Keel using that bobsled speed, getting right back to the worm. Here we go, ready, Here we go. 20 points back for open box, CrossFit OBA. Invictus on the left side, going touch and go as well. Greater Heights in the middle, still doing singles. And it's all gonna come down to a foot race for that last athlete. This is the final set of five. Joey Tortora just took off, and Invictus made up some huge ground. Joshua Alchama, there's a slip for Tortora. He still keeps his small advantage. 7.28 is the time to beat. That should be no problem here. And here comes the entire team. You can hear the let him make the turn. Don't release the team too early. Open box athletics will gain some ground, if only marginal, on Invictus here at Invent 4. 20 point lead, five points gone. It's gonna, it's, it's here. This is what it's gonna take with teams of this caliber. Just chip away at him. I don't know if we can verbalize the movement for Joey Tortora, but he feels really good about how his team did in that event. Uh, that's the rock the baby. You've, we've seen that before. They're just rocking the baby. A bunch of new dads, right? Unless it's a major league reference of which we will not, <laughs> we will not expand on. I believe Bill Raftery would say, onions. <laughs> Move fast, lift heavy. Came in just 30 points out of first. Christian Harris's team has finished. Move fast. We're five one hundredths <laughs> of a second ahead of Lone Star's time. Five one hundredths of a second for all five points. The entire heat is done in 747. Open box athletics, though, earned that one. And how good do things get in the later heats? Everybody here almost finished better than the, the, the previous time to beat. Right off the bat, early on, Greater Heights, they went 22, 11, and 11 on their 44 chest bar pull-ups coming off the rig. They get to the worm first, well ahead of the other two teams chasing them down, but OBA kept a touch and go pace the entire time on the worm. And we may see the evolution of worm cycling start to become a necessary thing as teams get more and more proficient with this. And then Invictus in the middle lane, they nearly caught up to pass OBA at the end and it just became a foot race. I think that is Rock the Baby. It actually. is Rock the Baby. Yeah. Come on, everybody's watched football, maybe, not everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's way easier than the gritty. So, uh, you know, if you're going to do a dance, just rock the baby, because the gritty is just completely different. That is true. I will give you that. Down to Jamie with OBA. Thank you so much. I'm here with the winners. And with the, starting with the chest-to-bar pull-ups, what was the key to getting all four of you guys to touch at the same time? Um, there's a couple of us that were a little bit faster, Nick. So we kind of had to figure out who had a quicker cadence and then had them jump up first and then kind of just followed along. 
And on the worm, you guys made up a lot of time going touch and go. Was that, how was this, that planned your strategy of this workout? Uh, we've been practicing for months on the worm in preparation for this event. Honestly, we wish there was a lot more of it because we'd bring it every time. Um, but we're excited and it paid off all that hard work, so. Kelsey, it looks like you guys are always dancing and having fun yeah. after the workouts are done. What does that say about your team chemistry? Uh, we, we just love each other and we're here for each other. And uh, the goal of the weekend was to have fun doing it the whole time, no matter in how much pain we're in. Um, so I'm just grateful to be here with them and have fun doing it. Speaking of pain, you brought it home for the team. How were you feeling in that last run? No way I was getting beat on that run. <laughs> I was like, we, we've hurt too much on this workout. I'm gonna finish this strong. I kinda love that push at the end. It was really fun. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. Thank you guys, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. This is really a team for Open Box that came together over the last several months for this season, but they enjoy each other. They took a vacation during training. They said they all needed to get back to it. It works, paid off. Take a break. Back to the individuals coming up here in Minnesota. The 2022 CrossFit semifinals are brought to you by Trifecta. Trifecta, the official meal delivery partner of CrossFit. No Bull, the official footwear and apparel brand of CrossFit. O2, the official recovery drink of the No Bull CrossFit Games. And by the U.S. Army. Know your army. What does it take? How do I train? What do I eat? How much do I sleep? How do I react? What if this happens? What if that happens? It all adds up. It's not about what I do. It's about what I don't do. No excuses. No shortcuts. No gimmicks. No tomorrows. No bull. We're helping our members not only with their fitness one hour of the day, but we want them to improve 24 hours a day, every day of the year. We're helping with nutrition, we're helping with their sleep, their recovery. I take Thorn every day as a multivitamin, a pre-workout, and then before I go to bed. After using Thorn products, I feel a lot more powerful in my workouts, and then I can also focus better not only in the gym, but outside of the gym as well. Hi everybody and welcome. We're going to first begin by talking about the definition of CrossFit. All right guys, go ahead and sit back and down. Fight for that position. Push your knees apart from each other, just like that. Excellent job. This is a fitness that is considered broad, general, and inclusive. What's the biggest impact I can have on this athlete right here in this second?
CrossFit Override, Andrea Chiovetti. Rounding out the heat for heat number one, lane number 10 out of CrossFit Sua Sponte West, Sierra Chumlin. One minute, athletes, one minute. Thirty seconds, athletes, thirty seconds. Ten seconds. Stand by. Here we go, heat number one, event number four. Your individual female athletes. Kicking things off for us, a 10 minute time capped event. 120 yard shuttle run. Back to the platforms with that 120 pound rogue barbell, 16 snatches. Onto that rogue rig for 36 chest to bar. 160 yard shuttle run and then back to the rig for 36 more chest to bar onto the platforms for another 16 snatches and one final 120 yard shuttle run three heats of ladies heat number one underway 120 pounds on that rogue barbell looking for 16 snatches Gonna be watching for those judges' hands to go up. Five or less reps remaining. Lane number six, Tanya Oliveri. <laughs> Julia Crawford, two reps to go. Coming up on the two minute mark, and it's gonna be Crawford, lane number eight. First athlete off of the snatches. Back to the rogue rig, 36 chest to bar. And now Oliveri will be your number two athlete. Getting to work on the chest to bar. Followed by Jessica Meek, your one, two, and three. At the 225 marker, Chiavetti now to the pull-up bar. Jordan Chefs working down in lane number seven. Twenty-five reps in for Crawford. Thirty-six reps is what we're looking for. Chest to bar before dismounting. And that middle 160-yard shuttle run. Two reps to go for Crawford. Out of Maverick Crossford. Julia Crawford, your first athlete. Gray pants, pink top. Off and running, your first athlete. One round of snatches and chest of bar complete. Middle round of shuttle runs. 
Three and a half minutes in, a 10 minute time cap. Oliveri off of the chest of bar, as is Meek down in lane number five. Once our athletes done with that second shuttle run, they'll be right back to the rogue rig for 36 more chest of bars. And at the 415 marker, Julia Crawford, lane number eight. Right back to the pull-up bar, starting that second round of chest of bar pull-ups, looking for 36 reps. For trying to stay out in the lead, extend that lead. She's gonna have some company on the pull-up rig. Chumlin now off of her 36 chest of bar. Meek back to the pull up bar. 36 reps. All of Harry. That's her one, two, and three. Crawford, Meek, Oliveri. Five minutes in, five minutes to go, ladies. Heat number one, your ladies elite division. Event number four here this weekend. Looking to gather as many points as possible heading to our final day of competition. This is true. Chefs making some moves. In lane number seven, Oliveri moving fast on the chest of bar, but your leader, if she can hang on to it, Julia Crawford. Lane number eight. Coming off the 36 chest of bar, is gonna be right back to the platform with another 16 snatches on that 120 pound road barbell. And that'll do it for Crawford. Lane number eight moving out to the platform. Final 16 reps on the barbell for Crawford. Gonna go one at a time. Jessica Meek now heading out to platform number five. Just one rep separation for Crawford and Meek. Time slipping away as we come up on the seven minute mark. 16 snatches and one final 120 yard shuttle run. Meek and Crawford going one at a time. Oliveri back to the barbell platform number six. Just about four reps behind your leaders. Seven reps in for Crawford. Chumlin, Chiavetti, back to the barbell. Everybody here in heat number one, back to the barbell. As we come up on the eight minute mark, two minutes to go athletes, two minutes remaining. Five reps to go for Julia Crawford. Four reps to go for Crawford. Jessica Meek now, five reps remaining, four to go for Crawford. Four to go now for Meek. All tied up, Crawford and Meek. 
90 seconds remaining, athletes. 90 seconds to go. And now Oliveri with five reps remaining. His legs out. One final rep to go for Julia Crawford. Is it enough time? 10 minute time cap for the speed chipper. That'll do it for Julia Crawford and Jessica Meek at the same time. Just about a yard or two separation for Crawford and Meek. 45 seconds remaining. Oliveri off and running. One lap down, one to go. 30 seconds remaining, a foot race all the way through, and it's going to be too close to call for me. 20 seconds remaining. Crawford and Meek at the same time, and Oliveri will run across the line, that number three position. 10 seconds remaining, athletes. We're going to count you down. Five seconds. Three, two, one, time. Julia Crawford and Jessica Meek running it out there. We'll have to go to the scorecards as we got two more heats to go. Trifecta presents week three of the CrossFit Games semifinal season. Egan, Minnesota is the host site of the Granite Games, TCO Stadium, the training center of the Minnesota Vikings. Jamie Hagia is our reporter on the field. Chase Ingram to my right. My name is Joel Godet. This event description is brought to us by Rogue. Speed chipper for the individuals this time. You look at what the, the big part here is those 16 snatches, 120 pounds for the women, 36 chest to bar pull-ups, and then you work your way back down the list. Shuttle runs in there. Recipe for success presented by and delivered by Trifecta. Okay, it's not as fast as you think, and I'm talking about the snatches. Yes, maybe you can do touch and go, but should you do, do, do touch and go? You get, that taxes the grip in a big way, but this is a back half event that comes to the last 16 and 36 chest bar pull-ups. Emily Rolf in lane five. 
Sophie Sagafi in lane two. Two women that made some big strides this morning in event three. We said on the team side, there's big strides and then there's point total strides. Emily Rolfe moved from 11th to 7th. She's 35 points out of a qualifying position. She took off eight points of the deficit that she had. Now for Fee Sagafi, she had a bigger move. She actually lost eight points between her and that fifth place position. Sagafi though did jump from 17th to 9th for what it's worth, but obviously the points are more important because that's what ultimately separates you. This all starts with the shuttle run. You basically began at the finish mat. Down and back, down and back. And then to the 16 snatches, as Chase alluded to, at 120 pounds. And the question is, should I go touch and go, do a couple big sets, break things up, singles? As we said in the past, it's athlete dependent, but I think the bang for your buck is just that quick singles and able to turn around and do bigger sets on the chest of bar pull-ups. But if you have the ability to touch and go, that is a huge advantage for yourself. You look at an athlete, say like Danny Spiegel, her ability to move a barbell is gonna be a big benefit to this. You look at Emily Rolfe, and as good as she had a performance in event three, this is gonna be another tough challenge for her, not because of the chest to bar pull-ups, but the 32 snatches at 120. I like the singles that she has going on. We've heard of a couple athletes that think it's like singles is going to be what I'm going to do for snatches, but I'm going to try to do unbroken on the chest bar pull-ups. There is the old Pat Sherwood quote. Smooth is slow. Slow is smooth. Smooth is fast. If you just take this steady and smooth, all of a sudden it winds up working out pretty quickly for you. All right, just a steady rep, just chipping away at the first 16 snatches, 120 pounds. It's that middle range weight. That's that weight you don't normally train. Sometimes you see 185 and 135 between the men and the women, so maybe 125. Just not a normal weight. A little wrinkle to throw at these athletes. Not three much more, you guys can trick them up with. Three more reps for Fee Sagafi as she finishes here. Pink top in the middle of your screen as Emily Rolf is now onto the chest to bar. 36 of these. And that's a huge statement for Rolf who Admittedly, you know, strength is not her strength. She got 22nd in the complex yesterday, but she had those steady state singles on the snatches, and then that, that pace, that consistency got her to the bar first. And again, as you alluded to, it's a middle weight that also comes down to strategy a little bit. This is Victoria Caruso from CrossFit Roseland in New Jersey, and Chase, she had an interesting strategy, third place here in the heat. She went kind of touch and go on a couple of them. She went singles, but kept her hand on the bar. She dropped it a couple of times. There was an interesting mix of strategy through those first 16 snatches. And her keeping her hands on the bar allows it not to bounce around and lose time because what they're snatching on is actually a double rubber mat. And that just means things are gonna get a bit more bouncy. One more for Rolf. I don't know if she miscounted or just needed to take a quick break before that last one. But Rolf is now off to the shuttle runs, this time for 160 yards. He said back half event. You're, she's coming back to the pull-up bar for another 36 reps. She broke it up into a handful of sets. So we'll count the last one that she didn't have. So a couple sets. But for her, I'm so impressed by the way she navigated those first 16 snatches. Now the trick is, we said this is a back half event. What you did in the beginning is going to have a massive impact on how you finish towards the end because we're working our way back of this speed chipper. Fisagafi on the left of screen, chasing Emily Rolf here. This is a repeat of this morning. And Rolf chalking up before she gets back to the rig. I love that. Just saving some seconds, tightening up the transitions. It allows her to run a little bit slower. So instead of really wasting time at the rig by going to a chalk bucket, she's utilizing actual movement within the mo within the event to save her some time on the pull-up bar. This is a fresh Emily Rolf. Competed at the games this past year, finished 15th, then did the Rogue Invitational, then went to Dubai, then went to Wadapalooza, all between August and January. Took a vacation after Waza said, it probably wasn't a good idea to compete down in Miami, but took the little bit of break, got back into her training, and trying to put herself in a good position heading into Sunday. Rolf did a set of 10 and a set of eight. So halfway through, on the way to 16, Fisagafi on the left has yet to come down. 
jinxed her. Yeah, I was going to announcer's curse. My apologies. <laughs> Closing in on halfway here. Fee's cycle time is going to be a lot faster than Rolf. A little bit quicker on the chest of bars, and she'll need to as Rolf just has five reps to go. That barbell is going to be a little bit tougher for Fee than it is going to be for Emily. 16 snatches to follow this, then another 120-yard run. The time to beat is 9.34 from Julia Crawford. Just a great transition for Emily. Walked right to the bar, put her hands on, and went. And then you just see that steady reset of the bar. Even gets herself in a good position, and that's the thing with singles that you can do, is you can be more efficient with the barbell because you get in a better setup. You start doing touch and go, and these rubber mats are going to move a little bit. Your shoe choice is probably dependent on you know, what emphasis are you going to put on. Are you going to put it on the run, or are you going to put it on the snatches? You're in a more running shoe style. You're not going to get as much stability in your feet. So 16 snatches to finish off here at 120 pounds, and then it's going to come down to that foot race at the end. We already saw that in heat number one, separated by one second. Take what you will from this, but two athletes that have worked through strength in their careers. Emily Rolf telling us she's cycled on and off strength programs in her time, story of her life. Fisagafi's put in a lot of work there. Those are the two ladies here leading the pack here in heat two. Working their way through these 16 snatches at 120. What kind of work have you put in? What kind of gains have you put in to work through 120 pounds efficiently? Keep moving here in this speed chipper. And when you talk about developing strength, it doesn't always have to center around a one rep max. Right. Another real thing in, in CrossFit, especially when you look at the games level, is those higher level multi-rep events that have those 80 plus percentages based off your one rep max. So for Emily, her max might not improve, but the way she can move heavier weights has, and that is way more beneficial for her for the majority of the events. What you'd say, working strength. You see that a lot with Haley Adams. She doesn't have the best one-up max, but she cycles heavier bars much better than she has in the past. Final rep here on the 16 snatches, and then take off running here for Emily Rolf. She's going to become your new leader. Still two and a half minutes separating her and Julia Crawford from the earlier heat. I love how she's opening it up because she's not racing these athletes in this heat, and she, man, she may make herself another big move from heat two on day number two, Emily Rolf. Tell you what, I just, I'm so impressed by how she's improved her barbell work. I mean, look at the space she's put between her and Fee Sagafi. Well, and Fee Sagafi, too, like you said, your two athletes that needed to work on heavier barbells in cycling are your top two in this scene. Emily Rolf, 739, unofficial. Your new time to beat, Fee Sagafi coming in behind her. She'll be in second but it's all putting space between her and the next 10 ladies that will go in the final heat. Sagafi done in 7.55.99. <laughs> One more rep for Caroline Stanley, and she'll take off and running, and I'll tell you what, really good Saturday for Stanley. Sneaky Saturday for her. Maybe she doesn't qualify, but maybe she puts herself into last chance online qualifier consideration, and for her, she just finished playing college sports two weeks ago. Now she can turn her attention to the career in CrossFit. Well, it's Stanley coming into the day in 13th. And a big part of this is this is these athletes' last chance to get into the last heat going into the final day of competition. And Stanley beats all the earlier times as well. Caroline, 839 unofficial. Here comes Jess Harper. Somewhere Chandler Smith cheering his fiance on. Getting the chance to compete at the same event. Chandler said we can tell our kids someday about what mom and dad did. I think it was last year she was just here cheering him on. Forty-five seconds left to go in the time cap. Who will or will not finish? If you've got it left in the gas tank, go. You gotta want it with 40 seconds left here in the heat. Carissa Stapp from I Love It, done in lane one left of screen. 
And here comes the mad dash. Vicky Caruso, give me all my points. Not here to play. Kelly Benfee done as well. Emily DeFeo reconnecting with the ground. <laughs> Final five seconds. Ashley Shoemaker is capped. This is what it's about. Okay, looking, looking left, looking right, look left again. Oh, no. And what Mark so. Jones told us is that Vicky Caruso is a strength athlete, but will sneak up on people in some things that you might not think a strength athlete will do well in. Well, just at the end, you saw Caruso actually ran to the green start mat and slowed down. The athletes need to understand you got to get to the red finish mat before you turn the Jets off. Emily Rolf is your winner, though. We'll see how 739 holds up going into the final heat. Well, Emily, it paid off. You cycle that barbell much better than we would have in the past. And it was those quick, steady singles for her. Smooth on the chest of arm pull-ups. Wasn't unbroken. These nice planned breaks for her. Quick transition to the bar as well. And that just shows an athlete who has a lot more confidence in her ability. And the speed at which she did on her last shuttle run, we'll see how important that would have will be as we get to the last year of women. 739, she edges out Fee Sagafi quite soundly, and then Caroline Stanley third in the heat. Final heat of day two for the women in event four. Downtown Minneapolis, Minnesota, one of the Twin Cities. We're in the suburbs on the south side. Egan, Minnesota, TCO Stadium, where the Vikings train. Skull, alongside Chase Ingram, Jamie Hagia is down on the field. My name is Joel Godet. Final heat of the final event on moving day for the women. These are the standings. Mal O'Brien is in first place. She overtook Danny Spiegel, although Spiegel did have a good event three. Red line signifies the cut line to go to the games. Mal O'Brien, another event win. Came out very strong in the earlier event, but able to hold on. Should be getting used to this style from Mal O'Brien. We saw it all last year at the Granite Games, wondering if that was a too fast pace to start, but she has definitely proven that it is not. As you look at individual event four, presented by Rogue, 16 snatches, 36 chest-to-bar pull-ups at the front half. Flip that and do it again on the back half, that snatch weight being a big separator. It's not as fast as you think, and that's particular to the snatch pace. If you can go touch and go, great, but save some for the back half because that's where this event's going to be won and lost. Recipe for success delivered by Trifecta. Lane of Simons with Mal O'Brien in lane four and Spiegel in lane five because she came into the day as the leader. Amanda Barnard, Alex Gazan, and Chloe Wilson are the women right now in qualifying position. Mel O'Brien has moved herself up into first place overall. Two event wins already as we're halfway through the competition. Vet move with the hidden chalk. Athletes stand by. Underway on the speed chipper, and you start basically from the finish mat, just a couple of feet in front of that. So run on down and then start the 16 snatches and really after the shuttle run, by the way. Just use this as a way to get into the event. Don't try to separate yourself from the pack in the first 120. And I'm really curious to see what strategy some of these athletes are going to take. We saw Emily Rolf do singles. My eyes are on Danny Spiegel in the red shorts right there in the middle of your lane in lane five. Finishing up with 16 snatches and the shuttle run to finish. 
And we do have some touch and go. Yeah, Mal O'Brien just to her last. So Spiegel, I thought, would maybe do a couple touch and go reps, opting for a little quick singles. Not a bad plan. This is one of those as a coach is the grip that's going to get taxed on a power snatch. Multiple reps, especially if you touch and go, it's going to get taxed way more than, say, 36 chest to bar pull ups for athletes like this. We talked to Colton Mertens earlier, and a plan for him is quick singles and possibly being unbroken on the chest to bar pull ups because the bulk of your intensity and your time is going to be spent here on the barbell, whereas the pull up bar, not quite as much for these athletes. Mal going touch and go for two reps every so often. And the reason for that is, as we said, that the platform is very bouncy. They have a double mat plus the rubber plate. So it is some time that it's going to take for it to settle. So a two rep here saves you a little bit of second. Well, and you buy yourself seconds. If everybody else is going to pull a single, all right, I've got 16. If I do touch and go for two, three times, that might matter at the end of the day. And the plan for Mal probably been is like, hey, hit a couple touch and go reps where you're comfortable if you want to do sets of two after that. But if you feel like dropping a singles, do. A Chloe Wilson, left of screen, right now is in fifth place, was the first to the chest to bar. Chloe Wilson is fifth coming into the day, currently still in fifth with that 20 point buffer between her and sixth place. Rolf was in seventh, about 30 points out from her. Rolf obviously holding that time to beat at 739 and officially, so we'll see how that stacks up. But again, this is a back half event. Mal O'Brien has yet to come off the pull-up bar. Hand in the air, she is not going to come off the pull-up bar. Mallory O'Brien unbroken on the 36 chest of our pull-ups as she takes off on a 160-yard shuttle run. And what's going to be nice for her is that she did that unbroken. She saved herself a lot of time that she can afford to take on this run, use this run as a recovery, and perhaps set yourself back up into maybe another big set on the pull-up bar. We know quick singles in the way she can handle the snatch at 120 isn't going to be an issue for her. So on this back half, navigating what we should do as far as pace-wise on the rig so you can keep that aggressive pace on the bar is going to be something for her to figure out. Now, these two are not even. Danny Spiegel is a lap down and back behind Mal O'Brien. So Mal does have a nice lead on Spiegel. You'll see Danny turn and run again. And Mal will go back to the bar. 36 more chest to bar pull ups for Mallory O'Brien. She doesn't need finger holes in the grips. What's well, a strategy you see a lot of athletes is they'll size up their grips so they get a, a longer strap, a strap to hang over the bar. And what that grip's going to do is. Basically, it's this, the grip that's holding on to the bar and holding on to your wrist. Your, your hands are just there to, to keep it there, but that's a technique that's going to save your grip. So it's a very savvy move. We see a lot of athletes doing that with longer grips and just flipping them over the end without wrapping their thumbs over the pull-up bar. It's going to save their grip, and it's necessary when you look at what they're finishing with those 16 snatches. Spiegel just behind Mal O'Brien. Chloe Wilson off to the left, still in the mix. So two sets from Mal. 4.30. She's three minutes behind Emily Rolf with 16 more snatches and another run. And now look at her go. And she does break at three. I was going to say, that would be very Matt Fraser-esque <laughs> if she went stepping on the throat here, reaching the second round of snatches. And she kind of is a little bit more touch and go here on this second set. <laughs> Fittest man in history on the left, first year coaching Mal O'Brien. Could have done it remotely. Mal said, if I'm going to do it, I'm going all in. Moved from Iowa to Vermont. Still working those doubles and saving yourself one drop of the bar, a couple seconds here and there. You do that eight times versus the 16 that others will do. It's a big time saver. 
The other thing to note in this event and in lifting events, particularly with Mal, since moving to train with Matt Fraser, has remade her technique big time in all of her Olympic lifts. Took out a hitch, mainly in her clean, but also in the snatch. It's the little things. It's cleaning things up. It's becoming more efficient. Three more reps in the round of 16 on the back end here for O'Brien. That's what you're going to see for athletes looking to reinvent themselves, trying to find every little piece to improve their performance. And technique being a huge one of those. And as you said, Matt Fraser has spent a long, long time rebuilding her Olympic lifts. Another 120 shuttle run here. Time to beat 739 from Emily Rolf. Mal O'Brien might bust that by a minute. Mal O'Brien at the Granite Games punched her ticket, finishing second last year. This year she wins event one. She comes in fifth in event two. She wins event three. Mallory O'Brien, you get inside this house right now. She wins event four and is in the dominant driver's seat in Minnesota. Uh-oh. I mean, this is good for Spiegel, but really this is great for Emily Roll. Her time of 7.39, outside looking in. In an, event, up well. in an event for Emily in the past, wouldn't have been the best for her. But as you said, just working those weaknesses, developing her overall strength. But as we said, the ability to move a barbell at a heavier weight better is a nice little side effect to uh, strength training. <laughs> Danny Spiegel, you mentioned this being really good for her. It's a running event. I mean, there's it's a snatching event. It's a chest to bar pull up, but this is a heavy running event, too. And Danny Spiegel in 738 will finish second. Amanda Barnhart also making some moves. Amanda Barnhart will finish behind Emily Rolf ahead of Fee Sagafi. She's in fourth. Chloe Wilson, bottom of screen. Kelly Stone, those two are neck and neck in fifth and sixth. This is not very valuable for Wilson. Huge for Chloe Wilson. <laughs> Kayla Stefano onto the run. Chloe Wilson finishes sixth in 8-10-63. Stone is seventh in 8-11-15 unofficially. So it should be about 12 points. Rolf picks up on Wilson. So she'll close that gap a little bit more. The other thing to keep an eye on here is Stefano will come in and finish. Chloe Wilson is staving off Kelly Stone, yes. But Chloe Wilson might also be gaining on Alex Gazan in lane seven running. Kayla Stefano finishes. Those are more points coming off the board for Gazan, who was in fourth place. Stefano with a ninth place finish. Race for it, Gazan earning everything she can. Edges out Chloe Carano in lane one, who was left of the screen. And Alex Gazan is hurt. Sydney Wells trying to keep herself in the final heat heading into Sunday which is a different challenge than she had last year where she worked herself into the final heat, her first competition at the West Coast Classic. And Sydney Wells finishes inside the 10 minute cap. And we are all clear here for the ladies in event four. Got a carb up after you work out. <laughs> well, she earned it. Third first place finish of the weekend. Mal O'Brien, first set coming out of the gate. 36 chest to bar pull ups unbroken in the first half of this event. And beyond that, just putting an exclamation point, hitting doubles on the back half of the 12 snatches and 120 yards and a smile on her face. Six forty eight. She beat Danny Spiegel by 50 seconds.
You don't get bonus points for that. No, you don't, but I mean, Spiegel, how... <laughs> How lucky was she to keep the pace on those last 120 yards, just edging out Emily Rolfe by six tenths of a second? To show you how valuable it was for Wolf, Rolfe when she was trying to sprint all by herself. Yes. In a different heat. So Danny Spiegel was racing against an invisible opponent there. It's like when you're watching the Olympics and the yellow line is moving across <laughs> the screen. Mal O'Brien is with Jamie Hagia. We'll get used to seeing this one. Thanks so much, Joel. All right, Mel, we have won three out of four events. We are on our last event of the day, heading in tomorrow. How is your body feeling? Uh, I feel great. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> and we did 30 ring muscle-ups earlier into 72 chest-to-bar pull-ups here. What did you do in between to recover? Um, ate a lot of food and Theragun and all that stuff. Um, but ring muscle-ups for me are more of a push, so chest-to-bar is pull. <laughs> and looking forward to tomorrow, what is the most exciting part about it? 70 cal echo bike. <laughs> I'm so excited for that. <laughs> Thanks so much, Mal. Said nobody ever. <laughs> Mal O'Brien wins again. Three of four events in her back pocket. And she did the age group online qualifier last year because she didn't think she was going to make it. Yay. The men are coming up next. Josh Hall, late number four, Eric Evans. Sam DeVister in late number five. Late number six, Norman Woodring. Late number seven, Carlos Abadadeo. Late number eight, Chase Merrill. Late number nine, CJ Gerald. One minute, athletes, one minute. And in late number 10, rounding out this heat of killers, Kyle Bowman. seconds.
Ten seconds. Stand by. All right, folks, here we go. Our fellas kicking things off for our men's division. This is going to be the speed shiver. He's event number four, their fourth event of the weekend, second of the day. Had a killer event number three. I would say it loosened him up, but that's probably not the right term. Hopefully these guys recovered enough. They are pros. They are the elite athletes, and they are done with that 120-yard shuttle sprint. They're going to go right into 16 snatches. Batting order for this is going to be that shuttle run. 16 snatches, 36 chest-to-bar pull-ups, a 160-yard run, 36 chest-to-bar pull-ups, 16 snatches, and we'll cap it off one of the final 120-yard shuttle sprint to the finish. One of these fellas going to set that time to beat for the rest of our athletes here in heats two and three coming up. Right now, though, it's all about the snatching. Well past the one minute mark. Hand in the air. All the way down. On the far side of the field. If you were looking at it from the rig side, it's gonna be on your left. Opposite the rig side, it's gonna be on your right side. Now hands up all over the place. All of our guys pretty steady. Working their way through, but it's going to be down in lane number nine, C.J. Gerald. The first to wrap things up. Carlos Albaladeo next to get to the ring. Has to get himself flipped around one lane to the inside. Woodring going to work. That's going to be your one, two, and three. And rounding out number four, Sam DeBeaster. Sam with a great performance. And event number three, looking for that to carry over here at event number four. Stuart Jones down in late number one, passing 2.30 on the time clock. Rapidly approaching three minutes. Hong on to his head. Chest of our pull-ups along with Marshall Creed. Evans. Makes his way to the rig as well. Oh, fellas done with their snatches. CJ done with his chest bar. He's going to be the first to head out on that 160 meter, or correction, 160 yard run. Going to be a 10 minute time cap in place for this event. Demeester about a step ahead of. Alvaladeo on the run. CJ making the turnaround. Woodring on the move right down the middle. CJ all in black. Make that turn. Whole lot of running going on. Jones done at the rig. Creed done at the rig. C.J. Gerald arriving back at the barbell. Passing that up, heading to the ring. Gonna back this in with 36 more chest of our pull-ups. C.J. taking a deep breath after that run. C.J. be the first to go to work. On the chest of bars on the back half. Of the speed, Chipper Evans done heading out on his run to Mister arriving back at the rig. Woodring, it's gonna go one, Gerald, two, Demister, three, Woodring. Alvaladeo also arriving back along with Jones and Creed.
CJ putting together a big chunk of chest of bars there in lane number nine. Just past five minutes past at the halfway point, 10 minutes on our time clock. Five in five to go. Josh Hong and Evans arriving back at the rig. 30, one, two, three, four, five, six. Hand in the air. Couldn't really see it there, but CJ, his judge had his hand over there, so he is now done at the rig. 16 snatches at 120 yards between he and a time on his time card for event number four. Last event of the evening here for us. Two reps said is CJ. Don't forget, folks, got the movie here on the field. Following our event this evening, so don't go anywhere. Stick around. It's going to be really, really cool. You don't want to miss it. Six minutes in. Easter arriving at his barbell. Woodring also making it out there. And Marshall Creed making up a ton of time on those pull-ups. Six thirty in. Creeping up on seven minutes on our time clock. CJ paired him up. Doing touch and go pairs, looking to cut through this past the seven minute mark. Hong and Evans, almost done. Evans wrapping up the last of his pull-ups as the Josh Hong. They'll advance to the barbell as well. Hand in the air, down in lane number nine, CJ Gerald. CJ, last couple of snatches. 9.36 on the clock. And last few chest of ours. The moment he is done, he will advance forward onto the snatches as we approach eight minutes on the clock. Hand in the air for DeMeester. But it's going to be CJ Dunn first on the barbell. 120 yards between CJ and the finish line, even though he's going to make a turnaround right there near it. Eight minutes and 12 seconds. CJ's make that turn, and he is going to turn and burn heading towards that finish line. And CJ Cheryl will wrap it up just shy of the 8.30 mark. 90 seconds to go to Meester, shucking his belt, done with his snatches. Sam DeMeester CrossFit, triple river athlete. Making the first turn. Norman Woodring, not the Norm CrossFit. Heading out as his Sam. Making another turn. And he is going to stretch it out. And Sam DeMeester will finish up just past the nine minute mark. Less than 60 seconds, guys. Norman Woodring looking to make it one, two, and three with 45 seconds to go. And Woodring will finish up right around the 9 20 mark. Rapidly approaching 30 seconds on our time clock. Carlos Dunn heading on his way with less than 30 seconds to go. Last couple of reps for just a, a few of our fellas to wrap it up. 20 seconds. Albaladejo making the turn. It's 
10 seconds. Creed on his way. We're gonna count it down for you, fellas. Three, two, one. And Almonteo gonna be just shy of the finish line as time expires. Big round of applause for all your gentlemen on the floor. Great job, fellas. for the end of day two here at the Granite Games presented by Trifecta. The third week of the CrossFit semifinals where we send five men, five women, and five teams to the CrossFit Games where both Chase Ingram and Jamie Hagia have competed before. <laughs> My name is Joel Gadet, just a scaled guy. Take a look at event number four on the men's side as we get set for the second heat of it. Brought to us by Rope. So the women take this on, same event, different weights, 175 pounds for the men. It gets real grippy towards the end. Recipe for success delivered by Trifecta. Not as fast as you think. We're looking at the snatches, those 32 total snatches on the platform, but the back half event, those last 36 chest bar pull-ups and that sprint towards the end, we've seen a lot of close races. Chandler Smith is in lane four, needs to make some moves. He's about 90 points out of a qualification spot right now. John Wood, though, had a really good morning. He came in as the 11th seed. He is in 11th place, and he's positioned himself for a shot at a spot in the last chance online qualifier, maybe, spot six through eight. I mean, he's so smooth on that big chipper we had earlier today. Be curious to see how the body feels going into this event. This event starts with a 120-yard shuttle run. All right, here we go, and Just a little bit of a buy-in. The big part of this is going to be those power snatches. Marquand Jones showing off this. Still got the wheels. Yeah, down and backs. We used to do this for punishment. Matt DeLugos behind him. You're talking about a man who can cycle a barbell specifically snatches when you think about that quarterfinal event that ended with those power snatches at the end of that row burpee box jump over went unbroken the whole way through so I'd be shocked if he doesn't try to do a few open unbroken reps here to start things off Chandler Smith we mentioned ballpark 90 points 
out of one of the top five spots that earns you a ticket to the CrossFit Games. He is in 15th place overall. Did not have a good event three, and yet half of this weekend is still in front of you as you start this event. He does, but uh, like you said, is he's extended the distance between him and that fifth place qualifying position, although he didn't drop down as far as we were, had feared after the other event. But for him, it's, it's how do you physically respond based off, I mean, he looked rough at the end of that earlier event, but how do you mentally respond? Because for Chandler, is he's an emotional guy. It's, you know, hard and his emotions on his sleeve. And when it's going good, it's going great. But on the flip side, when it's going bad, it's a, it's a tough thing for him to navigate through. Current leaders in lanes six and lanes 10, that's Matt DeLugos, Dylan Hamming. DeLugos doing singles, and a lot of times you'll see some athletes will go out there, rip off a big set of unbroken reps, as long as they don't dip into the red too much and then finish off the rest of the set with singles. 36 chest to bar pull-ups now. Delugos is the first man to the rig, all by his lonesome. One of the underdogs training at CrossFit Rhino out in Las Vegas. That's a little tough for him is he's a long athlete. And if you look at Delugos' feet, it gets so close to the ground. He actually has to soften up his knees a little bit. And that takes away from the kip. Chandler Smith to the left, a perfect example. He can be long. He can almost reach through that butterfly kip swing with his toes where Matt DeLugos has to have those bent knees, which means he's not getting as much out of the kip as he would like to. So that's forcing him to do more with the arms. Almost looks like you could slide a bench under him as he's doing his pull-ups. Chandler Smith made some good moves there. He was second to the rig. And for Chandler, you know, how did he recover after event three? And how is he going to manage the work on the front half of this event? We said this is the back half event. This is a negative split style. And we talk about that, that she needs faster on the second half than it does the first. And that just means maybe keeping the same pace that you started with. Chandler Smith off to the shuttle runs. I have to imagine he did a lot of these at West Point. <laughs> yes. I don't know it for a fact. I just know it's true. I mean, and it's just that and his background in wrestling. I mean, shuttle runs, horses, suicide sprints, whatever you want to call them. That was just punishment back in the day for most athletes. Matt DeLugos hot on his heels, and you can see Chandler shaking out his arms. Keep those fresh for when he gets back to the pull-up bar. 36 more chest-to-bar pull-ups after another down and back here on the field. Marquand Jones in the blue trunks on the right side, also now on his run. DeLugos a full lap ahead of him in the next lane over. Time to beat a little Hoosier hospitality from C.J. Gerald. This was event three this morning, and Chandler, I mean, walking not out of strategy, just out of exhaustion. And I have never seen him that tired in an event before, to, to a point of I was just kind of concerned for him on how well he's going to be able to recover. He looked like the characters in Mortal Kombat right before it says finish him. <laughs> Chandler was out here collecting himself for a while after that event. But you've seen athletes come back from tougher things than that. Chandler is, is a very resilient athlete. And we said during the event, he kind of bonked. And sometimes it's, look, maybe you didn't fuel as, as appropriately as you thought you needed to for that event. And whatever it was, whether it's a nutrition thing or coming out too hot. But that just looks so out of character from what we know as Chandler Smith as an athlete talked about it in the women's heats, the way that those grips come into play. You can see Matt DeLugos doing the same thing, not using the finger holes, just wrapping the grip over top. Chandler Smith doing the same thing. Although you can see he chalked his hands, then put the grip over top of that before jumping back up to the bar. Yeah, and sometimes you can see, actually, you can see the blood on the right thumb of Chandler Smith, and that probably doesn't feel too good when you're hook gripping a snatch, but you'll chalk the inside of your palm inside between that and the grip because you start to sweat on your hands and that actually rubs up on your palms. And that chalk is not necessarily to help the pull, but help the friction between your hand and the grip so you don't rip. Matt DeLugos just did that. Not rip, chalk. And look at Justin Kotler in the back about to jump up on the bar with him. Well, the thing is, like we said at the first 36, is DeLugos is at a major disadvantage because of his height. He's standing flat-footed and grabbing the rig. That's the other thing that we can't see, is that he's not jumping up. His feet are on the ground, 
and he's reaching up for the for the rig itself. So these pull-ups are much more difficult for him because he cannot actually get a legitimate kip swing in. Chandler is on to his second round of snatches here, 16 of them. One of two men snatching at the moment. Dylan Hamming is the other out of Michigan. We think about a barbell, cycling, under fatigue, specific to the snatch. What Chandler Smith did last year at the CrossFit Games is winning that 21-15-9 event who had the echo bike and the snatches. We highlighted John Wood off the top. He's the third man to the snatches. He's been very consistent. And what he proved this morning is that, look, the dudes fit when we're speaking to John Wood specifically. And he knows how to pace his way through a longer event. Now, this is a short style chipper. But if you can pace yourself through a long event with hundreds of repetitions like he did this morning or this afternoon earlier, you could probably navigate your way through this one a little bit as well. And he's still a young athlete. Ask John what he learned from going to the games team last year with Backcountry Black, and he said, you need to plan for rest and bring snacks. You know, it's the little things you don't think about because you're there all day, you have to be ready to compete. There's a lot that goes into being able to compete at this level. I tell you if, you, if you just did the eye test on how Chandler Smith looked, you'd be a little worried about him, but now he's just two reps back of possibly getting a heat win in heat two. So this is a big deal for Chandler Smith. Time to beat 826 CJ Gerald. Originally from Indiana, now by way of Phoenix, Arizona. One finger in the air for Chandler Smith. He'll then take off for another 120 yard run with a minute between he and the time to beat. Next closest, Wood and DeLugos on the right and left side of your screen. Well out of reach from Chandler Smith. So between those two athletes, it's gonna be trying to see who gets second in this heat. Now here comes DeLugos in the middle, hamming on the right side. Chandler Smith is a lap ahead of both of those men. This will be it for Chandler Smith. He'll have the time to beat. Smith to the finish mat, 8-14, 8-15-65 officially. And Hamming will come in second. This might be the best event finish for Dylan Hamming so far this weekend. Came into the day with a 26th and a 12th, and now DeLugos. Both those men behind C.J. Gerald's 826. And now here comes John Wood. Good weekend so far for Wood. Jordan Hayward all the way down in lane one. And here comes Marquand Jones, who fell off pace a little bit on the back half of this workout. Ten minute time cap, that's going to become a factor here, 45 seconds away. We did have about half the field capped in the opening heat. A sprint to the finish, Jones saw it out of the rearview mirror, and Marquan Jones, I think, just got beat to the finish line. Huge effort by Josh Woodall in the back half of that. And a reason why Marquan couldn't keep the pace is that Woodall was almost 15 yards behind him going into the last turn. And if I just looked over my shoulder, you could see him being passed towards the end. Woodhull by a tenth of a second here. Baseball slide for the win. They tell you not to slide into first, but in CrossFit it works. <laughs> I don't know why, just us. And Chandler Smith is the heat winner. 8.15 is the time to beat. We'll see how that stands up. But Matt DeLugos, looking to make some waves, came out moving too. Well, he started very quick on these touch and goes to start things out, but lost a lead on the chest bar pull-ups. And listen, it, I don't think it was a, a fitness-related thing. I think it was just basically an equipment-related thing for DeLugos, unfortunately. But Chandler Smith, 
Bobble heading his way to a first place finish in heat two. CJ Gerald fitting in under Chandler Smith there from the first heat. Then Hamming, DeLugos, and Wood are the top five times overall as we head in to heat number three and the final event here on a Saturday night. That is one of the 10,000 lakes here in Minnesota, presumably. Welcome to the Granite Games from Egan, Minnesota, south side suburbs of the Twin Cities, alongside Jamie Hagia, Chase Ingram, the rest of our team, Joel Gadet. Finish off a fun day of competition at the Granite Games with five tickets, men, women, and teams on the line for the CrossFit Games. The red line delineates who's going to the games right now and who is not the blue line for the last chance online qualifier. We will see everybody on that page competing here in this final heat. Nick Matthews still holding the line in fifth place, but not by much. 16 snatches, 36 chest to bar. We've got some shuttle run sandwich in between, but that back half chest to bar, 16 snatches. 175 reduced most of the athletes to singles in heat number two. Recipe for success, that's delivered by Trifecta. You say it's not as fast as you think. Why? Uh, you, get in a, you get in this race, and I'm talking more specifically to the snatches. If you can navigate the snatches in single reps, but push the pace on the chest to bar pull-ups, you can set yourself up well in this event. Jamie Hagia, what do you got for us? Thanks so much. We were seeing a lot of the guys go, some most of the singles on these snatches. A couple were going touch and go, but a lot of time was made up on these chest to bar pull-ups. The big thing is going to be managing that grip fatigue. Chase, how do you manage that grip fatigue? Well, uh, less reps and less speed. Unfortunately, that's the name of the game here, the speed chipper. Keep your eyes on Brent Fikowski in lane two. Moves his way into a qualifying position in event three today. Went from sixth to third place. And Fikowski, very proficient when it comes to cycling a bar, especially when we're talking about snatch. But sitting in third after that event, taking second in event number three three but Anthony Davis really impressed me this morning in his finish in that long chipper event he's known more for his strength he obviously displayed that last night setting the event record in the barbell complex but what he did in event three was very impressive see if he can make a move here with this moderately weight bar for the power snatches 22 pounds lighter than what he competed last year at the Granite Games plays a factor and he is off and running here the first shuttle run down, back, and down again. That takes you into the 16 snatches at 175 pounds. Anthony Davis right in the forward part of your screen. Like I said, you don't have the touch and go to win this event. You can knock off a couple right off the top. See Fikowski right below him going for singles. Colt Mertens in lane six in the center lane has said his plans for singles but unbroken on the chest bar pull-ups. Davis has yet to put the bar down. Yeah, it's six. Now it's just curse. There we go again. Yeah. Six unbroken for Anthony Davis to start. Maybe he says, I don't think he could go unbroken on the chest bar pull-ups, and maybe he will. So now it's a couple of singles, and it might have been, hey, let me bite off a piece here unbroken and then I'll get into it. Well, Jamie's talking about fatiguing grip and what will do that the fastest. Cycling a bar with power snatches at this weight will tax your grip and a lot of it has to do with the width of your grip on the bar. The wider your hands on the barbell, the weaker the grip. That's why you see a lot of people will, if they're doing some lightweight bar cycling, especially with power snatches, they'll inch that grip in just a little bit to save it. But for, for this weight at these rep schemes, being wider is better. Obviously, it cuts down the range of motion. It puts the bar in a nice position when you think about the, being more technical with the lift. But I like the quick singles by Anthony Davis. One more for Davis. That bar is 170 pounds. That is the weight of a fully grown kangaroo. 
It does not punch back. <laughs> Thirty six chest to bar here. All by himself. Can Davis keep up this pace? Can he keep up this tempo? He's joined by Travis Mayer now in the blue shirt. The professor in the white and red making his way to the rig. Well, for Travis, he needs to make up that tough event three he had earlier today. Tim Paulson in the mix as well. Mayer is four points out of a qualifying spot right now in sixth. He's chasing Nick Matthew. Now, Mertens is one of the last guys off the power snatches. He has just got to the bar, but he said his plan was steady snatches, but unbroken on the 36 chest of bar pull-ups. And you have to figure that in the back of your mind, right? Hey, I can go a little bit slower because I'm going to make up time here. And that's a fun part of this event. Depending on your skill set and strengths, it, look, if you're a big barbell guy, be that guy. If you're a gymnastics freak, then be that. You can mix and match a lot of those strengths and weaknesses. Obviously, the fittest will reign supreme if you have a, a nice blend of both, but Mertens has got some ground to catch up because Davis and Mayer are already off the pull-up ring. Anthony Davis still in front. Here comes Colton Mertens, so last to the rig. He is now in third, though, on the run. Got Quant, actually, just ahead of him. He's in fourth on the run. Fikowski just behind, but Mertens was not just last of the rig, but he was last of the rig by a long ways. I liked the run while reaching into his pocket, trying to grab the chalk, and it just wouldn't cooperate, so he kind of did a, a, a cockneyed run to the left there. And it's a good move, right? It saves some seconds. Davis Ooh. lost a couple, just trying to grab the chalk. Been, what you want here is that you want good transitions. You don't want to waste time moving to a chalk bucket, but having that chalk on hand, you're actively doing something you're going to have to do when you get to the rig while actually getting some work completed. This is a smart move by a lot of these athletes. 36 more chest to bar pull-ups. Now, Mayer made up a lot of ground on Davis on the first set of chest to bar pull-ups. And for Davis, Maybe breaking these up a little bit just to save a bit more on the snatches because that is where he's going to make his move. So for Davis, you don't want to dip too much into the red on this part of the event. Your, your big move is going to be those last 16 snatches. A lot of time to chalk up here. Mertens is going to go unbroken again. And this might be where he goes. The 36 the first time through got him back into it. The 36 the second time through. Let's see where he comes down to go to the bar. It might put him out in front. Third place, third place, fifth place for Colton Mertens, and that is exactly what happened. He might line himself up depending on how he handles these last couple of movements for an event win. I really like how he shed the grips as well before he got to the bar. Now, I think it's the pace he started with was steady, so he could go unbroken. It wasn't a fact that the bar's too heavy for him. The dude is very, very strong. So he was you know, rope-a-doping a little bit at the beginning part of this event. But he's taking a ton of time in between these snatches, and Travis Mayer and Davis just caught up to him. Although their cycle rate is about on pace with where Colton Merton started. And sometimes athletes who can move a bar very well coming off, say, a high set of gymnastics. Not sure what Anthony Davis has left in the tank, but you may see an athlete do a couple singles just to catch their breath a little bit, maybe five reps. And then knowing you have seven reps or 11 reps left to go, maybe after that break, you just hold on the bar and see how many you can catch up with a few touch and go reps in the middle. Or maybe you go single until you have five or six left and then Hey guys, it's been fun. Halfway through for Colton Mertens. Time to watch here is the 8.15 set by Chandler Smith. That is two minutes away. Hand in the air for Colton Mertens with five reps remaining. Nothing yet for Davis or Mayer. Mertens, two reps ahead. His big breakout last year was at these Granite Games where he finished fifth. He won two events. Whoa. Hand is in the air 
for Anthony Davis. So all three men down to their final five reps. This is the last one for Mertens. How much gas is left in the tank here for 120 yards of running? The muscle hamster played this one perfectly. Huge event here for Travis Mayer. He drops the barbell. He's now running. They're side by side, but Mayer is a full lap behind. Now here comes Davis from behind as well. Colton Mertens, event win for the third time at the Granite Games. And now Mayer has to just be careful he doesn't get caught by Anthony Davis here. Davis is going to hit the Jets. So is Mayer. Travis Mayer, that is a second place. Davis in third. Massively impressive from Davis. I mean, this isn't an event that Davis would have been in the even in the last heat with a year ago. What Davis has done over the last 365 days has been very impressive. And he was pretty specific. I'm not a pro athlete coming into this. I don't train all day. Quant snuck in. Brent Fakowski across. Phil Toon, center screen, lane five. Overall leader coming through. He's done in 8.20. Remember, the time to beat was 8.15. So almost all of these times jumping the prior heats. Tim Paulson flying. Same thing in lane three. Nick Matthew, who was right on that cut line, Matthew with a 12th place finish. Paulson with an 11th place finish. The cap is a minute 15 away. And here comes Leo Franco, who was trying to qualify for his last chance online qualifier spot, which would be a big jump for him. Well, he had a decent performance this morning. Well, not this afternoon. I think this morning was the first event. Nice. Late start for all of us. I don't know if it's an optical illusion, but just based on the lighting, his hair matches his shorts. <laughs> he calls himself a showman, models himself after Conor McGregor. Putting one on here at the Granite Games, he finishes 30 seconds ahead of the cap. Unofficially an 18th place finish in the event. And Zach Bunton. You got 16 seconds, Zach Bunton, and he checked the clock on the wall. Bunton is through with about six seconds to spare, and everyone clears the speed chipper to close out Saturday night. And Mertens called a shot as game plan, singles on the snatches, stay at the start, and that's what we said, a negative split style attitude when it comes to this. Davis was to the bar first on the first 16 reps. He had a big set of touch and go, and then went singles after that. He got to the rig first. Mertens got to the rig dead last after the first 16 snatches, went unbroken on the first 36, came back, went unbroken on the next 36, and that put him so far ahead the rest of the field that he could jog his way to the finish line. And another 100 points for Colton Mertens. I hope he goes and celebrates with the beers and burpees shirt guy that was behind him. 726, 22nd win over Travis Mayer. And then Chandler Smith from Heat 2 creeps in there with a fifth place finish. Let's go down to Jamie. I'm with our Colton Mertens, your first event win of the weekend, Saturday night underneath the lights. How are you feeling? Oh, pretty good. Um, you know, day one was pretty easy in terms of the volume. Woke up today, felt like I didn't even work out yesterday. Felt really good, but um, I was definitely feeling it after all those wall balls. Um, but I felt like I rebounded really well for this event, and yeah, it just felt really good. 36 unbroken chest bar pull-ups twice. What was your plan going into this? Exactly that, go unbroken, go fast. And, um, you know, <clears throat> I wanted to take risk and be reckless and try to go unbroken on the chest of bar and, and try and hang on for the snatches and run. Thank you so much, Colton.
hey, sometimes you have to take shots. You've got to take risks. Colton Mertens took that shot, and he nailed it. For Jamie Hagia and Chase Ingram, the rest of our crew, my name is Joel Godet. Thanks for joining us in Minnesota. The Granite Games continue tomorrow back here in Minnesota. <laughs>